holding table 35 until...
Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Top Deck Jot GG's coverage of Punt City 3 live from the beautiful Hilton Garden Inn, Valley Forge Oaks in Oaks, Pennsylvania. My name is Scoots, and I am joined by Drake Sasser. What a privilege. Drake, how the <laughs> hell are you doing? I'm doing awesome. So excited to be back here uh, doing coverage of Punt City. I played the first two Punt Cities. Of course, this is where it began for the Top Deck Championship Series. So having another Platinum event here, it's going to be special to me. And of course, it's special to all the players in the room who are looking to earn those critical points uh, for the uh, end of year invitational. So a lot on the line for everybody, but it's a little extra special for me too. Hell yeah. I, I, I have been at every Punt City so far. Uh, in this capacity of the man talking, sure. uh, and I have had a great time every time, and this time it uh, should be no different. The field is, I think, stronger than it's ever been. Uh, we have some notable people here this time, including uh, the European CEDH Grandmaster himself, Memo. Uh, is here right now. The, the, the and, German juggernaut, you know? Yeah, yep. And we have Gustav here out of retirement. Some of you may know Gustav yeah. from playing Timna Malcolm. Yeah. So, I mean, a bunch of European heavy hitters. I mean, like I said, it's a special event. There's no two ways about it. It's one of the biggest CDH events there there is. I mean, it seems like we're breaking records every single day, and we're going to talk more about that, I'm sure, as the day goes oh, on. But um, definitely excited for some high-stakes magic and uh, a lot on the line, like I said, for these players and uh, all the players that participate in the entire Top Deck Championship Series. Absolutely. We have platinum Top Deck points on the line today. Uh, notably, our first table is seated, and we are going to be – transitioning to them momentarily they have resolved mulligans and uh our lovely yeah it looks like they they could be ready to start it's a spicy pod too i mean there's a lot i think to talk about as soon as we jump over to that pod about yeah. you know people even though there's becoming this established cdh metagame people are still bringing a lot of spice to the table and that's something i, I think i'm really excited to see especially in these, these early rounds you still see like one or two make the distance among the sea of kennan and, and tim necrom but uh, people still show up people are still trying things people are still testing uh new cdh decks out and i think we're gonna see a little bit of that alongside some decks that are a lot more established in the cdh metagame here as i believe the players are kicking things off uh, if we can see Yuriko, the Tiger's Shadow, I believe, the is Tiger first Shadow. seat here, going first. Can't get a great look at the first land they're playing, but uh, can't be complaining about going first, especially a deck that wants to kick things off with attacking. We're firing, I think, that's, uh, I think it's a Dark Slip Shore? Into an Imp Seal. Yeah, definitely Imp Seal. It was an untapped land, whatever it is, some kind of full art that I don't know that I, I recognize it's, off it's the, the bat. Uh, those flip lands, what are we... The... You remember the flip lens? The pathways? From... Yep, it's a pathway. Sure, clear water pathway. So that would have to be on the back side, which is, which is murk water murk pathway. Water there pathway. you go. Uh, a and a mana confluence probe. probe. We're playing Gitaxian probe in the year 2024. How do you feel about that? It's great. What a great alongside the Imperial Seal. Get, get, get your card right away. Absolutely. The uh, uh, players playing quick magic, still in the process of resolving the Imperial Seal, is our Yuriko player as Gitaxian Probe is in the process of being resolved. And a fish follow-up, that's going to be huge for Tim to Malcolm. Yeah, we can talk a little bit about the pod here, I guess, so the players are kind of establishing the early turns. Uh, got Yuriko in first seed, Malcolm Timna in second seat. Third seat is Krom Armix, kind of tucked over there behind the deck. And a deck I've never seen before going forth, Cabal Council of Allocation. Card I played a little bit modern in the past, getting some CDH stripes here. I have uh I remember playing against Cumball uh six years ago. Uh oh, okay. I think that's the last time I played against Cumball in any type of uh in any type of way, but uh the deck uh probably it's probably still doing the same thing that it was. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> Stopping people from playing things. I'd I'd imagine we're gonna see quite a few stacks shaped pieces coming from there as mana crypt a huge start going to draw a card for the malcolm timna player and so is this yep. lotus petal no trouble feeding but i guess if you're following up with some kind of stacks piece you're not gonna feel too bad about having fed the fish a few times and it's combo himself okay a turn, a turn one combo is uh i mean that is that is certainly that is certainly a, a relevant play at this point life totals are high and and we're gonna start chipping away at them i like it 
Yeah, and, and, and like with the Yuriko player untapping, I you know I don't know what the Imperial Seal for typically out of the Yuriko deck. Uh, I'd imagine you need something to start attacking. That's often a big part of the Yuriko game plan. And you know, cards like Ornithopter, which is just played, does not yeah. feed fish. Have the Mana Crypt follow up, which is probably too does feed. Are... See what follow up uh, is. Shield, shield the Dread. Apocalypse. Whoa. Okay. All right. This is a strange board state. I think featuring some of the most like life total taxing permanents that that aren't typically played. I've never seen this much life total taxing happening in the first turn. I'll say that. Yeah, I mean, this is uh, certainly things are getting a little weird out here. Uh, Shieldred going to specifically tax the uh, Mystic Remora here. We'll, I mean, I don't think that there's a world where we're not. Oh my gosh, never mind. Instantly proven wrong. <laughs> yeah, uh, take that somewhere else. The goose disagrees uh, the goose with you. The goose has said drawing <laughs> cards, not in my meta. Uh, I mean, it makes a lot of sense to me. You're under a lot of pressure. Shieldred attacks a lot. You're the target with being the only one with a fish. Yeah. You know, Armix Crom didn't do anything on turn one. Everybody else is just playing creatures. So the fish doesn't look great. Every card you draw hurts. And then if you want to play anything after that also hurts, it's not actually a great spot to be, especially when you're looking at an Esper deck that can't get bursts of mana very easily. Yeah. Often you're using other cards to, to kind of facilitate your mana bursts that are going to damage you as long as Cabal stays on the table. You know, it... I feel like it's maybe the worst time to be going second at this uh, at a CEDH table behind that cycle of things that happened. You know, we're going to see the hit off a of combo here. Life total quickly dwindling. Yeah, already going to work. You're taking damage from your card draw, taking damage from combo, notably uh, both combo and Shieldred gain life. So like you're in you're in this weird spot where first and fourth look to be the players that are ahead, and second and third kind of need to be on a team a little bit, I imagine, in order to try yeah. to get some of these creatures answered. Yeah, I, I, but Riley doing nothing on turn one on Armix Crom. You're I'm if it's feeling like it's some kind of tutor after the after the fetch land here, uh, but you wonder if they're target is going to change based on how the texture of the board has developed how about tap steam boots? how does that sound tap been a surveillance. Oh, okay all right could have been a surveillance <laughs> legal i don't know if there's event. one in the deck but i'm just saying you know if you're talking about opportunity costs here you know we, we could have gotten a surveillance here and got a little action out of it but surveillance is deeper. yeah i mean i've seen uh i've seen people testing the surveillance in cedh and and they have in my opinion, overperformed. I that is my perception as well. The surveillance, I believe, a very impactful upgrade to three and four color decks looking to play all the fetches anyway. Maybe you know five colors like too much. You just can't afford to grab the specific one you're going to play versus just playing under city sewers or you know the blue black one, whatever. Yeah. Um. Here though, needed maybe perhaps needed blue red. I mean, typically when you look at a Grixis deck, blue black is the first land grabbed. I think very there's a lot of intentionality behind grabbing Steamens first. Very interested to see what Riley's second turn is going to look like, assuming that first turn was just hold up some interaction. Yeah, and it looks like we might be running that. Eh, no, okay, we got some plans. Moving some mana around. <laughs> what is the plan? Put the hand down. Get a little thick. A lot of problematic permanence in play. This game's about creatures right now, which not very traditional. With all the blue and black decks at the table, you would not expect the game to already be about creatures on turn two. Yeah, we've, Usually it's about, you know, mystics, uh, rhystics, that kind of stuff. Yeah, we've kind of, we've kind of uh, settled into uh, a very different angle than you'd normally see at, at this kind of table. Notably, uh, I mean, Malcolm out. Uh, Malcolm Tim is doing what they want to be doing. You wonder what Riley could be building towards here. Kong Ball making everything bad for everyone. So Riley plays, looks like they're going to play lane and pass. No spells cast yet for Riley Sinclair. I mean, typically when you see these kinds of play patterns, it's followed by a Dockside, but Dockside doesn't actually look very good right now. It would make like three or four, which is like something, but it's not really enough to get over the top of a lot of these problematic creatures, and you would need to win basically right away. A lot of blue interaction at the table. Might just not be good enough yet. Is that Vito? That looks like Vito to me. That, that what is, is Vito happening? the Dusk Rose. The Thorn of the Dusk Vito, Rose, yeah. Thorn of the Dusk Rose. Notably, Whatever you gain life, target opponent loses that much life. The new okay. the new promo, the most recent Vito. Love it. Um, Got it from a vampire deck. 
Riley is just trying to maximize the effectiveness of their once upon a time. That's all. Uh, that was yeah. Bad. Yeah. <laughs> that. You can't even play that in the deck. Joke. Sure. Yeah. Uh, so v- what's, what's the new Jace? You can't play until like turn three or whatever. Oh, Got yeah, that the dialed new, up. There you Not go. even legal yet. That's yeah. what I wanted. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I have to. We have yeah. to put our Discord into um streamer mode here because I think you get pop ups. We're getting booped. Yeah. Oh, you're getting getting a little boopage. I'm get... Tragic. And here is some Commander Ninjutsu. If I had to gamble on it, I I would guess that's probably oh, oh. regular Ninjutsu Whoa. Sakashima okay. student. Let's go. A little right. clone action. What are we taking a a Malcolm? What are we taking? A sh- uh, uh, shield. A shield trip. Trip? I don't we, think that. Can we do that? I don't think we can. No. You may have Sakashima student enter the battlefield as a copy of any creature on the battlefield except the ninja in addition to its other creature types. I do not think this is going to go the Yuriko player's way. No, they don't. They don't both get blown up. Just one of them. Only does. one. Okay. So that okay. Well, okay. that's not ideal. <laughs> you know, actually, yesterday I was handed a token uh, from a representative of All Trades Media that said certified punt on it, and I think. Oh, never mind. That's... We're we're walking back our decision. No, we're just recasting Ornithopter. No, we're, we're no, we're casting Changeling Outcast okay. and playing the Ornithopter in okay. second main here. Brutal sequence yeah. for Kenneth Ravenwell. That is unfortunate. Uh, yeah, it's really tough have any other good targets like what are you getting like a cabal or something so it's not even like it's really worth that much maybe but you know it could have been yuriko and that that certainly is worth quite a bit i think uh, yeah. as far as opportunity cost goes this looks like a mystical i think it's a mystical tutor tutor? On upkeep yeah okay looks like an upkeep mystical tutor. very exciting uh you think i mean my question is it is it for you have limited options at two mana. I, yeah. well, I don't know what the I'm looking. I'm taking a look right. at the necklace right now. I need some removal spells. Like I'm looking for a dam. Yeah, not seeing one. I was similarly I thinking deluge, see but deluge. Yeah. yeah, I don't see one of those either. What are our options? There is like deadly rollick if you only want one cyclonic rift among the mix. Could just be trying don't... to win the game. It makes some sense, right? Tim and Malcolm isn't really looking to blow up the board very often. A lot of times you are the one attacking. This board state is kind of very unique as far as it being about creatures, despite being a very blue-black heavy pod. And it's Demonic Consultation. Oh, we are Uh-oh. just going to win the game. Thorical, huh? Thorical, I'm certain, certain is on every player's radar right now. Absolutely. We got Riley holding up double blue, so... Yeah, I, you have to imagine there's some kind of interaction. Maybe two, I mean... Be very scared to go for anything here, but you know I'm in the booth. They're in the they're they're at the table. We'll see exactly what we decide to do with our turn. As consultation is a very loud find. It is very a yeah, declaration it, it, about what you intend to do. Certainly, certainly the warning bells are going off in these players' heads right now. And then we've drawn our card for the turn, and Shieldred continues to whack us. Yeah, some life totals are, are beginning to dwindle away. Dwindle away. Words are difficult. As a treasure going to be made as the goose going to attack Steven. Notably. Get a treasure for the trouble. Notably, the uh, the new Punt City 3 treasure by our very own Gold Sabertooth is in the building today. Incredible. Yeah, they, they look sharp. Nice treasure token action. Going to be using a lot of those. Is our friend Goose playing the Malcolm deck? Morphic pool, the land for turn follow up. Has Thorical Consult mana? Will we be going for Thorical Consult now? What's the rush? I mean, if you just have it dialed up, what's the rush? Yeah, I mean, you 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 can sit in the cut here. I think if you if you have you have sufficient interaction. Okay, so Riley's master plan was to hold up a tainted pact at the end of turn. At the end of turn two. Well, that's going to gain some life, and then Vito is going to deal some additional and, damage. Yeah, so we've... It's going to, yeah. Okay, so we're just... So, okay, we get four damage and two life for every Cabal trigger now, thanks to Vito. And Chrome Mox the fine. We're giving Chrome Mox some thought. Not good enough. Oh, oh, Riley content to play a third land in a row? 
land maxing. I appreciate it. Yeah. I'm a land drop enjoyer myself. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. They are. You know, you Forces can play one of those. Oh, Ooh, toxic dealers. Hello. That one's got to be appealing. Hello, yeah. Riley, that one has some to be appealing. Consideration? Yeah. Well, there's some issues because if you tap out with the consultation being already in Goose's hand, you. Tap out for Toxic Deluge, kill everything. Thorical Consult may just be mostly on hands. I mean, you're not going to get much help from the Black White deck. Like, what do you get? Yeah. Like a Silence? So then it's all in the Yuriko player who, you know, is now kind of down on cards, up on ninjas and things that attack. Deluge is going to be good enough, says Riley, as we go back to yeah. Riley's turn three. Moving that active player on over. Shout out to All Trades Media for that, keeping things clear. I feel like if you Let's fire see. off the Deluge here, yeah. Like you were saying, you pretty much leave yourself. What is this? Dockside extortionist? Okay. That's a dockside. It's dockside time. Sniff that one out. Not a lot going on. Usually means a hidden dockside. Definitely looks better now. Yeah, I mean, count is higher. Yeah. I think it's four? four. I think it's the count. Four. Maybe five. Yeah, a five. Five. So we got two mana crypts, an ornithopter, a mana vault, and a treasure. Oh, yeah, we're getting them all out. Here oh, we yeah. go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I don't even need three of them. You're getting deluged. Yeah, three of them. <laughs> Let the me give you a hint. coming down. Uh, did Armix Chrome just keep a horrendous hand, says Oogway in the chat. You can't, you know, you can't really determine whether the hand was horrendous or not until you know what happens with it, you know? I mean, you need so much context to understand, like, yeah. both what the deck's plan is for the pod, as well as, you know, what kind of draw steps would get you out and maybe did or did not get there. And yeah. given that there's a Dockside Vault in this hand, I, I don't think you can ever make a claim. There was a horrendous keep. I keep hands like this yeah. all the time. Yeah. A Dock little bit slow to get started, but if you have a Dockside, whatever. <laughs> Dockside Tain Impact generally tends to, to, to fix all wounds. So the Deluge on the stack, do you... Five is the minimum if you want to kill everything. Yeah. And I feel like the only player who will actually have anything to say about this is probably Kenneth on Yuriko. And there is that force of negation that has come down on the deluge. Yeah, force of negation. I mean, it's it's a tough spot because I, I imagine that Ken wouldn't mind having some of Steven's board cleared off. Specifically, the Cabal Vito kind of combination is a lot of life. Yeah. You don't really want Malcolm to keep hitting. But if you did it for the full five... I think that's really all Kenneth has going on. Like, I could yeah. see an argument for doing less than five and just being like, all right, you get to keep your shieldred. But, yeah, now there's here's some extension, and this fight is a brutal one for this table. Once again, face up Demonic Consultation in the Goose's hand. Yeah. That is going to make this fight very costly if there's not a ton of other interaction coming off the top from these other players or already in hand. And the Thorical Consult becomes available next turn. If Let's assume there's a Thorical present. But, yeah. um, I mean, a Consult, what are we doing here? <laughs> if you're Gustav, you are smiling all the way to the bank. Riley yeah. having exiled their force to Tain Impact. Use some interaction to back up the Deluge. All coming up Gustav right now. Riley reaching for that last treasure. Maybe even going to tap out entirely? No, maybe not. Oh. Not clear what's going on. I might just be looking at the treasures. Okay. Not clear what we're indicating here. I think they, they have like the, the dollar bill kind of structure to it. And so they're kind of parsing through the token. This is going on. It's a really cool piece. Uh, Gold Sabertooth posted on their Twitter about yeah. the uh, the piece. I got to see it a little bit ahead of time. And it is a masterpiece of sorts. We we love the, the saber bling that shows up every year for these events. Very cool. Uh, a well, new Dockside dollar. Yeah, <laughs> lots of Dockside dollars. Spent those, did Riley, in a flurry of casting spells where there was not a lot of that in the first few turns. We'll see if he gets another turn. I'll tell you what, if I'm Riley, I would actually not be super enthused about my chances of getting another yeah. turn here. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling the same. Uh, so it looks like we are recasting Comball. Again, yeah, if, you're, out for Comball. if you're Gustav, you're... you're, you're rolling all the way to the bank here thumbs um, up yeah. resolves every, every, <laughs> i'll take my two consult sure sounds good to me everybody uh yeah force negation already come down 
from Kenneth, now in first, down to no permanence. Really, I mean, the Yuriko deck needs at least a creature to get started. Would be shocked if we don't put something in play this turn. Yeah. Yuriko with three mana play. Chooses to play nothing. Could be some disciplined play here. Flash creatures also potentially on the table. Swords? Swords to plowshares. Ho oh, oh, removal city. Okay. All right. So it... We do not like Kumball. Maybe we don't have both pieces of our combo. Yeah, that would indicate... Like, Kumball mattering would either indicate you're trying to bait in a reaction, but you're not going to get that from the black-white deck. Yeah. So you must have some plan to cast some other spells. Could indicate the need to tutor up Thassa's Oracle or cast some rituals or something. Mana Vault's also still working on life totals. Life not as pressured without Shieldred in play. No. But still, still somewhat dwindling. Yeah. A lot of options here. Not slamming Thorkel Consult, I think, would indicate maybe not having Thassa's Oracle yet. So now the plan becomes, how do we get Thassa's Oracle? Or, or how do we get enough resources to just find it with Timna? Sure. Yeah. Raw Timna, we take those. Notably, the free spells, Fierce Guardianship, Deadly Rollick back online. True as well. Well, I mean, this point makes a lot of sense as far as killing Cabal goes. Makes less sense as far as grabbing Demonic Consultation goes. Either we're looking for, like, a silence effect to just really be safe about it, or we maybe not have it yet, but that is just a loud part of our plan. Yeah. Clear where the consult's coming from yet. A lot of cards left in hand for Goose. So we'll see exactly... How that's going to pan out, but Tim, no, I mean, a solid development on the board, especially with all of the other creatures been cleared out of the way. Tim, a lot of good attacks available on this board. Certainly, and and, and I mean, we'll see if it if it stays that way. We haven't seen either of Riley's commanders yet. Uh, who knows? If yeah, an interesting part them. of the mix. Just no Armix in a, a a pod where Armix, I think, would have looked very good. Yeah. Absolutely. Armix is um, very, very strong into that board of creatures. And, uh, I mean, who knows? The, the Deluge also solves the problem. But True. How did Tainted Pact for it? It's pretty costly. And then had to use resources to defend it. Still a fair bit of resources left for Riley, given not a lot of fast mana in the hand outside of Dockside. So, might still have plenty of interaction dialed up, but the mana is a little bit taxed. Certain, All right. Certain... That. Scoots, I have a rule. Yes. Anytime someone just passes with three mana up, I just yell opposition, opposition agent. Opposition agent. Yeah, no, I, <laughs> that's, yeah. That's the thing I do. For sure. For sure. A, you know, a few years ago, would have said Hull Breacher, rest in peace, but opposition agent, here we are. We are in that time. Well, Hull Breacher, Hull Breacher can, can, can rest in turmoil. Uh, I'm good on that. Oh, no. That, that card is just miserable. Get that out of here. It is Flash Creature Spectral Sailor, Sailor from the Urica player, able to get started with a little bit of Flash action. They're going to be able and to draw to... a card. I mean, getting Yuriko developed is, I think, a meaningful part yeah. of getting Kenneth back in this game after that devastating Toxic Deluge. So this Spectral Sailor is a good one to have. Let you hold up your mana, not potentially die, and have a little creature to get in, get some action going. Get your cards recouped. Low on colored mana sources, though, is Kenneth. So if we put Yuriko in play, I mean, you're not really going to be able to hold much up, although commander spells would be online, like you have done a very good job calling out. We enjoy... So Yuriko. what, this is the posture of someone that intends to do some commander yeah, ninjutsu. Yeah, 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 <laughs> and already over the two mana, <laughs> just... Other hand on creature. We have a plan. Any big flips? Big flip enjoyers in the chat? Oh, I imagine there's some big flip enjoyers in the chat. A lot of good options. I mean, Temporal Trespass is massive. Let's see what else we got. Sometimes you see like Eldrazi Titans and yeah, stuff. Yeah, sometimes the, the cheeky... Uh, oh, we have the Shadow of Mortality. That's 15. Oh, that's, sure. that's a cool one. That one's neat. Couple, a couple big hits. Overall, actually, a pretty lean Yuriko deck, as far as I can tell. Here we go. Commandeer. We got Consigned to Oblivion. A couple sevens. Prismatic Vista is not a lot, but that is a colored source. If that's something that we that need access to. Mana. Would not surprise me if we did. Yeah, that one's getting deployed quick. Yeah. We enjoy mana. All right. All right. 
right. We head into Goose's turn. A good turn, I'd say, from Kenneth. As far as getting back in the game, yeah. creatures are low on the board, can get, do some attacking, got some colored sources up. We'll see. Uh, I'm telling you, Goose here, I don't know what they have left in the chamber, but the consult is still such a puzzle to me. Oh, it's Aven, Aven Mind Sensor, response to the Marsh Flats crack. Whoa. All right. Opposition agent's slightly worse cousin. <laughs> just like, all right, well, that's happening. I'm just going to crack my vista here. <laughs> oh, I see. Is, there's Riley reaching for mana. Is there opposition agent too? We just never search it? What are we doing? No, okay, we can search. You can search this time. You can search this time. I have to imagine it's an island grab. Can't get a great look. Top four. Any hits? Boo. No hits. We tried. <laughs> we did try indeed. Well, I mean, no opposition agent, but there was an even mind sensor from the other player. Have to imagine that was going to start coming down soon. A lot of black and white creature decks in this pod. Have to imagine those cards are going to be features of multiple decks. Certainly, certainly, certainly. I mean, there are so many flash speed utilities in CEDH right now that uh, give you a lot of, of flexibility beyond the normal instant speed interaction. So cool to see Avon Mind Sensor, though. I haven't seen that in quite a long time. Yeah, that one much less common, kind of actually worse against like Orcish Bowmaster, like the new flash yeah. threats. Yeah. A little bit worse against those getting picked off pretty easily, but I mean, it looks great here. Pod full of Orcish Bowmasters, none to pick it off. It's going to do some work. What else is going to do some work is Timna the Weaver with Shieldred out the way, able to draw cards unimpeded. I think we are swinging into Steven? Steven deciding yeah. about... Sorts of plowshares. My goodness. No creatures. Get them off the board. I love this. I love this. This is the CEH that needs to happen. Too many people are playing to gates. Not enough. Look at all this. Look at all this removal. Look at it all. Beautiful. Yeah. It's cer certainly hard removal is, is in right now. I don't know what land that Steven tapped, but... Is that a command tower from a secret lair product? I don't know. This is my guess. I believe that is a command tower. If I can derive it based on the mana base here. Top lane. Uh, it's an exotic orchard. It's an exotic orchard, okay. From the Doctor Who set. Right. From the Doctor Who Swords is going to work against Timna. I mean, that's yeah. key. I mean, I think a lot of people could point to that Source of Plashers play and be like, that looks a little aggressive. I actually like it a lot. I think Goose is clearly the player in the lead. And if their entire plan for the previous turn was just put Timna into play, that clearly, yeah. there's like a disproportionate weight on it. I like picking it off with Source of Postures there actually quite a bit. Uh, certainly, I, I do not think it's the worst exchange you could make. Uh, I think you maybe leave yourself open to Yuriko, but if, if uh, hypotheticals are the only thing that you pay attention to, you know, you, you're going to stick yourself at the bottom of the barrel. You're not going to... You're not going to get what you want. I, I feel like you address the threat as it comes up. And at that point, I think Tim does enough of a threat and enough of a tempo play. You go for it. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I, I would point to kind of Tim to Krom's success being part in part to people not picking off Tim does enough. So I, I really like that play from Steven as Armix finally joining the fray. Hopefully going to start to uh, clean up the rest of the creatures. Make this game about something else. Make it about the spells. Make it about cards drawn. And that honestly might get to a, a point where Cabal needs to find more removal. Because, I mean, Cabal definitely wants the game to be about creatures and not spells. Certainly. I mean, I mean, certainly, uh, you know, all of the... It's funny that we've noticed the Shieldred, I think, improves Cabal's position. Uh... The removals have improved Kimball's position, the deluge, and I think we're seeing that that even maybe helped Kimball. So uh, it certainly it seems to be redeveloping very quickly. So I, I feel like we had that momentum on for Goose, but I feel like the momentum is maybe shifting 
towards oh Kamala. definitely I, I mean after that sword to plowshares i think really things started to shift a little bit and this ranger captain uh actually still being a, a tutor that works also helps shut down spells and I, I mean i don't know what the artifact count is for armix right now but given that the little amount of fast mana that riley's had it's really low so you're not really at risk to lose your ranger captain even if uh that's something that riley even wants to do might should be keeping the other players in check and now I, I think the momentum, you know, when you're talking about it, is kind of switched to the players in third and fourth. I think the players in first and second are both kind of in a little bit of trouble all of a sudden. But Orcish Bowmasters joining can change that real quick. And we'll see where that damage is going to go. Did that go to Goose's face? Just don't even care about the mind sensor. That can stay around. We are, <laughs> Love we, it. are we are good with just attacking the goose and life total pressure very good at the moment so let's see what happens yeah been kind of a quiet player through the first few turns of this game i mean cabal and shieldred speaking loudly to life total pressure were answered fairly quickly but now i mean with all the creatures attacking it's started right back up and <laughs> once again this game is just about creatures again you know I i've noticed that the creature centric decks in cdh making a big resurgence and I, I love to see it like I'm, I'm playing decks with 20 creatures in them now and what is that is that the cover of darkness i believe oh it, it is check. okay yeah banger the, the, the ninja <laughs> wrath yeah the cover yeah, of the, darkness yeah ninjas now have fear i assume we're picking ninja yeah ninjas, have fear, ninjas yeah. now have fear and we found Fallen Shinobi, I think. Oh, no, that's the other one. That's, that's uh, the other Lord. one. Ingenious Infiltrator. Ingenious Infiltrator. There you go. I don't know why I know Whatever that. Whatever ninja deals come down short card. You just got Yuriko ninjas dialed up. I guess This, so. this is a real test of the casting chops here. Cover of Darkness. <laughs> Cover of Ingenious Darkness. Ingenious Infiltrator. Let's go. Infiltrator. Yeah. If you don't love this, yeah, I mean, you just don't love CDA. It's just off. Cover of Darkness getting it done. This is, that I was mean... a casual banger in my day. We are at we are in real gamer hours right now, honestly. <laughs> uh, cover cover of darkness, very sick. Yuriko gets the it's the innovation in the Yuriko server that kind of happens as a result of crack pipe late night brewing sessions is is always very <laughs> cool. They're just they're always in there working, finding the next piece of crack pipe technology, and I I love it. Crack pipe technology, huh? Well, Cover of Darkness looks incredible on this board yeah. as attacking has started to get hard. Not anymore. Cover of Darkness, hard to answer, gets the job done, makes Yuriko look like quite the threat so long as the game's about creatures, which Ranger Captain is making it so. And we will uh, we'll see. I mean, this might actually single-handedly get Kenneth back in this game. And Orcus Masters, Cover of Darkness, Yuriko, quite the board state to have right now. Beginning to like Kenneth's position quite a bit. It was such a, it was such a quick turnaround, too. Your code, it just developed so fast. It only took that Spectral Sailor for the train to start rolling again. It's pretty crazy. Yeah, having, I mean, just having that single creature to start attacking, such a big deal for the Yuriko deck. Having it dialed up even after the Wrath, a huge part of Kenneth's main, like, stay in this game. I mean, normally Yuriko really can't survive a Wrath. I think when you watch that deck play, you watch it get Wrath, all of its little, little darks go away, and it's like, okay, well, now you need to find something and then wait another turn to attack. Having that flash creature dialed up was such a big deal. Yeah. And, you know, now we're going to see how Riley answers. Has a removal spell every turn in the form of Armix, which should, in theory, look very good against his board state. Beginning to get a little overloaded already, I think. Yeah, I mean, the Armix, you kind of have uh what is the what is the term? You have an overabundance of targets here. Uh, uh, a, a nice selection of targets for our mix, and we're finally gonna see it attack. We'll see the direction. Well, we're getting a flame first, so we're gonna see. Oh, it's Crom. We're oh, getting okay. in Crom bat. We just decided. all, yeah. all creatures. We're going in. It's creature time. It is time to. It is time to block and attack. So much attack step usage. You'd think this is casual, Commander. I love this. This is awesome stuff. Notably, Riley's artifact count i is there one in their graveyard i don't see it i don't think so i think we have but treasure I think we're period two yeah with armix and treasure Treasure armix yeah yeah armix of so course we can't snipe ranger captain we can't snipe yuriko the most two of the best do, targets on the board yeah the, the most we do is kill an obm here 
Maybe. Yeah, I mean, it's Ball Masters if you don't care about searching, because uh, if yeah. you don't have any tutors in hand, I imagine the Mind Sensor's playing on your team. Yeah. Otherwise, maybe you want the Mind Sensor, but then, you know, there's options to trade off, and I think I think Ranger Captain trading with Armic is actively bad for you if you're Riley, so the attack might not even be good. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I... So I, much combat. I love this so much. Now, I mean, you want to talk about life total pressure. This game is, this game is about creatures and life totals. The uh, the four four flyer entering the fray tends to um, tends to uh, sorry producer Alex talking in my ear the four four flyer entering the fray tends to change the texture of the game a little bit. You have both an effective attacker and blocker. Everybody deploying their creatures. Uh, if Gusov wasn't in the lurch before, he is certainly there now. Pretty excellent. Um, Pretty excellent board development and gameplay from everyone, honestly. Armix yeah, is going is, to I mean, back. I like this navigation a, a lot from most of these players. I mean, the removal has been, I think, well-timed and well-thought-out. You know, there's been, whatever, one or two mistakes. Nothing nothing severe. Brain freeze hitting the bin. Yeah, that one's not worth a whole lot. Yeah. Gonna pick off the Bowmasters. Like this yeah. a lot. If Krom's gonna start drawing cards, yep. you're really gonna not want your stuff to be getting pinged off or whatever. The the Orcish army getting bigger as a result of that. So picking off the Bowmasters, I think, makes a lot of sense. Like the deduction there from Riley. And keeping Krom on defense, I think, a loud statement as far as what your plan is. Blocking matters. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's uh, We've determined that creatures are, in fact, a threat, finally. <laughs> so Steven... yeah, CDH development in at work right here, round number one of Punt City Three. Stephen going into their turn with five mana and a Ranger Captain. Probably not indicative of anything, given the way that Stephen has uh, seemed to have built their deck more of a, a grindy, controlling type deck. But Stephen's life total has to be quite high at this point, given all the. Various Cumball triggers and Veto triggers that that they had when those were in play. I wonder if Ad Nauseam happens. Yeah, ad Nauseam, I mean, this might be one of the worst pods to resolve at Ad Nauseam. It's just not clear that you even win the game. Yeah. I'm going to see what the Cumball win condition is. I see an Aetherflux Reservoir. There's no no way we're manual moding that, right? What are we, <laughs> I what are we doing here? I assume it's got to be like <laughs> Citadel or something or are we just we could yeah i mean maybe we're i'm sure there's some kind of infinite pseudo infinite with some creature combo has to be some kind of creature combo <laughs> looks like we're getting in some ninja combat yuriko gonna be getting in and of course no blockers on goose's side i mean the orcish army is gonna go unblocked and get that ingenious infiltrator in play that's two ninjas and things are really gonna start snowballing quick let's do some reveals two flips Luda and two Delta draws Smith. coming oh Oh, yeah. Four cards coming. Two lands, not that exciting. One draw or two from the Ingenious Infiltrator. Whenever an energy control does come to a player, oh, you get two. Yeah. <laughs> Did we choose to not... I didn't see Kenneth draw cards. I just saw the two Yuriko flips resolve. I don't... I'm not sure if Kenneth resolved their draws, but... Yeah, I was looking at the deck list. I assume they did. I mean, it's a pretty I, I important assume, part of the yeah. important part of the deck. A lot of cards to work with either way for Kenneth. As we are going back to Gustav, we'll see if there's any end step effects. A lot of mana up for the goose. See if they can convert that mana into something. Can't get Timna or Malcolm online. Well, here's the consultation. I mean, that was from, like, turn two. Yeah. An upkeep mystical tutor found this consultation. Finally being cast uh, up. Yeah, we we uh, we we left our mystical tutor. We, we plopped that on the table, and now we're resolving our consult. We'll see if it resolves. What do you think? I mean, is there a difference in upkeeping this versus end-stepping it? I, I, it's not clear where we're at in the, the game right now. We had all our mana up was in it, step anyway, so. Was it upkeep, or is it in main phase one? might be an in step still because we had all our mana up like goose didn't play anything through the turn cycle so this might okay. be on um Kenneth's end step so i mean I, I don't know i don't know what we're doing here every time i cast the consultation without a thoracle dialed up uh i die yeah so you know maybe we are on the main phase just going consults 
historical right now. Yeah, I was wondering be, if we're maybe where we're at. doing it inside out, and I think maybe that might be what the deliberation at the table is over. It looks like consult resolves. What did we name? Oh, well, we didn't just name nonsense because we're flipping cars instead of flipping a whole deck. Did we name Sloppity Bile Piper? Oh, okay. Is that your go-to? Uh, uh, is that even a legal name? Yeah, it is. <laughs> it's from the the Warhammer set. Uh, my no, my go-to is uh, Admiral Blurpity Blurp Boop, but I think it's gonna be Holy Cow now. Holy Cow is nice. I I, I just use you are already dead. You I'm are like, already dead. Is a like good that? One. We are still flipping. We flipped for our own Orcish Bowmasters. Bowmasters, wow! Okay. Yeah, I imagine we're on end step here, given that we're you know we're yeah. just still dialing all this up. Flashing in the bow boy, maybe we have a, a windfall or something. That would be very. Fun. Yeah, there we go. We got this corrected. This was on end step. Yeah. Yeah, windfall would be awesome here. A lot of cards in hands for all the players, I think, except maybe the ball player. Oh, a little crom action. Oh. Get a crom draw. Crane. And that's going to happen before the bow master is actually resolved, so don't get a ping off that. Oh. Got to take care of the mind sensor. Okay, we're zipping that up. Maybe we have a fetch land in hand or a tutor we want to make live. Very cool. We, Orcish Bowmasters just keeps changing the texture of every game that I've seen it in. It, it is at once, uh, all at once, an immediate threat and... Uh, just a, a an excellent control piece. Uh, uh, I mean, you saw how fast it, it got uh, taken out in Yuriko, on Yuriko's board. Totally warping scene. Yeah, I mean, it's and... it's a huge target for, for any board state. For, and, you know, it's just very much about the Ristics, Mystics, the drawing, the cards, like, you know, Krom, Timnas, whatever, what have you. Like, these board states are very much about incremental cards. Wheels are an available option, like you see. And really only in Cube is the other format where you even see this happen. But um, impressive there as it is here. And it, it, I think it's a loud statement to deck building to see a deck like Cabal show up. Here's like a creature deck. If you look through the creature list of Cabal, basically nothing has one toughness. You're, you're like, you saw like one of the only creatures that even has right. one toughness the among sensor, the list yeah. of 29 creatures in that deck because everything just gets picked off by Bowmasters. So here's a calling the week. That one's going for the army. Four black mana, getting rid of the token. If we trigger Krom, we get the token back. I think we're seeing a fetch with Polluted Delta in response by Kenneth. Kenneth's uh, playing the Polluted Delta instead of the basic Swamp uh, is looking like a, uh, a 10,000 IQ move now. Yeah, an, an, an intentional choice, yeah. it seems. Especially in the face of a mind sensor. Have to, I mean, pretty heads up. I think a lot of people would be like, well, this doesn't work and just not play it. Now we got blue mana available. Eventually, before. eventually someone's going to want to pick up that ancient, that Aven Mind Sensor. Ancient Mind Sensor. There's a new card. No, Aven Mind Sensor. But it's just, it's just like a super mind sensor. You know, they made Vein Ripper the big blood artist. It's okay. just like there the super go. mind sensor. Like you, you get to look at the top card. That's it. It's like a nine nine or whatever. One, just some one massive card, thing. Nine nine. <laughs> Ancient two, Mind Sensor. Hire me, wizards. I'll make it. I'll even give it flying and vigilance to make it black and green. Oh, I. Oh, okay. We're yogging. It's yogging time. <laughs> Yog boss will. Well, there was a dauntless. There's a dauntless dismantler. Yeah. Discarded earlier. I can't imagine that's part of the plan. We have mystical tutor, demonic consult, swords, calling the week. What are we doing here? I mean, I mean not... getting access to the consult again, man. Yeah, I mean we're yogging into a ranger captain, right? So. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, I'm not cracking. I'm not cracking. Yeah, no. <laughs> I don't. I don't see quite. I mean, mystical tutor consult. I guess you have in your bin. You have access to. You have to cast again. something else, right? No matter yeah. what, you have to cast something else. Yeah. Now, if it is just Thorical, why didn't we do this before? Maybe you didn't have it in hand or whatever. But that's, like, the only punish. That's the only, like, face-out punish. Yeah. If there's just Thorical in hand for Goose, you can just go, like, all right, Thoughts is Oracle now that that's resolved. Right. And you still have the black floating from the calling of the week. Consult rolled up. But... So, Yogwill exiles itself. If Goose is... Okay, we're playing a land, <laughs> Land drop. Too. Love it. Good Let's start. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. 
Oh, are we getting off this oh, shit? Jesus. <laughs> Jeez. Jeez. There's a sorts of blouses already, I think, in the bin for Goose, but just cannot get away from these anti-search yeah. cards from the Cabal player. Steven says, no searching. You're not doing it. <laughs> An expression of exasperation, maybe, there yeah. from Goose. Can't say I blame him. Can't say I blame him. Yeah, that... So we it, go. Yeah. You gotta let it resolve first. Yeah, I think that's what we're doing. Gotta let it resolve, then you can swords it. Which I believe what we're doing here. Yeah, we go. Reaching for that sword very quick. Get that trash out of here! We Stop do, it! <laughs> we do not want this. I mean, it does tax Goose's mana here. If we want double blue open for Thassa's Oracle, we now are down to no, no mana for protection. Uh, Correct. Yeah, and, and you know, that was going to be true regardless. Given the opposition agent it was put on the stack, you know, either you lose the fetch or you lose this. So, like, you might as well just cast the sword. You're going to lose it anyway with the yog will turn ends. So, obviously, a sequence that you're priced into. But yeah, like you mentioned, does tax the mana. Uh, also, what's left? We did just consult the swath of our deck. We didn't have like a good land left yeah. to fetch. What what fetchables do we have left? I I don't think I saw you see in the consult. I don't see it in play, so it could be. Is a it was a polluted delta, right? So it could be. You see, it gets every land yeah, in the deck. Yeah, delta it grabs any duel in the deck, yeah. including shock lands. If that's something we have access to. <laughs> okay, so that's the, hey a surveil land on the city sewers. It's surveil time. Not that great when you've just yogged but yeah not the time for it doesn't really feel your graveyard that well at least you also get to look at you the know top, you know yeah at least a quick quick fetchable count here how many shock lands do we have if any we have a hollowed fountain that could have been grabbed it is uh, wild from... to me that people are cutting shock lands it looks like we have water grave no godless shrine that's the one we're passing on yeah pass on godless shrine have okay. the rest of the duels and one each of the shocks okay a uh, little bit of black mana left to work with the tap land i think speaks to maybe we've pivoted into value yagmas will versus yeah. you know whatever other plans we might have had hey i mean i've savine's wrecked back a land before i understand it yeah busted it's just like a rampant growth. Yeah. Three mana. It actually, it's not that good. But, you know, it works. Sometimes it sometimes it works. I mean, we have... Uh... Okay. Surveil Chain of Vapor to Exile. We've Tough. just decided we don't want that anymore. Okay. A goosh. Gush. A goosh. <laughs> a goosh. Yeah, there you go. Goosh. I love I goosh. like it. Well, lands were... aren't even played for turn. Can't replay any lands, but do get to pick up the Surveil Land. That's cute. Yeah. That is a nice synergy. I had not considered it. Typically good alongside Doomsday, so I imagine that's what it's there for. As this is a Doomsday deck, yeah. But here, sometimes you just sometimes you just gush. Sometimes you just gush for value. Did we rip a lotus and... petal off the gush? Are our dreams alive still? Maybe four mana is very different than three mana underneath this Yogmos will. And we do still have access to the Calling the Weak, which has the Arkish army back thanks to Krom. Thanks to Krom. So we do yeah. have just like a free creature to sack too. Very interesting. Uh, you have to wonder if, because if Gustav is doing what I assume Gustav is doing, you have to wonder if Steven will take the bait of cracking that Ranger Captain. Yeah. yeah, I mean, there hasn't been a good time other than with Yogmoth's Will on the stack, which yeah. I don't think is showing enough. That graveyard was really weak. Yeah, that graveyard was not as stacked as it needed to be, for sure. Mox oh, Here's a Mox Diamond out of hand. Wow, and the Gush able to turn that online, bringing lands back to hand. Very good sequencing from the Goose. The Goose is... Uh, Goose has, cooking. still has You're cooking. it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> In the early Still days of it. online CEDH tournaments, Gus was uh, quite a contender. The demonic tutor. demonic tutor out of hand. All right, now things are getting a little suspicious. I think we have face up Dorco consult. Yeah, I think there needs to be a discussion here. You had you, you had know, to crack there, right? Yeah, you had to crack there. I think they're dead. Yeah, I, you, I think I think that's a moment where you had to crack. That's face up Dorco consult. No time to crack now. 
and this might just be it. If there's no protection, no backup. Very uh, quickly went through that. Maybe there's other plans, but this looks face up Oracle consult to me. It, it sure feels like we're at the point where maybe Steven is saying, Hey, you have two blue players. Uh, solve solve, solve the, problem. the problem. Yeah. Fix it. Yeah. Fix I mean, it, blue man. Fair. Fix it. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, no protection showing. Yeah. So, you know, really only need, like, one piece to get the job done. And Ranger Captain, after getting Source of Postures, might be the only thing left in the repertoire. Now, I do want to do a quick check for Angel's Graces. I just Ooh. saw uh, Steven pick up his hand and read the card. I've and seen I a don't few. Know if it's an Angel's Grace or not, but that might be a good reason to just quickly. If I'm an Angel's Grace in the end, I'm f sixing like I'm checked out straight through that demonic tutor. Probably, yeah. I don't know for sure, but probably, assuming it works the way I want it to, which I believe it will. Which I think saves. Does that save the whole table? It says opponents can't win the game, right? There is Angel's yeah. Grace in Steven's deck. I think Wait, I see it's in his hand. hand. He just flashed it. Yeah, I think he just flashed he that just angel's flashed grace. Angel's grace to the camera. This oh. is devastating. Oh, oh, that would be a problem. Poor Gustav. Now we'll see if Goose can sniff it out. I mean, not cracking Ranger Captain. You might be excited thinking your opponent's throwing, but when you're playing against good opponents, every move that looks weird has a purpose behind it. And this angel's grace could be devastating if there's no plan for it. This is, I mean, honestly, this is. This game, you know, chat earlier was saying this game has been a bit of a slog, but I, I heavily disagree. And, and we're, we're like, we're coming down to the the point of the game where all of this resource development and creatures being put on the board are, are, are coming to a head. And I can't wait to see how it resolves. Uh, Uwe, mana from mystical, Mis tutor? okay, mystical tutor, possibly. I don't know if that helps us. I guess it... Yeah, I don't know what that accomplishes unless you have a way to draw a card. I mean, we've already used Gush. Yeah, we've already used I, Gush. That would have been the way to do it before. Didn't need it. Uwe in the chat saying... Covers... Sorry, go ahead. I didn't mean to... Okay, no, no, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go to the chat. I don't even know. Uwe in the chat what saying, is... I wonder what Steven is waiting for for the RCE crack. And if... if... If my if my sniffer is correct, they're waiting to cast Angel's Grace at the worst possible moment for Gustav. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that appears to be the case. You know, a, a lot something you can kind of tell when you play Magic a long time. People's body language often gives them away. Uh, yeah, Pact of Negation, I think Goose maybe just thinking like, uh, maybe it's a piece of interaction of some kind. Yeah. Some kind of silence or something. Yeah, we're going to pick up the Pact. That doesn't stop Angel's Grace. It has split second. Yeah, yep, we cannot... Not too many ways to stop Angel's Grace. That... <laughs> Yeah, we oh have... no, oh, we no. probed Kenneth to see what the interaction is. It's Maybe Goose just saying, I can't beat Angel's Grace. If you have it, you have it. That's an exile. Get that out of there. What? Nope, we're drawing the pack. We're, we're drawing, drawing the, the pack. pack. Yep, draw the pack. Not There's that. There we okay. go. Okay, judge at the table. We love that. Love having the judge at the table. That oh, would have been my messy. Gosh. So... This Angel's Grace. Look, well, Angel's Grace doesn't. You don't see much of it anymore. The blowouts yeah. of the Angel's Grace. But this looks. I don't think Goose has sniffed it out. And it looks like it's coming. That's there a Thassa's is Oracle. Thassa's Oracle. Uh, this is where if you oh if you're Steven, you gotta sell it. You're like, dang, I, I guess I guess I should have cracked Ranger Captain earlier. Yeah. Man, I don't think there's anything I can do. Yeah, I mean that resolves, I guess. You could even you could <laughs> even like if you wanted to break Goose's spirit even more, crack Ranger Captain now. Okay, so the yeah, Pyroblast. Pyroblast coming down. None of the players know about this Angel's Grace. I'm telling you, that posture from Steven just gives it away. And they're fighting all over it. Mindbreak yeah. Trap, Pyroblast. There's Force of Will. Wait, oh, it's pitching silence. He doesn't have it. He was just flashing it. Oh, no, we might be out of action. And the Angel's Grace gets to live another day in Steven's hand. Wow. Oh, it's uh, the Mind Break Trap coming down. Wow. Oh, no. I'm going to cast the Demonic Consultation and Goose set it up the best that he could and may not be good enough. 
So we're going to, instead of anything, we're going to consult for interaction and hope it's the last card in our deck? Is that what we're doing? Yeah, you basically need whatever interaction piece works. I mean, I would just name a blue card. You have the force already. Yeah. So I would just name whatever blue card and hope it's the bottom card of your deck. Or bottom two or whatever. Did we name... Yeah, Okay, there's a reanimate. Okay. I don't think we named any of that stuff. This could be we'll good. See. All right. Yeah, I mean, it'd be it'd be so heartbreaking if you get lucky enough for it to like be the bottom card or whatever, and, and then just get Angel's Grace. Grace. Oh my god. That would break me. That it's, would break me. It's gonna crush his. Soul. Okay. How many cards is that? Did we name Fears? So there's three. It looks like three. But there's only two devotion. There's only two blue devotion. Oh no. Uh, oh my gosh. Nate, this is brutal. This is oh my god. We cannot cast it. We don't have commanders online. Yeah, you force We're pitch it. Force though. pitching and then yeah. All right. Showing the hand of Necro Silence everything, scooping them up, wow. revealing the last four cards of the library. That's not good enough. And Goose now dead. Dead. No literally no game plan. Nothing left to do. Very unfortunate. Even has it moved. They never needed to crack Ranger Captain. Steven, I'm good. Steven love was it. Rooting and tooting the whole time. I love it. Locked I love Steven throughout the course of this game. Yeah. Cabal, a suspicious choice in a an Orcish Bowmasters meta. Deck has looked very potent in this particular pod, both with the creatures that interact and when not to interact. An underrated skill in CDH. All right. Well, Riley gets another turn. Armix, still an imposing threat. Now down probably the player most likely to win with just a density of spells. And you talked about somebody in the chat mentioning this is a slog. I think it's definitely going to be a slog now. It's, it's, listen, honestly, that was, <laughs> that was one of the, one of the greatest sequences of magic that I, I've seen in a, in a little bit. That was, uh. And the the just the casual, you gotta wonder if Steven was like, actually, I'm just gonna casually flash this to the camera, and not my opponents. I don't know. <laughs> it, it's you break it, the fourth wall. Yeah, it. that's what I'm saying. A little like Deadpool. What are you nerds worried about? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's it's. Oh my gosh, that was such a great sequence, and Steven still has Angel's Grace. <laughs> so. Uh, it, Steven didn't have to move. Steven, Steven was locked in. He's still Ranger Captain and Angel's Grace still in hand. Crazy. The, yeah, I mean, still having all those resources dialed up is nice. Although the Angel's Grace, that was probably the best spot for it. Yeah. Like, obviously, you're excited that other players are using their interaction because now, like, other stuff might work. But I think when you're talking about Esper decks and the way they win, it's much more often the Tainted Pack console stuff versus the Breach stuff. And you don't really win in the face of Angel's Grace with against the Breach stuff because you just get milled for your entire deck with Brain Freeze and that kind of thing. But against an Esper deck where you're just doing the, like, all-in Thoracle Console, hope the silence and stuff's good enough or whatever interaction <laughs> backup I have, Angel's yeah. Grace is, like, at its best there. Yeah. So it is getting a little bit worse as the game progresses. Uh, you have to assume that someone else is going... Is that a cavern? No, that's, no, that's another... Same it's the same exotic portrait, portrait, actually. It's yeah. same exotic We're just portrait. playing it after floating mana. And sacking. This looks like Diabolic Intent, and it is. We're moving quickly as Riley, yeah. I think. Riley might smell a little bit of blood here. I think maybe. Are we... Are we all... Oh are we going to get blown out? Is please, please tell me it's another Thoracle Console please, just to I, die to Angel's Grace. I need this. I need it to be Oracle Console. Please. We don't have the right mana configuration right now. Land's already been played. We have Colorless, Exotic Orchard, and the Blue-Red Land. That does not Thoracle Consult right now. Uh, Producer Alex in my ear saying, How many times do I have to teach you this lesson, old man? <laughs> We'll see if it. We'll see what happens here. Uh, it, Willow Lysander in the chat said Stephen rocking the total power move, flashing the AG. There's no way I buy that was accidental. Oh yeah, me neither. And I can't believe no one. Like clearly, no one else at the table sniffed it out. But like the second he was like reading a card in his hand with a ranger captain, didn't crack this. I'm like, you have to have angel yeah, right? There's no way. There. No way. You're too good at magic to not be doing this. You're, you're, you're playing in a 160 person cap tournament. You you are you are doing something. Mystic. Oh, Aurora. it's a fish. Hey, that's not a bad target with uh, Gustav having conceded with their orcish bowmaster in play. 
Yeah? And two mana left over. What's the follow-up? It's Snap. It's Snap. Uh, targeting. Target the Ranger? Ranger Captain. And we did not crack because Steven, once again... The... No, never crack. Yeah. Never crack life. I love the way Steven has navigated yeah. this game so much. I know you're not supposed to root for people in the booth, no, but man, no. I want Steven to win so bad. You got to. You got to. <laughs> Steven has been... Steven has been... I, I, I hate to use the term plucky to describe a player, but Steven has been just... His stick to has been incredible this entire... This entire game. Yeah. We're playing... Black-white uh, pathways. More yeah. pathway action. Pathway action. The name of that too. one escapes me. Uh, uh, bright climb, I think. Oh, never didn't have it. God, uh, showing me up. We're just gonna recast the ranger captain. I get to search again. Thanks. Get, Thanks oh, for snapping. Uh, can I have an es <laughs> can I have an esper sentinel? That would be so cool. I'd like to draw cards too, please. Yeah. Never trigger anything except your crom. Love it. Notably, Armix leaving the board does mean no creatures that can block the Yuriko ninjas. Yeah. As fear. Uh, looks for black creatures or artifact creatures specifically. Did sacrifice both of the black and artifact creatures that Riley had. That Krom on a defense not looking that good. Brutal. Is there ascended? Yeah. Okay. All right. We've pivoted. Oh, we don't even. I don't need no stinking cards. You're yeah. dying. <laughs> I have at, at this point, Steven's like, yeah, I have Ranger Captain. Yeah, I have Angel's Grace, but also I have a six six. Enjoy. Yeah. Shoving Beat it right this. down your face. It's just incredible. Stern scolding. That actually will oh, counter the Sarah Ascendant. Brutal. Does not get the power boost on the stack. Brutal. Wow. Stern scolding a card I'm coming to like a lot more in CDH. Yeah. Uh, as time progresses. I Love mean, that. It inclusion. hits relevant threats. It hits a lot of relevant threats. It's, you know, it's the new... Luckily, I, I'm seeing people pull off or you can't refuse uh, to add certain scolding. Finally, we've entered the meta wherein offer you can't refuse is getting cut from decks. What a bad... No, I'm sorry. I can't say that, but I don't like that card. What do we got? Kenneth making the sixth land context. drop. Uh, <laughs> Kenneth land love maxing. It. I love to see it, honestly. Land maxing. <laughs> oh, I can't do this. Making, All making right. land drops is so good. Okay. Yeah, no. All this oh available God. to be unblocked if Kenneth wishes. We're going to draw so many cards. All right. Another turn for the Eureka player means, I mean, what is this? Four more cards? Yep. Uh, assuming my ability to read cards is correct. Yeah, yeah that we is draw correct. two first. We draw yeah, two and then, and then flip, flip two. Cards for Yuriko. Crazy. Maybe not flipping cards for Yuriko. Am I missing something? Oh, those are on the stack of limb duels vaulting? Gas! Oh, oh no! <laughs> oh no! Quick graveyard check for temporal trespass? Do we can we just extra turn here? We could. Uh... I'm not sure how deep the graveyard is right now, but I think we have enough to to delve away for trespass. Uh, yeah, I mean, do we do that... the? Do we play the miracle turn in Yuriko still? I don't uh, know. Let's get a good look here. That one is temporal manipulation. Manipulation, I think. I think? Yeah. I don't see that one. Okay. Relatively sorcery light is this Yuriko deck. Like I said, pretty lean. It's... It is Yuriko in Swiss. Oh, yeah. It. it... <laughs> It impresses me almost every time we see it when there's like a, a very competent Eurico pilot in Swiss. Uh a Swiss killer for sure. Uh Swiss killer, huh? Swiss killer in my opinion. What about the Swiss have to say about that? Uh well, not much. They're fairly neutral about it. <laughs> Fair enough. Lim Duel's Vault. A card I I've, I've seen kind of fall off of CDH. Uh I think for better. The card, uh, while powerful, the resolution of it, a little tedious in CDH. I, Both having a plump life total and plump deck. I do hate resolving Limduel's Vault, but I also play, I also tend to play decks that need one combo piece in the applicable colors. So, 
Uh, Liam Duel's sure. Vault, notable great Glinthorn Buccaneer finder. Uh, sure. I, yeah, a little I, Grixis Malcolm action. Yeah, okay. I, th- I think there are contexts for Liam Duel's Vault, but but I don't I don't think it's a a must run anymore. We've gotten so many better cards. Please expand your horizons. Please expand your. When I think of you, I kind of think of the like Razakats, like non red. It's interesting going for a little Glinthorn Buccaneer these days. Are you? Uh, I'm a I'm a Glinthorn Buccaneer enjoyer. I'm a I'm a Grixis Malcolm, but I you know, I am back to playing. I I am a Razakats guy. I'm a Thrasios Timna guy, but I'm we're trying to expand our our repertoire a little bit. We're trying to be a, a more re- well rounded gamer. So. Ain't got nothing wrong with that, yeah. especially given that Razakats got has not gotten a lot better as the uh, days have gone on. Razakats stonks in the basement for sure. In the basement, full of water. Yeah, it's... the kitchen's on fire. There's no cooking. It's just everything's terrible. No, it's not. It's not a great time to be playing Razakats for sure. But it is a great time to be resolving Limduel's vault for Kenneth, who I think is now shuffling. Have we? Kept our pile of five Ooh, cards. We are five. Very excited to see the next two flips. That's the joy of Yuriko is we here at home and in the booth get to see what the top two are as they are being manipulated right now into the top five order put on top of the randomized library. So easy to resolve. We still got the hand on it though. A little little chest still thinking about it action. Still thinking about it, making sure. Life was have to be getting kind of low. Outside of, of course, Cabal, who just has life to work with for days. We're just Sarah's ascending everywhere. I have no idea what that I is. I would like not tell throw? you what that is. Oh, that no, is... it might be the Flash... Stifle? No, it is Roaming Throne. Holy cow. Roaming Throne. Did we get Roaming Throne and Thassa's Oracle? <laughs> Are those okay. the two cards? Why? Why? City of Brass as land for turn. I thought he played a land. Maybe I'm thinking of the previous turn. Uh, yeah, it's Thassa's Oracle. Yeah. And I think we actually know about a consult from earlier. I think we know there's a consult Roaming in Throne Kenneth's beat. hand. Oh, wow, Riley had... Oh, we got blast. more blasts! Oh my god. Goodness. Riley had both blasts. Steven just living the high life with Ranger Captain and Angel's Grace. Right. Oh, well, and the Angel's Grace not even up. Yeah. Steven's like, I don't need it. I don't, I don't need, need it. it. I got a Ranger oh. Captain and Riley's got oh, both blasts. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> Four mana left over. What will it be? I, I I couldn't tell you what that is. This one's on you. Um, It is... Uh, I I have no friggin' idea, Drake. I could not sure, tell you. That's fair. That's fair. All right, let's get let's get in the lab. We're gonna figure out what this is. Chat. What card is that? <laughs> it's looks a creature. Bo- I can, looks definitely like a creature. I I bet it's a ninja. Uh, could be. There's like thieves guild enforcer, which is a human rogue. Uh, could be. Uh, I don't know. I have to the night or, or Shadow, Shadow of Mortality, Mortality says Yeah, Shadow of Mortality, that's the one I'm thinking yeah. of. There we go. So that one I guess had to already be in hand. And your life total was low enough that we cast it for two? Yeah. And that's it... thirteen life point difference. Yeah. Seven seven's big though. Usurping Krom is the biggest creature on the battlefield. As if we were now thinking about keeping Mystic Remora or not. Tough? I tell you what, keeping Remora is so tough in the face of this much power in play. Yeah. Because you're just, like, not doing anything. <laughs> you're just, oh, uh, well, yeah, if everybody just passes, I take 100, and then I'm left with the same decision next turn. But one man is a low opportunity cost. Gonna pay. Card drawn. Certainly. Screen added. You know, I think you're at the point where your lo- your life total is so low that your game actions don't aren't particularly relevant what you choose to do and not do like it you're gonna die to combat or your flips anyway so just do it i'll spot from riley i mean i'd like to go back and do the count on how many creatures riley has killed or countered this game mm-hmm. it's a lot it's high like oracle we, we countered sarah send it we wrathed early in the game with toxic deluge we have armix going to work i mean just so many creatures killed and still 
the Eureka player here able to assemble a really big board. And now Dark Ritual, maybe it's time to get some spell action moving. Ranger Captain in play still. Are we gaming? What can we assemble? Okay. Oh. Dark Ritual okay. Soul Ring. Okay. Is this just replay Arbix? We got like one card left. We have a colorless, colorless floating. floating. What are we uh, doing? I believe we're using one black black, which is Praetor's 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 Targeting usually. Steven. <laughs> What? It's down. Just picks his no thought. Don't care. I, I have a pile yeah, of creatures. I, Pick your poison. What do you? Which bad card do you want? Quote unquote. Quote unquote. Bad <laughs> like, card. But, no thought to crack the ranger captain ever. Just yeah, whatever. Yeah, man, <laughs> what, what do you want? What, what do you want? Like, are you looking for? Got a rug of smother. You want that? <laughs> oh my god. Rug. <laughs> the... got, got my Tinder in my ninety nine. You want that thing? What do, what do you want? You looking for like a roaming throne or? <laughs> Got a Heliod you into that? Can Heliod? You should get the ballista too. Oh, oh, I love Steven's style too much. I'm eating this up. I'm eating this up. Oh. Yeah, look, we're, we're, look, Heliod, I love this. A little glimpse into the gameplay here. Heliod moved to the front, giving that one a look. I think he actually selected the Heliod. Nice. All right, sure. <laughs> oh, no, he's decided otherwise. Okay, okay, fair enough. I think you're supposed to grab the ballista if you're going to do that. That one at least has some utility at picking stuff off. Ugh. Lure is actually a reasonable option, I'd say. Yeah, Lure I don't Lure know what is... Raven looks like, but if you have, like, a pedal or something, it's fine. Lure is certainly, yeah, would be would be great. Are we just grabbing a tutor? <laughs> yeah, sure. We tutor could for just, tutor the hard way. Like, I mean, we have a brain freeze in our yard. We could just grab a tutor from Steven at this point. I didn't actually get a look at what was selected, but I was picked pretty quickly. Uh, three mana left over. We'll see if we're going to be casting anything. Crom getting involved in Crombat. I believe we've kind of realized that one's not doing a lot of blocking right now. Uh, as Ranger Captain is also not really getting into attack mode, and you can't block anything under the cover of darkness. So mm -hmm. that Cullis has floated away as we move to combat, and looks like the turn is now passed anyway. All right, Steven, you, you've done a good job not dying with cards like Angel's Grace so far. Let's we'll see what you can get started. Uh, in your black-white creatures deck, Cabal no longer part of the equation. That one costs seven to get back into play, so still not even there. Need a land to even start to consider that again. With your deck now completely destroyed after that Praetor's Grass, what do you even do here? Blind is Obedience? A, is that a Smothering Tithe? It could be Smothering Tithe. Yeah, it is Smothering Tithe. Whoa! Uh, that was strong. We are casting Cabal. That's the plan. Uh, yeah, not now, but certainly after Yuriko's turn. Yeah. I mean, you just draw 100 cards <laughs> over the course of Yuriko's doing its thing. So I'm you, I've seen a huge uptick in recent uh, events for CEDH, and it has looked just absolutely sensational every time it's been into play. And yeah, we're already pointing to that. Yeah, you already know what it is. Yeah. You already know what's going on. Treasure time. I think with the with the with like the the focus that we have on on Ristic study on Mystic Remora these days that Smothering Tide stonks indeed are skyrocketing, and it's the um the Atraxa players I think are what initially brought it back. I'm trying to slam Love that to big angel, but been a smothering tithe apologist for my entire time in CDH. Just roaming throne, roaming joining throne. the party. <laughs> that is. We are about to go to Bonkers Town. Oh my gosh! Yeah, I mean, this is, we're approaching just like a draw seven every turn. I, yeah. I don't know how far we are from that, but man, we're not far from it. This is a problem, and like obviously it's a problem, but this is like a big problem. Where I think I don't know what Cabal's options are. I know there's a lot of removal in Steven's deck. Yeah, there's his own deluge. Like I mean, even things like get lost, go for the throat. Like, long goodbye. Like, there is removal spells in this Cabal deck. So, I have to imagine goodbye? we got to start getting some of those involved. Oh, wow. oh, yeah. Uncountable? Talk to me. Get lost also. Uh, yeah, cavern, dude, caverns of Ixalan staple. Soul, yeah. We just got everything. We got it all. Removal spells. We are blocking. We are blocking. What are we blocking? The only thing you can block is the Avatar? 
the 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 yeah shadow mortality shadow mortality oh, that one got blocked everything else gonna go through ranger captain may be losing its stonks as this game no longer appearing to be about spells at all yeah all about creatures and we're gonna draw two and make that four uh-huh one more card. There we go. Okay, no, I think we might have already done it. Now it's time for four Yuriko flips. That's four damage. Make that five damage. Five? One more? One more? Brainstorm, Rhystic, Mental Misstep? Do we want to brainstorm more. with the... I think we want to Oh, with the last one on the stack. The yeah, sure. Wow, we get cute. Wow. I think sure. that is the correct sequencing here, depending on what you want to do in your turn. Well, give it some thought. Maybe has plans for the mana otherwise. Not flooded with other colored sources. Okay. Is that some mystical tutor, That's a I think? Remora. Is that Is a Remora? Remora? It could be. Yeah, maybe. That's... I don't know. It could be either of them. It's one know. blue. I can it's tell you blue. that. Yeah. For four Yuriko flips, kind of low on damage, but solid spells. I mean, we, we'll, we'll, we'll take it. The Rhystic Study is like okay what? here, I guess. I mean... I like the cantrips. I like getting misstep. Oh, I guess if you brainstorm, you give the Cabal player through more treasures. That's what yeah. we're thinking about. I mean, you just got four. Yeah. So, like, what are we even talking about? And if we cast more, we're getting even more. I mean, this Smothering Tithe is clocking in. Yeah. Going to work. Certainly Smothering Tithe being fairly ignored at this point. And I think that generally tends to come back and bite people pretty hard. Hey, what are you supposed to do? You gonna pay the two? Like, yeah, no. I mean, <laughs> well, look at I mean, look at all the mana Kenneth has developed. Like, do they have plans for seven mana on their turn? I mean, Cabal seven mana. I can do that. I can do that math. <laughs> that is, that is <laughs> got fair. three cards actually, in hand still. Actually, Angel's Grace among yeah. them. <laughs> yeah, actually, you got me. Okay, that is true. I mean, we'll see. We'll see. I I have been impressed so far with the Cumball deck's impact on this game for being a black-white deck, and honestly, not even casting that many spells. Just having the ability to crack things like Ranger Captain, having the Angel's Grace dialed up, has had a meaningful impact on this game. Playing Crack of the Marsh for that, although Yuriko looks like it's slipping away with this one of every time you draw eight. I mean, that's <laughs> yeah, I, not a good spot for the rest of the table. Drawing, drawing eight cards traditionally quite good. Uh... I will say that. Kenneth just has too many options. We have option paralysis right now. Paralysis. Yeah, I mean, I don't know exactly what you're supposed to be. I mean, it kind of looks like you're doing it all. I, I, The board, I don't even want to put anything else on the board. I just want to hold up mana the rest of the game. We're all, maybe cast like the fish or whatever. And just be like, yeah. look, I'm going to interact as of right now. If the game continues with no changes, I'm going to win this game as time goes to infinity. And uh, that's how I want it to stay. Kenneth's life total is looking a little low for infinity, given um, the uh, the crumb. But discard step, discarding three cards. Among them, yeah. the... Uh... The Mystical Tutor. I'm going to call it Mystical Tutor. All right. You know what? You're probably right. I'm just going to give it to you. Mystical Tutor. <clears throat> now, if you're Riley, once again, you're faced with the exact same problematic decision you had last turn. Do you pay for a fish underneath a pile of creatures? We have decided no. <laughs> Can't blame you. What is the card that is face down? That's the question. I gotta know. Yeah. I mean, there's a toxic deluge. Maybe we could be running that back. I don't know how much life. Right, but if it's deluge, right, isn't, with. isn't the shadow like a 15 15 or something? It's like a 7 7. Like you a seven, discount seven? on the, oh, okay. the playing it. It's just like a, you get a cheap 7 7. That's the okay. whole joke. But it costs 15 to cast. So Oda Wahara. Oda oh. Wahara, bounce your crom. See ya later, nerd. Get that one costs one last thanks to Yuriko oh. being in play. That's beautiful. Okay. I love that. Oh, well, I mean, I guess if you have Toxic Deluge, it looks better. It looks better now, yeah. But we'll see. I mean, gotta have a plan for something. You cast Player's Grass last turn. That's a big setup card if I've ever seen it. 
What do you have as a follow up? What are we at? Like six life? It can't be high. Riley, I think, has a very big game plan right now because they got the gamer shakes. Uh, well, we right. got the play arcane signet pass what, shakes. What do we that's, have? That's we have where we're at. Six treasures. Is that what uh, I see? Uh, yeah, I think six is right. We're on a D twenty, which yeah. when I when they bust out the D twenty, I assume it's just infinite. Yeah, like we're past the point of that. Matt, like you're gonna cast whatever you're gonna cast. We're like, like we're a, eleven mana right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just I think even just casting come ball here kind of ruins. Kind of, kind of certainly oh, cut yeah. short. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. The council of allocation has allocated himself back to the battlefield. We have allocated pain. Oh, dismantling the yeah. follow-up. That one could be pretty good against the current board state, right? Uh, no, it's artifacts it's only. It's artifacts that blows up. only. Okay. Yeah. That, but does this get the roaming throne? What is that worth? Probably not that much. Probably I mean, not it's worth eight. A lot. Probably not eight mana though. Hey, when you have a smothering tide, yeah, anything's that, that possible. Yeah, that is true. Anything's possible. <laughs> Back over to Kenneth's turn we go. And honestly, I'm kind of at the point where I don't know what Kenneth losing this game looks like. Yeah, I mean, I think you can kill Riley with combat damage here unless Riley has held up a third Pyroblast, I guess. Uh, but um, I, I'm feeling like... I mean, like Kenneth is, is we've seen the driver's seat change to each corner of the table, it feels like. And uh, certainly Kenneth is the one with the steering wheel right now, but we're going to combat. We've got, ooh, we have a, a large boy. And then, ooh, the roaming throne getting in. Yeah, I mean, it's a ninja. It's yeah. got cover of darkness. That's true. It is a ninja. So yeah, I think that's all going at Riley, and then yeah, you can see the separation there. Avatar and Special Sailor, those are going to be going at our friend Steven here, who is looking like he's gonna block with the yeah. dismantler. Value keeping the life total high. We've and at this point, the thing is, I I don't I personally don't don't know if I if I block there, given that the difference between drawing eight cards and drawing twelve cards is not like that big at this point oh it's path to path exile to was the find can make white with exotic orchard let you cast it paying for paying for the ward the... and that's going to take care of the, the roaming the throne roaming throne okay the things things have gotten things have changed okay well i mean that's yeah that's a huge threat off the battlefield if it does leave the battlefield now bear in mind of course there are i mean close to infinite cards in hand a full yeah. grip for sure well, for I mean, Kenneth, we, Kenneth see, like, has a response step earlier, so like yeah, it, it, at least misstep is live. But we're resolving but then combo the trigger. Combo starts getting involved, and what is that? And Riley's like, actually, could you just forget about this trigger, please? That would be cool. All right, so Kenneth opting to not protect the roaming throne. I mean. Yeah, sure. yeah. I mean, I think we still have a very dominating board. Yeah, it without the roaming we're throne, still drawing. Yeah, we're still drawing four. Like that's fine. Yeah, you're you're not really a deck that wins that much off the back of just raw card advantage. I mean, you need specific cards, and if you already have the interaction dialed up, drawing more cards just to discard them isn't even that exciting. Yeah, you know, maybe you were supposed to. Maybe you're supposed to go for something like your. I don't. Know, there's so many problems. On the uh, reaching for something. Oh, we're ninjutsuing Ninja the Deep Hours. Okay. Oh, <laughs> the unblocked okay. Spectral Sailor. Okay. More triggers. Okay. <laughs> this is, I mean, this shows the, the, on kind of the snowball effect of, of Yuriko. Just... Yeah, I mean, this is why you show up. This is why you play the deck. Because, I mean, this is exactly what you want to be doing. If you're a Yuriko player, I mean, you're someone new to CDH. People often point to this deck as something to do. And this is why. I mean, you get to board states like this where you got to interact. You get to do the creature thing. You kind of get to play magic at, at all traditional angles. And really get to feel kind of the, the casual EDH snowball, but in a CDH context. Yeah. I, I mean... Riley, I believe, now dead. Picking the permanents up. Yep. I certainly enjoy the permanence that Kenneth has uh, flipped off of Yuriko there, but not helping him very much with the Steven issue. 
sure he needs that much help with the Steven issue. Steven the Duck definitely set up to play a very long game. Now Smothering Tide is very mitigated by just there being less players. And with no card like Elish Norn or whatever to just like be like, here's a hammer, beat this. Um, Cabal, I think, going to struggle quite a bit to get back into this game. I mean, it looks like Kenneth's life total is at five. So... Uh... Okay, I can't. I can't get a great look at the life totals like that. I, That's dragon. There's a mana crypt in play. Yeah, I think Kenneth's life total is at five, and that makes uh, non creature that makes non creature spells basically uncastable. Yeah, yeah, especially with mana crypt in play. I mean, you usually get the game over with. Yeah. That kind of makes that attack a little weird to me. Although I guess your your threat of dying to uh, Krom attacks. Yeah. Oh, oh, we're doing math. We have the wing. <laughs> we have the wing crafter. Shock and Godless Shrug of all the smothering time mana and shock and Godless. Is this a ballista? Oh yeah. my god, oh it's a huge my ballista! God, it's a huge walking ballista. <laughs> what is this? How much is this for? Three? It looks like we're force pitching. And does that do it? I, I didn't get a great look what the life totals are. Uh if you force pitch, do you just die? Yeah. What happened? Uh, I think, yeah, it looks like force pitch. Oh, he was at three, so the one... He was at three, two... so force pitch plus Cabal, that's killed? Steven wins? That's sick. What? That was, <laughs> that was sick. Let's go. Oh, my gosh. What? That's a great round one right there. Oh, that was great. Oh, my God. Holy CDH moly. is so great. God, I hope Steven takes this whole thing. I have a lot of friends here. You know, a lot of people that, that I'm like, I hope they win the event. No. Steven, mush them all. Give them the Kimball. <laughs> As, you know what? Tax man. Grab life by the Kimballs. Uh, Steven, you, you, oh my gosh, that's so cool. Uh, what a, what a great win. What a great a win. sensational round one, to say the least. Lots of uh, creature action, a lot of removal back and forth. I mean, this is a CDH development at work, and I'm really excited to see it. I'm really excited to see it progress for the rest of the day as well. People finally showing up with some removal spells, things like Stern Scolding to check creatures. It has an impact on the texture of these games that are so much about creatures now. I was so, it was, that game was, honestly, what more could you ask for out of round one that was extremely interactive, that was... Oh, creature-based CEDH. It makes me feel like I'm in 2019 again. I'm so happy. Uh, I'm back in my element as the CEDH boomer. Uh, wow. Incredible. Oh, you're the CEDH boomer. We're, we're dialing Razzacats back up? Get I mean, creature, uh, creature maybe, done. maybe now we're going to. Hey, listen, so everybody, I have to... I am supposed to run an ad reel, but before we do that, actually, I, I, wanted, I wanted to highlight uh, we have... Uh, other than Steven, a bunch of natural-born CEDH killers at this tournament right now, and I wanted to highlight just a few of those people. Drake, as we look at our, as we look at our notable, uh, our potent potables, uh, people oh, playing potable. in this tournament at the at the moment, we have Ori Swen, who uh, is killing everything. Jorman Antigua's here. Uh, top of the leaderboard. Top of the leaderboard, notably. Uh, Took I think fourth at topdeck.gg expo. We have Evan Pierce the Freedom Ori won, Waffle. Ori won the boil. Kill yeah. her. Ori Kill won her. the boil. We have Evan Pierce the Freedom Waffle who took once in the grand opening uh of uh, it's a grand opening event. We have Ian Flannery, comedian MTG is here. Uh who who did great at the He's boil. He's never won anything in his life. Max Sternberg, <laughs> who also per who also wounded satellite, who also plays very well at the boil. Uh, and and another person that I want to highlight that we don't have on the reel is the German C E D H killer memo who actually just walked into my broadcast booth right now. Um but another the the best talent in the world is here. Not just the best talent in the United States, because that I think honestly, from what we know, that is here. But we have the best talent in the world here right now. I um, mean, we're not even getting into people like Brian Koval, Mike Sad, the previous right. winners of Punt City 1 and 2. Right. I mean, everybody has shown up here for their, their battle it out against this uh, platinum event. Points, yeah. money, glory, everything's on the line. The best CDH talent in the room. And we're going to see a lot more of it as this uh, as this weekend goes on. Very excited to watch some high-stakes CDH. And if it, round one's anything to, uh, to draw from, it's going to be highly interactive and uh, highly spicy. Absolutely. I, I can't wait to see the rest of the decks that we get to see today. 
uh, pretty amazing. Uh, we are going to throw it to an ad reel and then maybe a special video. Uh, Ooh. Little Cowtown Throwdown promo? I, I guess we might not have time because of how long that round went. Right, we'll, keep, we'll keep it in the chamber. We'll, we'll, keep, we'll, the we'll, chamber. Keep it, we'll keep it loaded. We'll keep it locked. Something very special for you later on today. But quick turnaround. And of course, do not go anywhere. We'll be back with round two very, very soon. Have a good one, everybody.
All right, everybody, welcome back. We are here for round number two, quick turnaround, quick magic today. Uh, and we have quite a spicy pod, but first, I'm going to remind you, this is Punt City 3. This is the second Platinum event here at the Top Deck Championship Series. A lot of points on the line for our leaderboard players. We talked a little bit about some of those players that have showed up. We're going to try to get their slides up as much as possible throughout the rest of the day. But someone that we are going to feature this round that we talked about at the end of last round is Memo. The player uh, very well known in the online CDH circuits. Uh, now kind of making a uh, platinum event debut here at punt city three and going to be going first so without further ado the stage is set here for round number two at punt city three let's go on and get down to the match and we can get a look at the pod as these players are shuffling up get a little bit of time to discuss the pod and what we're looking at and of course you can see memo with his altered copy of najila the Blade Blossom in seat number one, alongside Rogsai in seat two, Yuriko in seat three, and Joyra Weatherlight Captain in seat four. Lauren, give me give me the rundown here. What do you think? This looks this looks out of 2018 to me. All right. So, and I want to shout out Datatog <laughs> for providing this data for us. Um, so every Command Tower game, I have uh, t almost 25,000 tracked games tracked on Command Tower for the last two years. Um, this pod composition in its current order has only been seen once. Um, and I, I don't know okay. what the outlier is. Joyra and Yuriko have kind of fallen out of favor in recent years. But um, that result was a draw. <laughs> <laughs> so we have no data. <laughs> no data. Well, this is, I mean, it is... Did you and Rockside decks we've seen quite a bit of. So I'm sure that matchup uh, pretty well documented in various ways. But yeah, like you said... Yuriko Jora, it's funny to talk about Yuriko being out of favor. We just saw it in round one in the hands of a different pilot. And now uh, here again in round number two, this is a winner's pod, so it also won. So Yuriko kind of cleaned it up a little bit here in Punt City 3, a deck that uh, I would certainly call a dark horse. I don't know that I've seen you know much of it showing up, but clearly showing up and it's winning. And with this metagame, it clearly seems to be about creatures. I guess it's, it's time for Yuriko's comeback. No, I completely agree. I think Yuriko is the type of deck that feeds upon this sort of mid-range hell, um, as people are calling it, meta that we're in right now. Um, it can do the creature thing, in my opinion, better than a lot of decks. It's not a creature combo. All you care about is attacking. All your creatures are, are you know, low ceiling, but also, or, I'm sorry, low floor, high ceiling. You know, if they connect, they, you look at the creature types, you see a ninja in there, you're going to be dealing some damage. <laughs> Oh, yeah. And, and, and Najila kind of in that vein as well about just like attacking matters. And this is a deck like we, we want to highlight Memo going in seat one. He's played a lot of Najila. A lot of success comes from Najila. Uh, was considered one of the best decks during like the Flash Hulk era. A deck I personally have been a very big advocate for. And uh, just more and more as time's gone on, he's really leaned into the attacking aspects, uh, you know, kind of going towards cards like devilish valet <laughs> it's just like he's all about attacking that's what we're doing still representing that in the, this event that's a card you should definitely look up if you're not already big part of the game plan as far as the getting combat done so you have yuriko Najila about combat and then the other half of this pod is just not even looking to get involved in combat <laughs> at all you beat me to the punch i was gonna shout out the devilish valet inclusion that najila or i'm sorry that memo has memo is super hot on this card he he speaks volumes of it and um you know it, it would be super apt in a feature match to see it do the work so i'm i'm, I'm excited i'm buckled in memo this is his first time in the united states he flew in from germany right after his flight got canceled too. a little inside baseball for everyone watching at home had a flight from munich to uh, london that got canceled like six hours before he was supposed to arrive got a new flight and uh he wasn't missing this so super super stoked to uh, um see memo in person it's crazy you see these people online you give them a hug for the first time you you're not strangers though so it's it's a really surreal event i you know that kind of thing goes beyond the game which i love i mean very much the gathering part of what <laughs> magic is about obviously we're here for stakes we're here for points we're here for all the glory as uh, we have a uh, gemstone caverns to start things off with the Yuriko player wasting no time on this action <laughs> rock side player down to four cards uh, a lot of pod context here, but yeah, Memo being in the United States, a super special moment for everybody involved. Like I said, very involved in the online CDH scene. Uh, kind of one of the benefits of online CDH, of course, is allowing the Europeans to get more involved in, of course, local events over there as well. Uh, a killer. 
gets it done underrated simply from not being in the United States excited <laughs> to watch him get some job done here as he draws his card for his first turn in round two of Punt City 3. Yeah, I'm excited yeah, what he can put out and, and something that I really love is seeing how different geographic regions develop their own sort of metas and card favorites. Um, I know like Lamora's Cards, who's a uh, sponsored channel of, uh, of Top Deck, they do a lot of coverage of Japanese events. It's super cool to see. So I'm, I'm really hoping to see the spice. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking for the spice. Well, not a whole lot of sparks flying on turn one. And we'll just do Mana Confluence on the Lotus Petal. We have a notable... Oh, play to go. No <laughs> Draw pass. <laughs> okay. All I mean... right. I'm more scared about what happens when you do draw land, if that's what we're, what we're going with. Oh. But... Uh, got some time until that happens. You gotta love the... I, I mean, Scorch is a good player. They won their last round. He's there. He kept it. I, I love the confidence. I love playing the, if I draw it, I draw it. If I die, I die. Yeah, you're talking about fail rates on decks, right? I think Rog Size <laughs> certainly starts at the mulligan process. You know, obviously mulligan low in CDH traditionally anyway, but uh, down to like three and four is not uncommon, where it's actually pretty uncommon for other decks. Five, not that uncommon. Three and four is pretty uncommon. Oh, God, I love it. We have a Moth Dust Changeling, if I remember correctly, the one that taps itself because sure. it's flying, notably a Ninja as well. So Yuriko already doing the Yuriko thing. Yeah, the change. I need to get my changeling knowledge dialed up. All this Yuriko we're going to be watching today, I'm learning all about the exact text box of Ingenious Infiltrator and the, <laughs> whatever the 15 drop, the Shadow of Mortality. I mean, we're getting all these cards involved. I'm a, I'm a recovering Yuriko player from about four years ago, so I got you covered. It's I don't wow, know, four it's, years four years sober, huh? Yeah, <laughs> really brave of me to admit publicly, but uh, happy to be here. Happy to admit it. Oh, you know, nothing, nothing wrong with that. Yuriko's a sweet deck, and we saw it. And like I said, getting the job done here at Fun City 3, this creature-based meta game uh, seems to favor Yuriko, a deck that is very good at doing the combat thing, but doesn't actually care too much about any of the particular cards it has access to. All the little cheap creatures like this Moth Dust change the one-mana thing. If it dies, whatever. Deck's full of them. Yep, 100% agree. I, I love... I love Yuriko, and I, I was, you know, on my flight over here, I was thinking, you know, what are the decks that eat at this event? And Yuriko is one of them where I think this just absolutely feasts on uh, on this mid-range sort of people being scared to win. Speaking of that, here's a Mystic Remora getting a response for Enlightened Tutor from Memo. Uh, kind of the signature start that we've seen of CDH decks of the blue variety more recently. Seems to be decreasing in stonks, as Scoots would put it. Uh, <laughs> as more Bowmashers get involved, as more creatures get involved, the Remoras are looking worse and worse. They did not look very good in round number one. No, they did not. And, I, you know, it's, it's a weird thing where we're saying Mystic Remoras aren't looking good. And that's just this creature-based sort of meta we're really transitioning to as a whole in the format. Um, it, it's bizarre to see that I, I'm looking for a Ristic. I mean, obviously, Ristic Study is just generally better, but Mystic just draws less cards, and I, I'm sure there's data that I'm not smart enough to calculate to support that. Yeah, whatever you would have to aggregate, I'm sure, is completely ridiculous, but you know, speaking to the experience we're looking at, <laughs> you're speaking of, you're talking about Ristic Study, Memo <laughs> going to reveal one off of Enlightened Tutor. Uh, I think making the appropriate assessment that you just made uh, in this creature-based setup with Rogside missing land drops, Ristic Study going to be the one you want, although it is more mana. We'll and, see if Memo can resolve it with any backup. And it's this really crappy dilemma that, you know, um, you know, Scorish has, has made this harder for himself because... He's going to have to now feed some really efficient draw engines to just get into this game. Let him, let's not even get back into it. He's not even in this game right now, so it's a little tough. Yeah, just to play Magic at all, you're going to be doing quite a bit of feeding, uh, assuming this Rhystic Study does resolve. Jora does have mana up. Not sure what the interaction density of Jorah traditionally is. This is a deck looking to draw a lot of cards off of cheap spells, which can sometimes be interaction. Not all the time, though. Yeah, kind of representing something from Timothy. I uh, I think if I'm Joy Ritu, I'm feeling good about having. Oh my <laughs> god! Commandeer your Ristic study. That's hot. Uh oh. With the haymaker out of left field, if um you know if I was a gambling man, I would have not have put that on my bingo sheet of things I would see oh today. Oh my gosh! What a devastating card for commandeer to get not only recovers the cards right away i mean you get the rhystic study just from oh my gosh that's so awesome yeah i'll i'll, uh, I'll, t I'll three for one you now and easily you know rec uh, recoup that <laughs> as the game goes 
Well, Memo's game plan looks good. This common D are looking better. A maybe an underrated interaction spell in CDH up to this point. Looks good in Yuriko for the big mana cost. Now looking absurd against Ristic Study. It slots in perfectly in a deck like uh, Yuriko or Niv Mizzet, I think, likes this card a lot. Um, these decks, Yuriko is like a weird corner case where you have blue, black, no Adnaz because of your just high, high CMC spells. Sorry, mana value spells. CMC goes in the curse jar. But um, this is where Commandeer, <laughs> you know, absolutely shines. This, Niv Mizzet, these, these blue plus decks. I think two colors, the sweet spot for this card. Love seeing it. I, I would agree with you 100%. I think generally it's underplayed. Oh, Memo, going to fetch a body. Oh, no. Long to help to finish paying for it. And it looks like Commandeer is going to resolve devastating blow to Memo. In first seed, looked to be pretty well set up with a turn two Ristic Study, a classic start from a deck like Najila, going to be disrupted thanks to Commandeer. What a brutal response. And no land for <laughs> Scorish means that things are just getting worse and worse for seats one and two of this pod. The rare moment where seats three and four are disproportionately ahead from the rest of the table. Yeah, this is clearly a bottom half of the table set type of game. Yeah. Um, if yeah. I'm if I'm willing to, yep, we're gonna see the Yuriko activation. Yuriko is also, uh, you know, I think at un uh, something we haven't touched upon yet of why this deck is good is with this mid-range shell that we're in and all of the stacks pieces that are available to players right now. I mean, this just gets around Dranith. This gets a lot around a lot of the key, you know, sort of stacks pieces that, that stop you from being able to efficiently cast spells or deploy creatures that uh, from your command zone. Yeah, exactly. And you're not even casting a spell here. So even if Mimbo's Ristic Study resolved, all right, like you can't even counter Kanan Nijutsu. It works just like Nijutsu. Yeah. Yeah, just put it into play. So, I mean, it gets around Ristic Study. Of course, you yoinked that. But once again, if you just look at this, look at the board state. It's like, well, if Jar is paying for Mystic, uh, Mystic Remora, uh, Memo's back to square one with Najila, maybe just playing Najila next turn is the best <laughs> option, which is fine, but not getting the ball rolling that quickly. And Rockside hasn't even made the first land drop. I mean, Yuriko can start really clocking and going to work, drawing cards and slam the door on this game while players are really doing a whole lot of nothing. Yeah, you're, you're hoping that this Yuriko is enough to stop Joyra. Uh, I don't think Joyra tries going for it until they can move that Ristic study. Um, this, uh, my assumption is this is going to be a Cheerios type breach deck. Ristic Study makes it very hard when you're deploying all of those zero mana spells. Um, it, it's kind of like a, a, a standoff. Everyone's kind of has, has the guns pointed to each other. Scorish is watching a little bit, but this is definitely a, a, a bottom half of the table duking it out, and you just hope you get to see your next turn. Yeah, and really the, the power you highlighted at the beginning of this match between Ristic Study and Mystic are going to be just even more highlighted here, drawing card off both Najila and just being able to sit and play drawing cards with Yuriko while the Joyra deck has to sit there and just pay for uh, Mystic Remora turn after turn. And, I mean, these are turns you want to take anyway if you're the Yuriko deck. You want to be playing these turns and drawing your cards with your Yuriko. You are just so favored from the way the board is positioned right now, all thanks to Common Deer. And uh, we'll see what the top half of the table can do about it, if anything. Yeah, Yuriko has done a fantastic job of grinding this game to a halt. Mystic Remora has drawn one card this game uh, for two mana as of now. This game is going to be either a grind fest or i don't think there's really any mid-range to this it's going to be you know just absolutely grinded out or someone's just gonna run away with it very quickly absolutely and i mean there's the Najila play yeah this is this is so brutal and <laughs> no land again for scores i mean you talk about the first few land drops like uh, first few draws yeah I mean, you don't play that many lands of course not once you start getting to like sevens without a land that's that's really <laughs> tough and it... scores maybe the the window <laughs> slipping temporal trust <laughs> the reveal <laughs> Bonk! yeah all right this game is now 25 percent over <laughs> <laughs> you take 11 and i mean a time walk worth quite a bit yeah it turns out it's... that taking extra turns in a deck that uh wants to take extra turns is pretty good strong <laughs> no more to pay for oh yeah here's the yeah, moth dust is back. moth dust back in action Dust and all the Phyrexian box. Walker. Phyrexian Walker. <laughs> I like that. Just hitters. Just bangers all around. Joy was like, hey, I play that card too. <laughs> <laughs> and back over to Joy where we go. Still no cards drawn. Are we paying again? We sure are. Best thing Joy deck has going on right now. 
And as you mentioned, the Jura deck can struggle to probably win underneath Rhystic Study. So what even else could you do with your turns? This has been almost a reverse Ancestral Recall. We've paid three mana total over three turns to draw one card. Yeah, classic. Yeah. Broken. <laughs> it's almost it's almost like a gambler's fallacy at a certain point, though, because you keep putting mana to, mana to it. I have to draw cards. Eventually, I have to draw cards. There's games where you're going to sink all of your mana into it and never draw a card. And, and that's just the nature of the beast, especially with these creature-centric decks. And the only one that I really feasibly see beating, beating this is a is a Rog side. But we have a Samut paying for Rhystic Voice Study. Voice of Descent paying for Rhystic Study. I mean, that's a huge huge piece of action for memo going to be able to be able to start getting the cards rolling for memo again having lost rhystic study again no attackers you have a rock same player you can just beat up when you feel like it and of course the jar deck has not put a blocker into play yet so we're able to get uh going right away and uh samet also attacks that one has vigilance it has first strike vigilance and haste so we get two warriors right away so what is this representing four cards beautiful that's absolutely beautiful um really good bounce no, back for cards. memo um, and I'd love to shout out our token sponsor, All Trades Media. They actually have a booth here at the event selling their tokens. But thank you to them for sponsoring us in this stream and providing tokens for us. Yeah, Najila went at the Eureka player. Of course, we get to make those beautiful tokens you just called out. <laughs> Very clear, their tokens from the board state. Big thing for me. When you're playing webcam CDH or even if you're just in the booth like we are, you're just watching it all. Having things that are tokens and not proxies of cards being very clear is important to me. And the simplicity of these tokens means a lot for board state readability, something I'm very passionate about. And you can see the active player token involved in that as well for making things very clear. Bunch of cards coming for a memo. No follow-up for anything like fast mana. Move to discard goes scorish. Looks like a three-player, three EDH, if you will, game. <laughs> as we are back at Yuriko's turn, who we know has a temporal trespass as soon as that graveyard starts getting plump. And this is the the weird part too of it being a three player pod uh, with uh, you know that's I'm, I'm digging at Scorish a little bit and I will preface I love Scorish to death Dylan's a, a friend of mine but Scorish I feel is at least being re responsible I mean there, there's really no dock sides being fed there's no um, like desperate game actions being taken I feel Dylan given the situation that he's in right now is being patient for all intents and purposes. What does the game look like if we get to a spot where it's like you just land spirit guide dockside, you know, and then all of a sudden, oh, okay, you've unlocked your entire hand, and maybe you can go for a land or something of that shape that turn. You can't let your guard down with Rogside because of the its ability to produce so much mana out of nowhere. But yep. I mean, obviously, Scorch is not taking a single non-draw discard game action this entire game. So, you know, you can only pay it so much respect. Didn't even put Rog in play. Rog's not even in play to block, just not even pretending that we're doing that. Yeah, I'm wondering if, if... It's just not worth it to lose if your game plan is centered around a rog, so you just deploy it when you need it. Be my guess, and that that is something we've seen more and more as the tick up of removal has kind of happened here in the CDH meta game. Just not just leaving rogs around to catch strays from removal spells or what have you, even just deflecting swats on a removal spell is, uh, I think, meaningful. So from two two, for Yuriko. two Yuriko triggers, we have an island and a fluster storm. Both cards seem like worth quite a bit in this board state. Not very good against the Gila Memo. I think the player who is certainly in second now is Mr. Kimura still has not drawn another card. And we're finally done. Sunk cost fallacy out of here. <laughs> going to go ahead and draw for turn with all mana unlocked is our Jorup player named Timothy. Drake, did you know that 99% of gamblers quit before their big break? I did know that. <laughs> to be fair... Probably, you know, well, I don't, you know, whatever, fifty percent of them quit before they lose everything. So I mean, you just reconcile the numbers, you know. Exactly. Not you aggregate them, <laughs> throw them in the flux capacitor. You're good to go. <laughs> flux capacitor, huh? <laughs> yeah, I'm Delorean. Oh jeez, <laughs> I hate that so much. <laughs> All right, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a good broadcast. Yeah, thank you everybody for coming. Platinum event. Top deck GG. Drake, Drake just submitted <laughs> uh, his two weeks notice, and it was wonderful working with him. Yeah, it's been a pleasure. <laughs> Eminence, top deck, whatever you want to call it, they're all great. Um, you know, this is my resignation. A fetch from Joy or Weather like Captain. Is it Joy time? All right, tell me this. I'm not a Joy expert like you. Like me? If we play Joy what are the odds that winning happens right away? 
Risky um, study, no risky study. Having also played Joyra before, Najila is actually the only deck here I haven't played before. Um, I, I your window is very quickly closing. Um, you you have not drawn a lot of cards. You also haven't played a lot of cards. You've land pass, land pass. You've played a lotus petal. You probably have seven or eight cards in hand right now. I mean, if if I can do anything to try to catch up, if that means feeding the Ristic study, th there's also a a weird double edged sword of Yuriko drawing cards because if you're if you're trying to protect your life total, the more cards, car excuse me, the more cards they can draw are less Yuriko flips, which is kind of a weird backwards way to think about, but it is something to consider. Um, those kind of shadow of mortality, do nothing, high mana value cards are much better in hand for you. Right, but actually, well, you can do tricks like brainstorm and back and stuff like that that we've seen uh, be available to our other Yuriko players so far in this event. Jorah going to be deployed here. Lotus Petal up, smart mana usage there. Um, and yeah, like you said, uh, the window almost certainly closing. I'm not sure what the Cheerio, you know, as you will, the zero mana costs artifact density needs to be to really start going crazy. But I mean, it's quite a proposition to do that underneath Ristic Study to begin with. I'd imagine. Not uh, sure I, what our because no white no silences you can't just shut that off. I would agree, and you can't effectively go for a breach line. That there's you're under the gun of the Ristic study, and every time I draw a card with you know Jory's ability, if I'm playing a Cheerio, means my opponent draws a card. I'm more than likely losing that race. I think the card quality of Yuriko is just going to be higher than Joyra's, you know, on average. Um, <laughs> we have a guilt gilded Drake. Whoa. There's another card that's a blast from the past. We've talked a lot about some, uh, I guess, cards of old making their comeback here. Gilded Drake looking very impressive. Mimo deciding whether to pay for Ristic Study, but a lot of juicy targets on this board. That's what I call you when you're wearing a nice gold necklace. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's very true. Thank you. That was like the worst joke uh, I've made so far. <laughs> you know what? It got me to laugh. You're good. <laughs> and it's Yuriko is the yoink. I like that a lot. I I think that's a very smart play. It's a little bit of a sneaky play. Um, you are forcing Yuriko to now operate on an axis in which they have to play a fair game. Yeah, I mean, it reduces the, the value of cards we know about, like Temporal Trespass, so that's obviously appealing just face up. But, you know, not easy to get it back. I mean, bounce spells are one of the primary ways of interacting with stuff on the board for Yuriko, so, like, that is kind of a problem. But, I mean, you can always bounce your own guild and Drake. You have a lot of other options as well. It is now a pile of warriors are getting involved. This is very much what Memo's game plan appears to be about, is attacking and drawing cards off of Samet as this pile of six tokens total coming into the battleground. Of course, only four will draw cards. So I imagine those four have to be going at Scorish. The rest you can kind of play if you want. Yeah, this is bad beats if I'm Scorish. I know I'm going to have to take this, and you are just fueling samut draws um i i have to applaud memo's draws right very, very patient um i'm much more excited drawing cards and i like how methodical memo is looking at every card changing the information in his head and drawing his next card i i think that's a little subtle um you know quirk of how he draws cards but it, it speaks to how he views the game um and i mean that as an utmost compliment no, I mean, that makes a ton of sense to me as, you know, Dejila has probably more on top of the deck tutors than any other deck in the format. You may want to do something like interrupt the drawing process with one of those. Like, you have to reevaluate what your hand texture is and whether or not you want to actually do something in between each draw while still moving the, the game along at a reasonable pace. I think he splits the difference very well. Uh, I mean, anybody looking to play Najila should be taking notes from Memo, and I, I think a master class put on so far from the Ristic study to the Samet game plans. Clearly, that's what his hand is about. You know, no, none of this flying fast man. I mean, look, there's no mana dorks. There's no mana crypt. There's no soul ring. A lot of people think you just need to reach those cards. No dockside. None of that has been involved with his game plan, and yet his game plan is very dominant on this board state. Has looked very good for the pod composition, and I think there's a lot you can take away with from that uh, when it comes to playing Najila just by watching this game alone. And, and Scorish hitting his first land drop the the one thing to to um turn five. we did it <laughs> yeah to turn five land one that's exactly where i want to be um the one thing to remember as well folks at home watching samut triggers individually per each warrior that connects which is different than say a timna ability so you can respond just like you said with a top deck tutor in that fashion 
And uh, now it's time to start feeding the Ristics. Slow now, rolling I the imagine... Mana Crypt. <laughs> yeah, the Mana Crypt has entered play. Uh, Timothy kicking himself, not playing. I mean, what'd you say? The gamblers? 99%. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Mystic Amora Payers. Uh, stop paying before their big burst of cards, and here it is. Extremely, extremely patient play by Memo and Scorish. I don't know how long those rocks were in hand, but waiting till that fish was gone, so you're not drawing your opponents. But like you're attacking how many cards your opponents are drawing. Um, extremely patient play. I, I really like that gameplay by uh, by the top half of the table. Yeah, I mean, not feeding Ristic Study until now also just like speaks to kind of the power transferal that has happened if you talk about the gilded drake has now disrupted yuriko and now yuriko doesn't really have multiple like axes of card advantage going on it's only the ristic study the danger for you know feeding ristic a bunch of cards is actually lower because the yuriko isn't available as well to continue to snowball things which is what yuriko needs to happen a lot of bad cards in the yuriko deck yeah no i i, I you, you nailed the you nailed the you hammered the nail on the head um that's not a word i've ever said i don't nail I don't know what it actually is. I okay. We have... Jessica's will time. <laughs> um, there's a known fluster storm. I like this dilemma that Scorish is putting Yuriko in, forcing interaction. It, it's a it's a double-edged sword. I, I think Scorish is fighting for his life for this Jessica's will to resolve. Look, I just played my first land. Um, you can just counter the next thing I have. Showing oh, I his love hand. Love this. Love this. Absolutely. This needs to happen so much more. Look, this is my plan. I just need the Jessica's will for the cards. The thirteen mana is not that big of a deal. Please let this resolve. Yeah. Says Scorch. And now we will see how the Yuriko player responds. I love that play from Scorch. Love it. Just counter the next. Obviously, thing. you would counter this. Yeah. Uh, obviously you would counter this you can still counter the next thing probably memo i'm sure memo is someone that loves to get some counter arguments involved his political play is no slouch either and uh you can see him do a little bit of talking here yeah we've Escort entered begging <laughs> <laughs> not a chance <laughs> i think you have not to a chance. i think you have not to counter that you uh, i have... love that love that sequence yeah, we entered the politicking phase. I do love the work that was done. Uh, Scorish, I think, makes a valid point. I think if I'm Yuriko's seat, I do still counter that. It's not worth running the risk of more counter magic, deploying more rocks, even though it's going to feed my Ristic study. I like. I don't want to fight against a wheel. You can also pay for the fluster with the the Jessica's will mana. It's it's not a great position if I'm Yuriko that I'd want to be in so far behind and i think if you're the yuriko player unless your hand is stacked like to me that that that's a sign of strength like countering that is like okay i have a plan for memo because otherwise i i don't mind just letting some resources get up under the rock side player a little bit i mean obviously it's pretty cheap to just throw a flush of storm at that jessica's will and just get him back in the stone age he still has a mana crypt finally has a land but like you know is playing the game with a lot of resources to work with that you just saw but you know uh, putting him in the dirt and keeping him out of the game I think does some amount to make you worse against memo and that make, you know, unless you have a, a plan for that, I think you're kind of in a little bit of trouble, but I mean, we'll see a lot of cards. Oh, there's like 13 cards to work with. Yeah. Yeah. 13 cards. And I think neutering the, the Jessica's will, um, Scorch's interest in my, or not in, in the best interest of the table. I think you, you want to just Scorch was going to go for a win if they could. So I, I right. think you stop it. You let them figure it out. They don't have the table's best interest in mind. And even if you don't have a plan for memo, you know I I love code. Uh, I love quoting Brian Koval. He he's someone that I I really like for Magic Theory. But it's a series of three v ones. You have to take care of your three v one at any given time. Um, and you need to hit the double you know rather than the double you don't know. Extremely salient point, Brian Koval. Somebody in the building battling for the uh defending the crown as the last mayor of punt city if you will uh the mayoral election process less electoral <laughs> more mer meritocratic yeah uh, as this is a tournament they are fighting for fairy seer entered the battlefield did a little bit of scry action looks like one top one bottom bunch of attacks going into play scorish i mean someone that was very dead in the game now very alive. I mean, just from your hand posturing alone, involved in politicking, involved in casting spells, one land changed everything, went from quiet and non-talkative, found a window, 
still needs to find another window if he's going to win this game. Tough proposition against the Yuri deck that looks like it's about to draw uh, nothing. I mean, we're still attacking. What do we have? Could be some other ninjutsu tricks. They do have other ninjutsu cards. Yeah, I imagine we see another ninja. And I did want to uh, I did want to mention the winner of this Punt City event will get a Punt City Mayor Sash for being the mayor of Punt City, um, which I'm very excited for. Risky move. We're ninjutsuing the Gilded Drake, giving that back to Memo. Oh, but we are Sakashima studenting. Okay. I I like this. What do you have this under as a copy of? I guess Najila, right? Yuriko. I mean, Yuriko mm. or Samet, really? I... That's what I meant. No, it has to be Yuriko. It has to be Yuriko. I looked at, I, I just saw two etched cards. I said the wrong one. <laughs> yeah, I just, I mean, this is strange. Like, giving Gilded Drake back. Okay, if you Gilded Drake my Sakashima student, you have to the legend rule. One of the Yurikos, which would probably be a student, and then you're in trouble still. The the getting rid of the Gilded Drake is very odd to me when the Phyrexian Walker doesn't appear to be accomplishing anything, but I have to assume the Phyrexian Walker was blocked, and that was kind of priced into. Or otherwise, I'm, I mean, nothing makes sense. Yeah, or I'm wondering if there's another ninja to ninjutsu if the Sakashima student does stick. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Sakashima student. Make a copy of Yuriko and get another ninjutsu involved. We'll see what that looks like. Uh, or... Down to 13 already. Shows how often the Rock Sedak gets attacked. Snuff and there's out. four more damage and snuff out. That's an important one here. Wow. For stopping Memo. A great hit. Yeah, really, uh, really lucky. Uh, free interaction is much more free right now. There's really nothing to tax your spells. There's nothing to draw a card off of. Sans the Samut. I'm wondering too is if if you hit the Samut to just try to stop the the impending card draw. Yeah, I mean, either one's a great choice because it only does, like, creatures that enter this turn. So you can shoot the Najila and you're fine. Or you can shoot the Samet and just keep the cards down. Either way, I mean, this is an impactful snuff out. I really want to highlight, well, we put Common Deer on top with Mystic <laughs> Sanctuary. And that's going to be our second flip to Yuriko. Okay. Oh, my goodness. Styling on him. And down to two life is the wrong side player score. It's down to eight is Jorba. Twelve is Mimo. This game is closing quickly. I love this play from Timothy. I'm sorry. Um, I have the wrong. From, from the Yuriko John. player. I'll, I'll get it. Uh, John. John, geez. The name completely escaped me. That was awesome. I love this play from John. Really slamming the door on the game while he's still ahead. You know, just gave a kill to Drake back. The, t the like window is only open for so long. You need to slam the door in this game, but Commandeer makes Gilded Drake a little bit more tricky to redeploy, and the free interaction you have access to that's face up alone is problematic for the table to answer, much less the, the rest of the cards in your hand. Scorish also now runs the risk of just being killed by their own uh, mana crypt. <laughs> I think uh, I think they're they're almost out of this game, if not completely out of this game. Uh, I, I do have a rules question though. If it does come up, can you put? Temporal Trespass on the stack, crack the Lotus Petal for blue, and then exile it as part of the Delve cost. When in the process does the uh, Delve happen versus mana? So once you're paying costs, you cannot do that, but you can just do it beforehand. Just float blue, crack it, and then Delve it. Oh, okay, yeah, duh. I thought there was like yeah. tr trickery with like uh, with Emery, where you can put her on the stack for your artifact count and then crack it for blue. Um maybe that might be true but that's a cost reduction that's static like you're Understood. talking about affinity for artifacts where yep. it's just like it costs this much now you need to pay this much and that happens gotcha. as part of casting spells versus delve where it's like not static you have to take these actions in order to to pay the cost that would be my guess not a judge that is my guess no yeah no that makes sense that checks out i have uh, i've seen that yuriko trick a bunch of times and it's very clever but i i, I see how it's different than uh than delving Timothy showing oh. half their hand. Oh, I love this. Yeah, I would just show it. I would show the everybody needs to be collaborating. I mean, one Yuriko flip could just kill the rest of the table. I mean, you talk about there's a 15 drop in the deck that we have not seen. The Shadow of Mortality. If that is flipped for Yuriko, it's just over. And there is a Red Blast. Seems to be rather unenthusiastically thrown out there by Memo. Clearly isn't super excited about casting this. Yeah, I'm curious if the conversation was, can you back this up? I'm not, I'm really not sure. I mean, this is a second Rhystic study. It doesn't seem, seem to be worth that much to me. Yeah. I mean, what's what's two cards instead of one? 
Right. I mean, we're already dealing with infinite cards. All of the interactions face up. There's no reason to even interact with this. Like, you're just starting to run blast into the graveyard, in my opinion, and drawing the card. Like, whatever. This risk study is nearly inconsequential right now. Memo cares about what's on the table, and that's it. Yeah, blowing up, his own. <laughs> blowing up his own Rhystic instead of countering the other one. Get it in the graveyard. Maybe that matters for for something. You know, delve, breach, whatever. I'm curious how much of that was bait. I don't like if Memo didn't actually care, and I, I understand why he, he'd want to hit his own. But I'm wondering if Memo just doesn't care about that Rhystic no, study and why. goes, "Oh, of course he... negation. We're gonna answer them both." I like that. Finally get them off the table. So this is a collaborative effort after showing each other the hands. He says, I got a force negation. I can stop this. Can you answer the one in play? Memo says, yes, I can. Here's a red blast. And now things start to change a little bit. Commandeer nor snuff out really interact with this. Yeah, the table texture really just changed. And you just lost not one, but both of your dry engines. You have a copy to your eco. And um, this is a very clear signal to me that Memo is going to try to go for it on his turn. Yeah, I mean, he has to. I think every player in turn order needs to, basically. Like, this game is ending. This next turn cycle, period. Like, life totals alone demand that is the case with a Najila in play. Like, I think Memo actually can just attack everyone but the Yuriko player to death easily next turn. So I think, you know, Timothy Onjara has to go for it next turn no matter what. So definitely is invested in getting both risk studies off the table. Did successfully do that. That's something Memo's interested in as well. Now, obviously, there's still a lot of problems that could potentially be in hand for a player but at least you have a shot it's not just on board a disaster yeah i think i think joyra stands to gain the most of that interaction being the the next in turn order after that counter war um th there's a known pact of negation in scorish's hand but i they're losing anyway i don't think they're going to impact the game uh or king making that way it. yeah casting it i'm casting it <laughs> kill me yeah obviously that could happen you just attack with Jorah, but you can block with rog whatever it very well could that's kind of strength this play top draw with top right i mean you need a artifact reducer for this to be kind of a combination okay so i, I i'm seeing where we're going now we're we're using the uh the top to put it on top draw a card so you're drawing two cards for every one mana that's a pretty good rate well the first time after that it's just you're, you're redrawing the top uh, the next uh yeah yeah right? yeah right, right right you're so right but you get to go one deeper the first time right now is there like and, like build storm I and mean, that's like meaningful right oh wait no no because you do draw a card off top and no i think you are right you draw two for every one but it still costs them mana yeah i don't know this is getting ahead somehow i'm sure because we're still doing it and i'm curious this if just out of morbid curiosity if this deck has anything like treasonous ogre to to efficiently use that top Let's take a look. We got Bergy. That does it. Oh, I do like Bergy in this list. Ethereum Sculptor, Foundry Inspector, all of those check mark. Okay. As far as drawing your deck goes. Yeah, I like that a lot. I think that's a very clever way to sort of break Joy was already pretty good ability. Yeah, yeah. Just make top zero. Yeah, there's a Helm of Awakening. So we actually have quite a few ways to do this. Okay. Grim, Grim Model is it one of them, but gives a lot of redraws. That's that's six more cards with the mana. Because you you cast the top, draw one from Joyra, uh, tap it, activate to to draw a card, and then you zero mana artifact to redraw. So for every t two cards, one mana draws you two cards. I mean, the question is, how much longer is John? Yeah, it was like how much longer before we snuff out this <laughs> this Joyra? You can just put a stop to this at any time. The question is, how long is John going to let it happen for? I think you're doing it right now with um, Joyra. I'm sorry, with the Grim Monolith on the stack. It's it for it almost time walks your opponent in the way you're, you're going to have to spend all your mana. You're going to have to tap the Grim Monolith to recast Joyra, and no, yeah, yeah, you'll and you'll have one colorless floating after. You're making it a lot harder on your opponents. And this is an interesting sequence too, because now Commandeer is on the table for this fierce guardianship. And if you commandeer that, you can point it at the Grim Monolith and things can change a lot, even if it just resolved or what. I mean, there's so many options here for John. But the problem is if you sit here and use everything on this fight, the Gilded Drake from Memo alone, that's the best thing, best case for you. Yeah. Much I less however many cards you might get off Salmon or whatever. I mean, Derevi, nothing about that even included. I, I have to think Memo's going, hey, guys, we have to fight this. We have to fight this. We have to fight this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Oh yeah. Just licking his chops. All right. I love this too. Clarity is so important to me in CDH and not, not just as a caster, but as a player, really make it clear what's going on. So we can see the draw trigger from Grimmoth on the stack. So we responded to that with fierce guard or with snuff out then fierce guardianship responded there and there's another draw on top of that and i think we're gonna let that happen first maybe and what oh he's that's the silence in memo's hand but he's gonna go intuition wishing oh my goodness a huge one to have here i trap like that. on the table yeah, I, I think you're either going for an interaction suite and hoping to get into your, you know, breach territory on your turn. Um, you're also going to be drawing, what, eight cards next turn from your warriors connecting? Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think if Memo gets a turn, I mean, there's a win attempt on the table alone. I mean, just from the attacks plus draw cards plus whatever. I mean, just manual activating Ajila might just kill the table from here. So I, I'm going to throw out a wild card. I'm going. I'm wondering if Memo is saying, "Let me use my intuition." Memo's going for his intuition now, knowing the commandeer hasn't been used. He gets it in his intuition and then forces the use on the on the fierce guardianship. Like if this was his window, just to use it for a win attempt. If that yeah, if I mean, that tracks, yeah. Luster Storm gets heavily involved with this stack. Oh dear. <laughs> art. I mean, Commandeer is still face up, but Flusterstorm doesn't really. <laughs> yeah, here we go. Yeah, build the stack. Okay, this is CDH at its finest. Oh, and we have a we have a storm count of ten, so <laughs> Fluster can hit pretty efficiently everything that's currently on the stack. Sir, object number six has hit the stack. <laughs> <laughs> There's another Fluster. <laughs> um... <laughs> yeah, Fluster and Fluster action. I mean, would just be disastrous. Thankfully, that was used. Earlier on Jessica's will, maybe something that John is rethinking at the moment. Fluster would play very nicely, although not a lot of mana left over. I mean, only black. I believe Shadow of Mortality actually under Chrome Mox. So, do you do you wait for the Storm Trigger to resolve and then use the Commandeer, Fierce hitting the Grim, and just choke Joyra on mana? It depends. So if Joyra is like savvy and like counters their own spells and stuff, like Flush Storm just gets everything right now. You can get the snuff out, you can get the intuition, you can get everything. And you actually, as a result, because it's pretty counter spell resilient, probably should hit your own fierce with the face up commandeer. The fact is the face up commandeer changes the math. And I think if you're savvy enough, you maybe throw a few at your fierce guardianship, but I mean Flush Storm is such a mess. I I don't really know. I don't really want to speculate too much. <laughs> uh <laughs> it sounds like Drake, you're getting a little uh flustered. Uh, I think that's an excellent descriptor for what is happening here in the booth. I'm the storm. Like, look at me, I'm the storm. John was a deck that like was really interesting to me entering the CDH space. I'm a big Is It fan, and I love me some goofy storm decks. But uh, the the whole breacher had just come out, and that is not a winning proposition. Orcish Bowmasters, you would think, also not a winning proposition. I mean, clearly, clearly. Yeah, it sounds like you have some so. really good intuition, Drake. Lauren. What, are you going to snuff out my jokes? Uh, make it stop. I'm going to commandeer this whole broadcast. What do. <laughs> I hope you guys like our interactions. I'd say I find it triggering, but you know, we're about to trigger and draw a card there at the top of that stack. Hey, everyone uh, watching the top deck stream. Zane just fired me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's been a pleasure working with you, Lauren. Yeah, thanks. I put in my two weeks on the, last, on the last round with Scoots, so we're fine. Oh, I don't think Zane knows that. Uh, Drake put in his two weeks because of me. Uh, I'm getting fired and you're getting a raise. Awesome. Love to hear it. Never mind, I'm back. Two weeks rescinded. This member has hit the stack oh. off of... The Chrome Mox. Which member? Dismember. Okay, all right, back to the game. Um, back to the game. We're in there like swimwear. Jorah being targeted once again. Commandeer, backup still available. <laughs> Looks like the stack resolved in such a way that Intuition and Snuff Out both were countered by the Fluster Storm. We'll see if there's any interaction left over. I mean, this is the tough part about Jorah. You need to have a critical mass of historic spells and a critical mass of interaction. We'll see if we do have that here. Gonna need it. So with a storm count of 10, I'm also willing to bet that Mindbreak Trap is live right now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that was a joke for everyone at home. <laughs> it might actually just, I mean, that's something to consider, right? Is it just not? It's only snuff out Dismember, right? For the rest of the table? Jorah's, Jorah's Mindbreak Trap doesn't work. Everybody else's does. I mean, Scorish could do the funniest thing in the world and use that known pact indication as well. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. 
I mean, I would. I'm a face up. Use it all. Swan song getting involved on the stack. Oh my goodness. Wow. I wonder if we're it... all in here. Yeah, that's gonna resolve. This doesn't even care. Is there still? There has to still be a window. This joy reply pilot appears. I mean, foil deck, so you know they're invested. Um, they have to know what they're doing. Um, you still have the grim. You still have the top at the end of this. You're not out of this game, even though you're out of colored mana. Like this is still very much a winnable game. I mean, Helm of Awakening is still just like a face up draw your deck. Like if Helm of Awakening was the draw right there, we just draw our whole deck with top. Yeah, I'm. I'm very, very excited to see Tormod's crypt. Okay, beautiful foil. That's a uh, that's, that's a really nice one. I know there's a I foil. Mean, I think the Grim Loth is like Japanese foil. I guess. I mean, this is an absurd deck for sure. Yeah, I I said I, I was I gravitated to, towards the Tormod script, and I was like, oh wait, that Grim's foil too. Yeah, the Grim Loth is right there. <laughs> yeah, an absurd deck yeah. for sure. A I, lot of bling involved. I guess I didn't get the memo. You did not get memo. Did also not also did not get the memo. Jara is the new hotness. Mox Diamond. Just kind of hit the bin. Draw a card. Not even interested in pitching a land. Zero mana draw a card. That's a really good rate. It is a good rate. And that is the power of Jorah Weatherlight Captain. Three mana. This is the last mana we know about. Now in the pool. Two of it. Isochron, Isochron Scepter. <laughs> With one oh, colorless. My. Okay. Draw. I'm draw really... Card. I think only two cards and three cards in hand now. Top one of them. No imprint, maybe? I'm really enjoying this. Lord. I'm Lord. so sorry. I'm so Save sorry. Us. Chat. <laughs> mana Vault. Okay, we're back. More colored mana. All right. We are drawing cards. We have three more draws. And this just shows you how resilient this deck is. We went through a crazy counter war. So much card draw. A lot of things happening. And at the end of it, this deck is still very much in the, in the fight for this win attempt. Yeah, and there's Chrome Mox as to as well. Did we shuffle the top away when we cast that Swan Song? Is that what happened? Um, how, oh so yes, yes we did. Play doesn't make a lot of sense if top's available. So I guess top being gone makes winning from here much much harder. I believe as it. Enthusiastic. I actually think that's an illegal play. That is an artifact. Um... You cannot. Put enthusiastic mechanaut underneath a Chrome Mox. Yeah, okay. I think we're fixing that. They that is it, they caught it, they caught it. Okay, there. okay. <laughs> yeah, Chromox notably does say a non-artifact card, so you cannot imprint your Wishclaw Talismans. I mean, knowing about Enthusiastic Mechanaut, big deal. I mean, that plus Top would have won the game. Top gone now, and Enthusiastic Mechanaut, of course, cost blue-red, so hard one to cast. Hey, Drake, could you Mechanaut, please? Uh, I, I, I Mecha can or whatever. I, I don't even know how to respond to that. <laughs> <laughs> um. You also can't do Esper Sentinel notably with Chromox. Yeah, I mean, Wishclaw Talisman is the one that always came up for me. It's like the one colored artifact in most of the decks I played. Uh, yeah, I can't put that one under Chromox. It says non-artifact. Maybe made sense of time for Mirrodin? Really weird in, in like contexts like this. It's like, oh, sure. I mean, this colored thing, I just can't use it. Okay, I guess. Drake, were you around playing standard back in the Mirrodin days? Not playing standard. My first set was eighth edition, so I was buying magic cards. However, I was firmly in the casual space. Gotcha. Fascinated by Sunburst. Thought it was so cool. <laughs> Solarian, talk to me. Card is so big. How do you beat that? Unbeatable. We have a <laughs> Chromox imprinting a gosh dang underworld breach. That... That's so brutal. Imagine if you could have done the Mechanaut. You would have had red plus mana vault, four breach, and then breach plus lotus petal. Bang. But now. Breach having to go under the Chrome Mox just to have colored mana puts us in a worse spot again. There's Dockside Extortionist. Wow. Needed red. We can uh, still see that packed. Pack? Yeah, packed is still around. One, two, three, four. Okay, four le treasures? less scary than I initially thought, but that's four redraws. Yeah, I mean that's that's a lot of mana when you're especially going from no colored mana to that is a huge deal there's enthusiastic mechanot that one is an artifact which will draw a card what does that card Joyra. do it charges max cost one less oh wow flyer wow. kamigawa neon dynasty uncommon pretty good pretty good yeah i mean you definitely want to max out on those effects and now having a cost reducer in play things are actually going to start to snowball if we can find that top again it's a lock well i Otherwise, don't 
I don't see any snow covered lands. I don't know how we're snowballing. Uh, you know, that's very valid. Very valid. <laughs> I'm just trying to say the worst things to you, Drake. Yeah, just break me. Just, just full. Just can't even process anymore. Yeah, yeah. it's becoming unparsable, so it wouldn't, it wouldn't take much. Well, are hey, we out? Oh my, we We're are just out of stuff. Holy hell! I and card in hand for the Jara deck. We bricked over to Memo. We go, and this is huge. If you're a Yuriko fan, still have Commandeer dialed up. Get your letterhead. Write the memo. Memo got another turn. Uh, and a chatter fang. <laughs> chatter fang. Oh my goodness! <laughs> All right, let's get a let's get a reader. This one kills things. I know that. Do it they kills things. It makes squirrels. It's gonna make a bunch of tokens. Do they attack? Yeah. No, they're not attacking. Oh, they're not? Okay. I, I don't think so. If one or more tokens will be created under your control, those tokens plus that many 1-1 one, one squirrels are made instead. So it's just removal face up. It doesn't work with Samet the way you might want it to. But a huge blow to Yuriko. I mean, if you're looking to try to win the game with anything Yuriko shaped, I mean, you can just pick off all the Yuriko stuff with this next Najila attack. And, I mean, it's as good as a win. But it's kind of sneaky because it looks like it doesn't matter, but I think it would shut the door on Yuriko's ability to close this game. Yeah, Chatterfang's kind of nuts. And I think the other thing, too, to note is it's a warrior as well, right? It is a warrior, yes. Squirrel warrior. Um, Did I sneak right. that pattern? Did I sneak that last pattern past you? No, no, I caught it. I, okay. No, yeesh. <laughs> I didn't hear the it, pain it, in your voice, like... so I wasn't sure. Thankfully, you were talking. I just got to wince silently and <laughs> enjoy my, my silent suffering. <laughs> A lot of mana left over for Memo. And like I said, I think a manual attack actually could just win the game. I mean, I, I haven't done the math for sure. I mean, like, there's a lot more blockers now than there once was. But it would not surprise me to see a manual attack be able to close this. A manual activation of Najila just with Dockside or just your lands plus a pedal or whatever. Be able to close the door in this game. Chat is saying the Chatterfang tokens come into play tapped and attacking. Really? Is that just because Najila makes the tokens tapped and attacking, so the Chatterfang tokens are also tapped and attacking? That is a shocking ruling. My lovely assistant, Alex, is explaining it to me right now. So I'm learning that the tokens that Chatterfang produces enter in the same manner as the uh, token producer. Which I did not know. I did not know that either. A Chatterfang, a card I have excluded from my uh, Najila list, perhaps in error after hearing this ruling. <laughs> this is massive, and we'll see. I mean, Memo, I'm sure, knows that as a expert of weird warriors to pair with Najila, and this is about to get messy. However many tokens you think it is, it's more. However many cards you think it is, it's more. Yeah, you're getting squirreled, and I is the is the activated ability of Chatterfang. Is it a um, sorcery speed only? Does it have timing restrictions? Instant on it? speed. It's an instant speed ability. Okay, so that's that's a huge boon. I think um, that just really puts Memo in the driver's seat. If he wasn't already when that turn got passed, you have complete board control right now. Yeah, I mean, I, for basically every player in turn order, I think it's win or lose. Quite literally, like win this turn or lose the game. And uh, that's that's clearly where Memo is at right now. I think I mean, you draw this many cards, it's not that hard to just whatever pick up an extra turn effect. Memo loaded up on those chance for glory, final fortune, all of them, and uh, well, maybe not the sorcery ones, but a bunch of the instant speed ones, and uh, just close the door on this game. But that way, find enough mana, you can do whatever, I mean, whatever you want. Tutor for it, tutor for just all the interaction in the universe. The memo calling him in the driver's seat i don't think uh articulates things well i think he's in the cockpit of a single single seat plane <laughs> <laughs> yeah he he flew over to germ or flew over from germany and was like i'm gonna go nuts making squirrels we are doing this and this just shows what a skilled pilot he is uh the only thing that really he has to worry about that is known information is a commandeer possibly redirecting a a, a kill from the Chatterfang, so he does have to be careful because commandeering that could disrupt some sort of line depending on when it is activated, if it's activated at all. Commandeer, sorry, I mean, not not getting the Chatterfang commandeer already a big step. I don't know if you can hit 
Is it non? What is commandeer's restriction? I thought it was spell or ability. I could be misremembering. Couldn't even hit a creature anyway. All right. Yeah, commandeer is not even as much cover as I originally thought for Najila. Most of your big plays with Najila having this many tokens already are just creatures. So commandeer is actually basically no cover at all. And I, that's not what I thought was the case. Yeah, no. I mean, everything just works. Derevi. I mean, whatever. The Devil's Valet. All, all these cards. Chatterfang. They just work. Yeah, and if I memo, I am digging for this extra turn spell. And look at these. I mean, you don't have to dig to 12 cards coming, assuming everything connects in the way you would expect. I really like driving, or I'm, I really like drawing cards, and so 12 seems mm -hmm. pretty good. Yeah. And I mean, if you just have spirit, any of the spirit guides activate Najila, we are <laughs> super done here. <laughs> super, super done here. Have, it looks like the fairy seer and the bird are going to start eating away at these tokens just a little bit. When you have 18 of them, I'm not sure how much. You know, it might be a little late to the party. <laughs> uh, Lamora's card saying, Snuff out on Joyer felt weird with Samut in play and the commander in hand. Um, I agree uh, to a point, Matt. I think the it, it was, again, a situation of the devil you know versus the devil you don't know. You have to stop the win attempt that's on the stack, and if, if it's make or break for losing the game or not losing the game. Yeah, I mean, it, I think the Joyra deck looked to be in a position to win the game, and I, I liked the timing and stuff out of anything. I almost think it was too late. I think you went, oh, you let it go maybe a little too long and opened yourself up to dying to that. And, uh, I mean, you just needed help from the rest of the table, but Rogside just not being a player in this game means that Memo has no checks and balances on his turn. It was all down to the Yuriko deck to find all the interaction it needed, and it had multiple free pieces, but Commandeer only hitting non-creature was good against the Rhystic Study, much less good against Najila, Samet, Chatterfang, all the creature bangers that have followed up that really gives Najila the position it has right now. Memo, 12 cards in hand. The world is his oyster, and... Um, yeah, it is. It is not looking to be good. Notably, I, I, I all these cars. Holy cow! Oh. <laughs> sure, not a good sign. It can get yeah. commandeered, right? It can get commandeered. I mean, I, you have to, right? I mean, just hope that it, it's not bait. Like when nothing works. Your commandeer doesn't work anymore. Yeah, <laughs> assuming you even have the blue cards to pitch or whatever. And uh, silence looks like it worked. Now it's all up to Memo, who I believe is showing a demonic tutor, which can grab. Oh, we have Dockside too. Sure, I mean you just drew twelve cards. We have it all. Yeah. So Dockside makes approximately four point eight million mana thanks to the Joyra deck still being in play. <laughs> uh, and then we get demonic tutor into ham sandwich, and game is over. So this looks to be completely done. And I don't even think cards like Odawara, the typical suspects that work underneath uh your silence are even available they don't do anything on this board no that's absolutely yeah. incredible memo showing the demonic tutor hey is this worth playing out are we gonna do this um I, if i'm his opponents you know I, i'm a big fan of make your opponents played out but under a silence effect with a dock side um my mental and desire to eat lunch overtakes my need to see my opponent's you know beautiful deck what about Grand Abolisher? Does that add to the mix for you, or what? Where does it, where are you at on that? Uh, a Grand Abolisher and a Silence, and I see that no <laughs> opponent has any capability of casting an Atawara. Uh, yeah, I'm good to concede. <laughs> okay, all right. Well, while, while Memo is absolutely bouncing the ball off his opponent's faces with this final fortune, I, I want to highlight really the resiliency there of the go. best players you see playing. And Memo is going to go ahead and win now 2-0 and at Punt City 3, his debut in the top deck championship series in-person events, a platinum event. And uh, <laughs> we see little Caesar the ball. <laughs> there we go. Memo representing an impressive performance. I really want to highlight the resiliency. Memo, turn two, his plan, turn two, Ristic, commandeered, got yoinked by another player who got to put it resolved, got to take his Ristic study, put it into play, and managed to crawl back and win the game, getting three for one trying to put a Ristic study in play. This is, this is so, this is what sets the great players apart is people that get tilted. They're like, ah, oh, you know, I have this plan for the game and we're going to see how things go. And you get destroyed and then come back to win. Just shows the resiliency in the mental game of the best players playing. We saw Ian in the boil, the finals, got his turn one soul ring mental misstep, went on to win that game and that tournament. Memo here showing a lot of those same principles that work. The best players in the game stay in it, even when it looks hopeless from any position and an incredible performance from Memo. And that's the wonderful thing, I think, about this format that really draws people to it is even when you're thinking, I'm out of this game, 
he found a way to get back into this game and he found a way, got his Rhystic Study, like you said, taken away very early on. And I think we're actually uh, grabbing Memo to do a winner interview for Memo. Get him on camera. See that beautiful German <laughs> face of his. He got flown out here. He's a sponsored athlete of topdeck.gg. And, I, you know, speaking of sponsors, want to thank our, all of our wonderful sponsors. Propaganda, who's here vending. Uh, all Trades Media, who's sponsoring our tokens. Um, really, you know, it takes a village to run these tournaments, and we could not do it without our wonderful sponsors. So, you know, everyone who has a hand in making these events so successful, thank you very much. Yeah, huge, huge fan. And especially as Mimo makes just a billion tokens of all varieties, having all trades media tokens to very clearly represent the board state and those crazy stacks and everything else that was going on in that game was invaluable to the caster experience of nothing else. And uh, I'm sure your opponents and honestly yourself when playing on spell table, you should get some tokens, make things clear. It makes everybody's life better and makes spell table magic great for everybody. Accessible, not being colored as well. People like to use colored things for their mana. Be having just the symbol is uh, good for those colorblind folks. Or, yep. uh, you know, anything of that nature. The All Trace Media tokens are great. I can't say enough good things. And uh, very excited to talk to Memo, who is maybe, I, I can't guarantee it, but it would shock me if he was not the one that is going to capitalize on those tokens the most through the course of this. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it turns out Najila makes tokens. Who would have thought? But um, who thought? <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely great showing. I'm, I'm very excited to, to be so early on in the day, have so much excitement. And we have Memo walking in getting a big hug from mrs hollahan mikey's mom <laughs> she's very proud of him it's very nice to see um i uh, i took a, a very funny photo with mikey's parents and i said um you know they're my favorite content creators and they got a big kick out of it they're here rocking the gold saber tooth shirt so love seeing love it, it so we have memo coming in memo hot and ready just like little caesar's pizza what is up we're gonna be switching the camera and uh <laughs> That's your mic memo, and uh, you can't hear Drake, but Drake. Uh, oh. Hi, Drake. Oh, there. Okay, thanks. Hi, yeah, Drake. How's it going? Okay. I hope I make you. Pr I hope I hope I made you proud today. <laughs> <laughs> thanks. Thank you so much. Yes. Okay. Okay, so um, Thursday night, my flight got canceled to London, <laughs> and I was like super freaked out, but they rescheduled to uh, over Madrid, so I eventually got there uh, yesterday, two hours earlier than um, originally I thought, and then I was a little jet-lagged, uh, but it wasn't too bad, I got to Just sleep no a audio. little on the plane, Just saying Drake um, and, memo, no audio. and then, yeah, I went to bed at 11 last night, but woke up at like 5 a.m., so I'm still a little dizzy. But uh, yeah, I'm super hyped. Um, I had an uh, awesome round one, and everyone is super cool here. Everyone is here. Pancidi is like, I feel, I feel like we're missing like five or like three good CDH players. I think everyone is here. I'm, I'm so, so stoked. And it's been great. Yeah, I won round one, um, and now I, I also got to win round two, and this is just, it feels amazing. Yeah. I'm so happy to be here. Yeah, for sure. Oh my God. Oh my God. I was. And I was even debating if I go, so turn one Enlightened Tutor, I can either grab Mana Crypt, and then I can go Najila plus maybe Demonic Tutor or just pass. Um, but na the Najila game plan usually isn't that great versus Yuriko because they play so much spot removal. So I was like, no, I'm just gonna go with the turn two Rhystic um, and hope this is good enough. And then the Commandeer hit, and this was just devastating for me, right? Because I cracked the petal, I kept the head without fast mana, um, but then the game kind of stalled out. Um, Yuriko, I, so Yuriko is, in my opinion, a deck where you can use um, the yapping a lot <laughs> because it's the arch enemy deck, and and it that yeah, and that's how it played. And he was like, no, I'm not that scary. Uh, you, you have the Samut, but I'm like, yeah, but you flipped a fluster storm. Yeah, you just dealt uh, 30 damage to us, and you can like keep saying that. And it's not also it's not uh, wrong, right? We were all very low on life totals, but you can use that as as leverage to to talk to the other players. So it's a pretty clear three v one, in my opinion. And I, uh, I often, uh, yeah, get away with um, good politics when I play versus Yuriko. Uh, it was still tough. I ripped the Samut off the top and was super happy. I, I was scared to eat one of the removal spells from Yuriko there. 
but we had to use both of their removal spells on the Joyra. Maybe the dismember was a little too cautious. I was definitely happy seeing the dismember pop off on the Joyra there because I knew, okay, we made a deal though. He revealed the dismember and said, I'm only casting this if, you, if you're not activating the Jila on your turn. And I was like, I looked at my chat thing and was like, I don't need to activate the Jila. I'll just, I'll just do so much damage. Yeah. Yeah, no, no. Yeah, yeah. I think it was it was a sick, sick proposal from him, um, because uh, yeah, like like you said, I just moved to combat, activate the Jila, and just like win on the spot, right? But this way, Chatterfang is three mana, also doubles my tokens. I drew twelve cards. As Scorish revealed a pact of negation to me. That's why he said, "Don't kill me, or I pact your Chatterfang. Uh, don't kill me this turn." And I also made that deal with him. I was like, okay, please don't pack my chatter thing. Yeah, exactly. And then, and then I, I drew 12 cards and I revealed the demonic tutor and I said to, to, to Scorish at uh, Dylan, I said, uh, Dylan, uh, is it fine for you if I DT for Final Fortune because your deal was I should not kill you this turn? And then he was like, yeah, bro, go for it. And then, <laughs> yeah, he's, a, he's, a, he's my bro. Uh, yeah, and then we, we got there um, with the DT for Final Fortune. I just revealed the Final Fortune and then everyone scooped it up. Where is Ray? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it was. Mm -hmm. This was this, 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 the second Ristic hit the stack, and I was like, I had a red blast, and this was so bad because I knew Joyra pops off through the Ristic, and Yuriko will draw so many cards, which is terrible for me, right? But I also don't want to red blast the, the Joyra if the Yuriko has two Ristics in play. This is also bad for me. So I tried to leverage there, and then he revealed his hand to me, and it was Fierce, Force of Neck, Blue Card, Flusterstorm. And I'm like, okay, my Red Blast on Joyra never resolves. So what I'm going to do, we saw the snuff out. I'm going to Red Blast the Ristic. I will let Joyra pop off. I still have the intuition that might get an MBT later, but this will incentivize Yuriko to use the snuff out on Joyra and not on my shit because Joyra is on 8 life. Joyra will try to win here. And it worked out for me. They had to use both removals on the Joyra, and I got to untap with my whole board intact. That was super dope. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There's so much face up there and you able to make some deals in order to get things across the line. A huge part of your performance and your record speaks to it. 2-0 and at Pun City 3. Your first event in the States? Is yes, that it is. It is my first time in the States as well. Everything is so huge wow. here. I got out of the airport. Philly Airport is huge. Cars are huge. Everything is huge, but I'm, <laughs> I have the, the best time of my life. That is so awesome to hear. Memo, it has been a pleasure speaking with you. I cannot wish you enough luck through the rest of the tournament. You're someone I am rooting for for sure to take this whole thing down. Thanks. And what a so roller coaster so far. Good luck in the rest of your rounds. Thank you so much. I will shout out my wife, Caroline. Uh, thanks for having my back. Without you, I wouldn't be here. Um, she always has my back. Uh, she's, uh, besides my kids, the most important person in my life. I will also shout out my friends in Germany, SFC, uh, Breakfast Club Gang, Cabal. Thanks, guys. Uh, I wouldn't be where I am without you all. Thank you so much. Bye. Beautiful. Thank you, Memo. What a, what a treat. Who gets this? <laughs> Who gets this? Who wants to interview you? So yeah. I'm going to shepherd you around, Mr. 2-0. Thanks. Hell yeah, dude. Okay. Thanks, guys. I, uh... <laughs> yeah. I uh, don't know what the status of is of the rest. in order i believe there's about 10 minutes left in the round so we will not be featuring any kind of backup match or any kind of stuff like that we will have some promotional content coming to you soon uh and maybe it might be time for the video around the i think it's time for the video it's time right. for the video says okay. producer alex so we're uh I, 
our next platinum event, the third of the year. Remember, you get your top three finishes from platinum events uh, as far as your point aggregate when it comes to the leaderboard. We'll break that down kind of as the day goes on a little bit more. But you don't have to attend every event. You just need to attend a fair bit of them, and your top finishes will uh, will count towards your point totals. Next one is Countdown Throwdown. Sold out. Instantly going to be one of the biggest events of all time, if not the biggest event. And uh, we have a little promotional video for those of you that maybe on the outside looking in, maybe get in the wait list, maybe get involved somehow, and certainly get involved in a more top deck events this has been round number two of punt city three do not go anywhere we'll be back with more cdh action here very very quickly iron deck it where the f is the band hello you said you'd get me a band where's the f band. We're going to look like idiots in front of our topdeck.gg, makers of Command Tower software. Partners. A band? I, I have a musician. One musician? I, I only have a one passenger seat. It's a sports car. Grow up and get a sedan. You're not in high school anymore. Those are fighting words. Okay, okay. Hold up. What do you have? His name's Mikos. He plays a trombone. Trombone? What is this, the music man? We're making an announcement about our glorious tournament. Go bigger. I only have one seat, how's that enough? Make it enough. Fine, bigger. Get the f out, Mikos. Hey you! I'm on a quest for a big sound for an announcement with our topdeck.gg makers of command tower software partners. You son of a bitch. I'm in. It's happy racing speed time low. <laughs> Iron Deck is no longer just an online tournament platform. At the end of June, with our partners TopDeck.gg, Iron Deck is going live. The winner of the largest CEDH event of all time, a CEDH 12K, will go home with the second Iron Deck Grand Champion Sword to join the hallowed ranks of Brian Koval, who is our first Iron Deck Grand Champion. If you can defeat him and the other competitors, you will stand atop the mountain at the Cowtown Showdown. Among the many trophies on the walls behind me, one of them has a finer point than the others. This is the Iron Deck Grand Champion Trophy Sword, which belongs to me, the Iron Deck Grand Champion. It's come to my attention that Alexander Nevermind, the gigantic leopard print clad weirdo who runs Iron Deck, is trying to run a bigger tournament and find a grander champion. 
would give away more money and give away a bigger sword. I don't think so, buddy. I will be at the Cowtown Throwdown, and I will win it, and I will take that sword and that money too. And if you run another one to find another champion, I'm going to take that too. You're going to have to keep going bigger and bigger, more money, bigger swords, and I'm going to take them all until you give up or go broke. I'll see you at the Throwdown, Alexander. Good luck. Such insolence from the champion of the Paris of Appalachia. He cannot be allowed to win another sword. And I don't wear leopard print. I wear the print of the tiger. See you at the Cowtown Throwdown. Bosh and roll. Outstanding. Right. to absorb the CDH world, you know, because I've mm -hmm. never broken through, but I want to eventually, so I'm just kind of, you know, absorbing information by osmosis here, you know? My best advice is wa talk to people as much as you can and watch the, um, the median attitude throughout the day. So right now, uh, spirits are high, everybody's happy. As the day goes by, continue to talk to people and get ready for bad beat stories and all the other stuff. Mm -hmm. the, yeah, the, that sort of downward spiral. <laughs> it's really wild. <laughs> but yeah, I'm excited. Just check it out and see what's going on. Lamora in the chat, big CEDH hours. Uh, well, it's good to run into you. It's always a pleasure. Of course. Good to see you, Alan. I got. I, I always. I always gotta adjust. I'm sure you hear it all the time. No, it's it's part of my life. It's How's fine. the strategies going today? It's going good. I'm playing Winota. Oh, okay. So we didn't do we didn't do dog and the yeah. dog and pony show. I wanted something that felt easy on the brain to play today, and that was fun. And my first pod was with Sam from Howling Salt Mine. I saw that. Yep, uh, Coco, who's like the Eurico guy, and then a, another guy, and it was just like a really fun pod. Uh, okay. Really good. Sam got blown out. I felt really, really bad. Oh, no. You hate to hear it. Yeah, yeah, But it was good. It was a nice, like, fun first round. It was probably the most fun I've ever had playing a tournament game, so. 
I love, I was just talking to Yogg about this. I love watching the attitude adjustment throughout the day. When the day starts, spirits are high, everybody's so happy. And by round three, everybody's feel. They're like really into it, they're sweating. They're like freaking out as they're like taking game actions. It's like real serious, but yeah. First part is like, whoa, we're here, let's do the things. So that's nice. What's the hot new Winota tech? Are there any brand new cards that you are just so hyped about? There's honestly a bunch for Thunder Junction, but we're not ready for Thunder Junction yet. We're a couple weeks early. Um, I'm mostly just playing like some Lord of the Rings cards, like the Boromir is really good in the deck. Um, and I just want silly strong stuff, more counter spells, because before I think we revolved around just using our pieces as stacks pieces and kind of removal and now we have to actually play removal because the deck is not doing good but it's just a fun one so I here's the big question are we on trouble in pairs we're not that's actually a good card <laughs> it's a very good card i've seen it do work so it's big anti-tivit tech and it draws a lot of cards that's true i think ian has the troubles in, in pairs right now so with with Winota, it's a tough spot, though, because you don't want to be drawing too many cards, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, I, I think you can. Uh, she doesn't do too much card draw in herself, so I don't think it's, like, the worst card for it, but it's just not one in the deck right now. Awesome. Well, I appreciate you taking a few seconds. What do you think? We'll get the hot takes, too, while we're here. What's the most overrated CEDH deck? Timnacrom. Does anybody say anything else? Probably not. I get all different answers. Oh, yeah, really? Okay, it's mostly that. I think, like, people think it's, like, Tivit, too. Um, all the weird little guys I think people think are overrated, but I think they're fun. That's my, my hot take. And then, uh, I mean, we'll go with the classic, ban a card. Ban a card? Oh, no. Um, uh, there's too many good ones. Uh, Null Rod. Oh, wow. Null Rod's out? Yep. Or, or Curse Totem. Also don't want to see it. Get those out of here. Okay. Yeah. My, my stuff do things. Let them come in. No graph diggers cage. None of that stuff. I want to have fun. I can play the sex pieces. You can't. Oh, I love it. Thank you so much, Lua. I'll catch up with you throughout the day to t keep track of the stand. Yeah, you look great today. Thank you. I need, I need the lowdown on the outfit. Uh... I'm just kind of, you know, Shrek. I don't know. Just Shrekking it, yeah? Yep. I got I loving it. What? I love it. Oh, thank you. It's also this. Nice. Oh, what's it say? I can't quite see it. Uh, this is my swamp now. And oh, I got, awesome. I got a play mat, too, that says get out of my swamp. So. Is it? Are you are you playing a Shrek-related deck? Nope. Not at all. Okay. Nope. Don't care about it. Are you, did you eat an onion today? Mm, unfortunately, no. <laughs> no. I got to peel back the layers of the onion first, you know? Yeah. What do you, uh, so you said you got a play, Matt. Are you playing in the main event? Oh, of course, yeah. What are you running? Send triplets. Send triplets, no way. How's it faring? Uh, pretty bad. <laughs> what inspired that choice? Uh, I really love send triplets, plus the secret layer version. Uh, so I'm playing uh, not necessarily stacks, but I got some nice heaters in there, you know, trying to get some good combos. And, uh, you know, it's just classic EDH. You know. do, do, does it, because so send triplets is typically. A very um, uh, assault-heavy card. People really, uh, it has a reputation. Do you find that that reputation holds up within the CEDH meta? Are people like still salty and mad about it? Oh, very much so. Yeah, uh, very much so. Yeah, it, the, when I get a turn one send triplets, it's uh, kind of disappointing for a lot of people. The, and is it easy to choose who to target on your turn? Oh, very much so. Whoever I don't like at the table. Okay, so we're letting we're we're letting personality go into it. Yep, exactly. I don't who who plays to win? Me. I play to win. That's awesome. I love hearing that you're playing send triplets dressed as Shrek. I'm gonna be keeping up with you throughout the day. What would you say is the what's the secret tech in the deck? What's the hottest your hottest tech? Uh probably Chains of Mesistopheles. Oh, I love it. Chains is so good. Yeah, that and moat. Okay. So you're you're leaning all the way in on the salt. Oh, yeah. Yeah, trying to piss off as many people as possible here. I love it. Well, I'm definitely going to have to take a look at this deck list, and uh, I'll keep up with you throughout the day. We're going to ask, uh, from from the Send Triplets player, what do you think is the most toxic commander? Um, That's a good question. I would have to say Saruman, uh, the... Many colors one. Oh, okay. That's I run that religiously. That's like my all-time favorite deck. I love it. Um, I've been playing like a high-power casual version, 
and it's so funny. I've been dreaming of a CEDH version. I just don't know how viable it is. It's apparently in top 400. My buddy's really, really hoping for it to get higher. So Okay, so pe people are playing a comp version of it? Uh, apparently, yeah. My buddy's trying to do it. Before I escape this weekend, you'll have to share the list with me. De definitely try to get me a copy of that list. I'd love to pick it up. Yeah, of course. Yeah, no problem at all. No. And, uh, we'll ask another one. Uh, unban a card. Um... Death Red Shaman and, and Modern Legacy. Oh, okay, all right. Where you play a lot of Modern? Nope. Nope. You just think it should come back? Uh, Unleash yeah. the one man of Planeswalker? Yeah, very much so. Yeah, I hate I hate competitive players. <laughs> what was your name? Mike. Mike, thank you so much for answering some questions. I really appreciate it. And uh, best of luck today. I'll definitely catch up. Yeah. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Amazing. We're looking for more people. We're going to step out into the... Uh, into the hallway over here. So I'm gonna pick your brain actually. Hi. So this has been one of my main contacts throughout the weekend. This is Kayla. Is it Kayla or Kyla? Kayla. Kayla, how are you today? I'm doing well, how are you? Good, what's your role within the organization? If I can highlight you for a second. Yeah, absolutely. I'm the social media director for topdeck.gg and I'm very excited. This is my first event with them. So I'm really excited to be here. Awesome, so uh, what what hiccups do you expect to run into this weekend? Is there anything that you're like looking out for? Uh, honestly, our space is a little limited this weekend. We have two more events tomorrow. We have a rebound event and we have a popper event. And we have so many players in this building. We're a little worried where we're going to put them all. Okay. that's Listen, I was at MC Chicago. Running out of space is the hot button issue right now yeah. within the Magic community. Um, are you local to this area? I am, yeah. I'm right in Philly, so this was a nice little commute for me. Awesome. Well, for those at home, Kayla's been an amazing point of contact. I'm shooting her all the stuff that I'm making, all the VODs and all the quick little uh, stuff. So keep an eye on the top deck socials, both on Twitter and Insta, all the different spots, and you can catch all the latest up-to-date everything. Awesome. Thank you so much, Alan. Thank you. It's nice and loud in here. I love it. So this is where players are kind of mustering after their rounds end. You can see here there is still 30 minutes in the round. So I have plenty of time to interview people, plenty of time to give you guys an idea of what these matches look like. I'm actually going to go pick the brain of the head judge. So I don't want to distract you too much, but so you are the head judge for the event this weekend. Uh, they told me so. Yeah, <laughs> that's a, that, apparently that's what we're doing. Uh, yeah, they made me talk to the room and uh, they leave all the decisions to me. So yes, probably. Uh, what? Um, not to get too complicated. What hiccups? What issues do you uh, do you expect to run into this weekend? What are you looking out for? Absolutely none. This event's going to go completely perfectly. We're not going to have a single issue, and nothing's going to go wrong. I love that. That's the best way to look at it. And with this team, I think that honestly, that's an easy outlook to have. Yeah. Absolutely. Shout out to my staff. My staff is cracked this weekend. I, I wouldn't change a single person on it. I'm super happy. Beautiful. Um, so, what do you look forward to most at these events? Uh, playing Magic after the event. <laughs> oh, the after, yeah. I've talked to a lot of people, and they've said Saturday night. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm ready to like take off the judge shirt and get some money games in. So you know, come find me, challenge me. I'm fine. I'm ready to play some CDH later. Awesome. Well, I appreciate you taking a quick second or two. Um, how many of these have you uh, have you done a head judge for? Head judge? Uh, four. Four, yeah. Okay, all right. That's a solid amount. Yeah. Pun City, one, two three and uh silicon dynasty the first one okay and for those at home one more time your name max molinari also trick bound and uh, i stream on eminence or top deck now yeah well max thank you so much for taking a second best of luck today make sure to stay hydrated all right yeah absolutely are you playing in the main event I am, yes. what's your name boss i'm max max so that's the second max i'm talking to in a row here what are we running today I'm running Garuda Doom of Depths. Ooh, okay. Are we on like your traditional Garuda flip into clones? Yeah, it's flip into clones, and we're playing a lot of flicker effects and like ruthless Tectomancer lines and stuff like that. What do you have in it? So I've run into casual Garuda decks over and over again. What uh, particular steps or cards are you taking in order to modify it for the CEDH meta? 
Uh, a couple things, I've been trying to make it a little bit more mid-range by playing cards like Shieldred and like Blood Chief's Ascension to help whittle down life totals because you kind of have to play it like turbo a little bit, but it's not Rog'Sai, you're going to lose to Rog'Sai faster, so. You have to find your comfortable place in the mid-range cut and pressure people's life total. That's where I try and put it between is the turbo and the, the mid-range, that's where I like to go. What is the most amount of Garuda flips you've gotten in one the chain? Like how many times have you chained it? I've had 14 Garuda triggers on the stack at one time. Is, was that in a comp game? Uh, yeah, it was. I had a Preston in play, Preston the Vanisher. Yep. And I had uh, two roaming thrones from the Preston. So every clone I put in play was six Garuda triggers. Amazing. So, does do you find that in a typical CEDH game are are your standard like Sise, Rogsai, Kinnan, are they flustered by running into Garuda? I think I think they either have like it's like oh man it's just this casual commander or they're like if this like starts chaining it gets out of control. So there and what's amazing also is within the CEDH meta, clones are very relevant right now. I think this is probably the best like meta that Garuda has played into because yeah everyone's playing, ever all the good stuff piles are playing like three to four clones like. You've got your uh, what is it the um. Fle fl I call it. Fl I was trying to remember. Uh, Fleshy D. Yeah, Fleshy D. And we've got the um, Metamorph. Metamorph. We've got the Phantasmal Image. Some people run Clever Impersonator too, because it can copy like the One Ring and Ristic Study and stuff like that. You've got some people on uh, Cursed Mirror. You've got a lot of red uh, copy effects as well, depending on if you're running into a Rionia or an Atali player. True. Yeah, but like, like, what's different? From God forbid you run into a Kark Sakashima player. Oh my gosh! Yeah, yeah. One, yeah. One of the things though too is that it only puts an even CMC clone, so you can't put in like flicker effects. Like you can't put in or even CMC creatures. Excuse me. Yep. So you, so can't, you can't hit that uh, curse mirror. No, unfortunately not. That would be super epic though if you could. I love that. So that's it. You're you really are situated in a very unique place right now. What's you, you said? Your name is Max. Max. Yeah. We're gonna. I can't. I can't step away without asking the hot the hot button questions. Uh, what do you think is the most toxic commander, CEDH or EDH? Oh, uh, yeah. Um, I'm gonna say Kinnon because it's too good. Ban the card. Get it out of here. All right. And if you and uh, commanders aside, ban another card. Ooh. Um, I'm gonna say Timna. We gotta shake up the meta. Get it out of here. I like it. Everyone plays Timna. Let's get something else. There's another. There's another uh, Orzov partner. Give him some love. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Awesome. And uh, what are you looking, at? what are you watching out for? What, in, in terms of running your Gyruda deck, what decks are you kind of prepped for? What's your foil? What are you like worried about running into? Atali, because Atali kind of plays my own deck sometimes by putting my clones and making more Atalis. So it's kind of like a 50 50 matchup where I either play Atali or Atali plays me. So. I keep an eye out for that. I ran mono red Itali as a casual deck for years, and my worst fear was people either cloning or taking my commander and flipping stuff off of my deck. So I can really understand that worry about people using your own strategies against you. Yeah, for sure. Well, Max, thank you so much for talking to me. I love hearing about rogue or fringe decks and them kind of terrorizing the meta. I'm very excited to continue talking to you for the rest of the weekend. I'm excited. Thank you for talking with me. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Now that's a treat. And uh, oh, Amp, thank you so much. Absolutely a pleasure to see you. We're going to come in. We're going to talk to talk to Mr. Hot Takes himself over here. We got right behind me here. I feel bad interrupting conversations, though. But you can see there's still games going around everywhere. I have to talk to you. You know, I got to. <laughs> What's up, buddy? Let's walk over here. Oh. So we don't disturb people. Oh, fair, fair, fair. Yeah. So we're here. Sorry to cut off your conversation, by the way. We're gang, gang. Twang, twang, baby. BK all day. Ramp gang. You already know what it is. We out here taking names. We got figgles with us. We getting lost. What, play, what are we playing? Blue Farm. Regular. Okay, solid. Yeah, regular. Anything spicy on the list? No, we were testing spicy stuff last week, and then we decided we don't want to dilute our card quality. We're just going to play the game and see what happens. We're not taking for nobody. Trouble in pairs? Nah. Weak. Can't go for Thorgle with that card out. I mean, it, 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 it stops Tibbet, though. It 
it does. But no, nah, I don't want to play that. I was talking to a couple of people who are on it, a couple of people who aren't. It's interesting here and hearing what decks prioritize and uh, and can really do good things with that card. It's very cool. Yeah, I think it's like for slower decks. Like Tim and Malcolm loves that card. Like uh, I probably I. I mean, I don't know how many people are like Technic Steel Enchantment, so I can see a Tivit deck actually playing it to stop other Tivit decks. Okay. Yeah, yeah, but like, I don't know. If, I don't know if when Tivit's card. flush on the mana too. Yeah, 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 exactly. So it's like getting those cards in early is kind of good. Does it stop opponents from taking extra turns, or does it stop players from taking extra turns? I think it says opponents. That would track. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah. So then, like, you can play it in Tivit and like not feel bad until like a kidding player flips it to a clever impersonator and copies it. What's the, yeah, Clever Impersonator's on the menu these days. Yeah, Clever Impersonator. I, I know some people are attacking Stunt Double for the Instant Speed clone. Wow. Spicy. What's, uh, so you, you play a lot of CEDH games. What's a hot take? What, do I have any hot takes? Off the dome. Do I have any hot takes? I think I said this before, but yo, unbanned Hole Breacher. Okay. Yeah, bro. I don't care about One Rings. I don't care about Bowmasters. You shouldn't either. Let's play real magic, man. I'm trying to wheel again. Wow, whole breacher meta. We don't, I don't, it makes my bones itch. I don't need that. I'm trying to play wheels. I'm trying to play wheels. I'm trying to bring back Nekusar. Wow. Um, what are you expecting to run into a lot today? I mean, the, the answer's easy. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking about, you know, like the mirror. So other TNK decks, Kinnon, Sisse, like uh, random rogue decks. There's Rock'sai. A lot of, I don't know how many Tim and Malcolms are out here, but just like, yeah, regular top cut decks. I know there's some of the Jillers running around, some people bringing that back. My boy Memo's out here, so it's going to be lit. It's going to be lit. Let's get in your head a little bit. What do you do to prep for an event like this? Do you have any rituals, anything you do specifically, any little good luck charms, any of that sort of stuff? No, not really. I just play games with the bros. I test. We just got, like, intense testing in the last couple weeks. We've been rotating in and out cards. You know, tested cards like Delny, tested cards like... We play Magic out here. <laughs> Yo, shouts out. That's a fact. That's a fact. OG stream. Shouts out Dan. Shouts out Brayden. That's a fact. So, and it, but it's mostly just being in the gravity chamber? Just yeah, just practice, much. practice? Yeah, it's just jamming games, jamming games. Getting your lines down packed. Getting your pivots down packed. When people interact with you, it's just like just getting in as many reps as you can. Awesome. If you had advice for anybody getting into CEDH or trying to succeed in tournament CEDH, what would you say? That's a good question. I would say research your deck and know your lines. Don't just pick up a list because it's doing good, right? Like, like, re like read the cards that are in your 99. Understand why decks play certain cards. There are a lot of cards in Magic, so it can definitely get overwhelming at first. Like, obviously, net decking, I think, is a good way to get into CDH, but once you're in and, like, once you start to understand how your commanders work and how a game functions, you should definitely, like, pick your own cards. Don't just play cards because other people play them. I feel like I've, I've run into so many players that, like, oh, I don't know how these cards work, and I'm just like, why do you have them in your 99? So it's like, you should definitely just learn the deck read the cards a lot of us don't read eat, eat sleep and breathe well, i mean you heard me like asking about uh asking about trouble in pairs like not even knowing who's it who's hitting yeah, yeah, yeah so it's like definitely just research your deck don't just play cards because they're popular and then know what's in your 99 last question what's the corniest win con when somebody plays it you're like boo corny <laughs> corniest win con what's a, what's a play that people make where you're like this guy Yo, hot take, I'm sorry. I hate to fairy displace your kitten. Okay. All you kitten lovers, I dislike you. <laughs> Hello, and welcome back, everybody, to the continuing coverage of topdeck.gg's Punt City 3. My name is Scoots, and I am once again joined by the inimitable uh, and always, always consummate professional Drake Sasser. Drake, how are you today? <laughs> again. 
I'm doing awesome. I tell you what, I mean, I feel like every time I'm in the booth, especially, you know, working with y'all and in y'all's events, everything's so well run. And the CEDH, the games are so special. They're so cool. The first two rounds that we've seen so far have been master classes to each of their various degrees, definitely showing, showcasing different skills in the CEDH space and really just showing some of the best of what this format has to offer. And especially with what's going on in the metagame right now, uh, people like to be doomer and gloomer about things and magic and CEDH and all those likes. And I mean, here, if, you, if you're watching, watching at all you can't you can't be doomer and gloomer it we, has been so yeah. awesome uh, i mean the the quality of games at these eminence events because it, it just brings out every every grinder every gamer who wants to up their game so every time one of these events goes off the field is stronger it's crazy Speaking of a strong Yeah, field. I mean, that's definitely it. Just tight play. I mean, Memo was, you couldn't hear my audio panel, but Memo was talking about deals made uh, in, in this last round that really showcased part, like some of the intangibles that go into winning uh, CDH rounds. And, you know, that's what it takes to, yeah. to take it to the next level. You need to have the, the technical skills with your deck, the knowledge with your deck, the skill with your deck, but also, you know, those intangible political skills and the ability to make deals and keep to them. That's something I think that the community's had a little bit of discussion about. If you're going to make a lot of deals, you definitely need to be keeping them. Yep. But, you know, if you're making one-off deals every now and again, you know, you can't really expect to keep them that often. That's been a highlight of controversy that uh, has not yet come up. You Interesting know, to see how that goes as the tournament progresses. The initial controversial person is actually in attendance here today. Cowboy Bob <laughs> has rode in on his steed. Um, but... <laughs> I don't know if you saw, but Elder Drunk and Highlander did a video on entering a tournament and just lying the whole time and how it ended up being negative EV. Because by the end of things, people were like, oh, no, he's not going to follow the deal. He's just going to he's lying. Um, mm -hmm. But we I have think a, there's more surgical grace that has to be involved if you're going to get away with it. But yeah. I mean, so far, like I said, Memo to every letter of the deals he mm -hmm. made in the last round, the ones he highlighted, he certainly kept two and to his detriment. I mean, obviously just activating the was the cleanest thing. Didn't yeah. do that. And uh, we'll see, like I said, we'll see, we're going to see the political action. I think for sure. in this kind of a pod is we have multiple leaderboard players multiple. involved in players resolving mulligans. I don't know if we can go down to the master, getting a look at the pod and a look at our players. We have, for round number three here at Punt City 3. Got first seed, got a Malcolm Tana deck. And a little bit of Teamer Pirate action. Haven't really seen as much of that recently. I'd say on the decline. Yeah. Talion, the latest and greatest from Max Fiverr, Fiverrman. The Colors Are Crutched special two-color decks. Absolutely. And then, of course, Max Fiverrman, 28 on our leaderboard. Tim Necrom going third in the hands of Doom DG. That will be Doom Ori, DG. the winner the of the boil. Sweat. <laughs> the Ori Swin. Uh, and then another Jarvis deck, Weather Light Captain. Second one of the day. Two Yurikos, two Jarvis. Uh, something in the water that I'm not uh, in tune with. But apparently Yuriko and Jarvis colors may be a cr crutch after all. Maybe. If this pod is anything to be believed. Uh, Charles Magyar notably um, put in great work as a member of the uh, topdeck.gg judge team at several events. Uh, we love him wow. and support him on his grinder arc. Um, as you see now, we are on the table. We're resolving mulligans. If you are at Punt City right now and you want one of those playmats, I don't know if you can still get one. Are they sold out? We have playmats available, so if you want to get a playmat, come get one. Come uh, just walk down and get one. Okay. Uh, well, maybe so, I'll maybe I'll get one after the fact. I don't know if that's part of the compensation for doing this or or what. But you I know. I think if you asked, it would be. Yeah, well, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll work that out off the air. We'll figure all yeah, that yeah, out yeah, yeah. as these players work on resolving their mulligans. So, yeah, as I mentioned, Ori, number five on our leaderboard. A lot on the line for them. A lot of points up in the air uh, as this, I believe, will be their uh, second, third platinum of this year. Obviously, winning the boil, huge amount of points. Got them number five on the leaderboard alongside some other results. But, I mean, that's certainly the big one carrying the weight. And uh, if you're Max Viverman, I mean, number 28, kind of on the outside looking in as far as a lot of the leaderboard prizing involved yeah. with the Top Deck Championship, a lot on the line of this event as well. So this is a big uh, game for the leaderboard considerations. I mean, when you go back at the end of the year, you're looking at the people that, you know, are ahead of you, behind you in the leaderboard. And you're looking, dang, like, where where did I have agency? Where did I have opportunities to really knock those players down? This, this right, right now, these little moments are the moments in which you get to exert any amount of agency over how well the other leaderboard players do. And that's that's a big 
a big moment for for both Ori and Max. And of course, either the two players that want to get involved if they were trying to hop their way in the leaderboard, taking up taking down two leaderboard players in one game, big deal. Long the line, those considerations alone, much less the fact that we're in a 2-0 bracket, you know, maybe looking to be able to draw if the winner of this game, you know, things look right, that kind of consideration. Absolutely. I I mean, I love seeing people, like you said, have the chance to just, you know, climb the ladder. Like if if Max takes down this event, obviously the the top deck points are uh there for the platinum event plus the leaderboard goes up, you know, he'll climb the leaderboard. Very exciting. A a lot on the line for everybody here. I mean, even though even though we're in round 3, it's these rounds that are fairly indicative of you can start to see the top cut forming unless someone goes on a on a crazy run you can start to see the players that are going to perform over the day so i think it'll be very certainly start to lock up slots right 16 is a lot of people and uh eventually you're going to start having those people that can just kind of draw their way in while the rest fights for you know whatever a few slots six to eight slots uh, of the bottom bracket uh, which is exciting in its own right. But certainly, I think if you're the players in the event, you want to get the winning done as soon as possible. Take a little break and be fresh and ready to play your best Magic Top 16. Opportunity to do that for all involved players. There's a ton of mulliganing happening. Looks largely to be on fight from inside of the table right now, though. It looks like... Okay, yeah, no, we do get some mulliganing there from Tim Akram as well. So a little, a little bit of mulligans from all of our leaderboard players. Disciplined part of the game. Other players seem pretty happy with high card count hands. Yeah. So not really sure if that means anything for the context of the pod, but could potentially mean something. Well, I love to see... I love to see deep mulligans. It's usually a sign of a conscientious player versus a sign of getting like mana screwed or or whatever if you see a deep mulligan and see edh it's usually because like a good four is better than a bad six but. extremely true uh, there's some mitigation to that i mean if you're talking about like c1 there you have malcolm tana the bar for a keepable hand is like can this produce malcolm and glenthorn usually and uh, that's really easy to do that's part of what makes that deck strong part of what made it strong for a long time and you know now cards like uh, Orcs, Bowmasters, and the like, just creature removal being more heavily involved. That's something we've seen a lot of as a feature of our first two rounds. Um, you know, make the deck a little bit worse, but in first seed, you can kind of just blow the doors off the game, especially with a high high card count hand. Absolutely. I mean, so we have Team Malcolm in seat one. That is a deck that, oh my gosh, can build from nothing. Uh... All these decks tend to develop fairly quickly. I am I'm interested to see. I know that Max plays more of a control bent on Talion, whereas Charles plays a uh just go for it version of Joyra. I'm interested to see how that all how that how that all plays out. I'm wondering how many turn cycles we'll even see. Yeah, Joyra, as a feature of last game, is also going forth into like a pretty heavy interaction pod. Still was almost able to get there through quite a bit of interaction. Really kind of only one piece short, more or less fizzled out once all the interaction was uh, said and gone. Mm -hmm. Only able to, uh, you know, a couple little micro things that kind of came up. But for the most part, despite all the interaction, Joyra, a deck that I would expect to be really poorly positioned right now because of cards like Orcish Bowmasters, were like, okay, now what? It's not even an optional draw. You just right. like lose your stuff. Like, I would expect the deck to be poorly positioned for that reason, but seems to be making somewhat of a comeback. Obviously, going forth doesn't favor you much, but a lot of cards in the end is important. You're a critical mass deck, and you could just easily blow the doors off this game with something like Jeweled Lotus, like you mentioned. So yeah. we'll see exactly how many turns we're going to get. So Taking things off the wooded foothills and a crack. Looks like we're going to do a little bit of shortcutting here and get a chrome box involved as well. Didn't get a great look for what went under that. Looks green. It looks green. Yeah. No turn one Malcolm. Kind of surprising. Yeah, I'm. I'm honestly, uh, if uh, I believe they kept a seven, so I'm. I mean, it must be good. They must have plays. Uh, fetching for was that a mana vault? That looks like a soul ring. To soul me. Ring? might be mana vault. Let's look. Italian. What do we got? Usually players like to put their... Yeah, that is a mana vault. You nailed it. God, I should never question you again. I I only know, like, four cards, and that's one of them. <laughs> but you're probably doing better than me. All these, all these new fangled artworks and treatments and what have you. Yeah, I, I, can't, I can't do all of it. 
I know what the cards do. I just need to figure out what it is. And Scalding Tarn going to be fetched for a Soul Ring. A lot of fast mana over the course of this first turn. Not a whole lot of, like, the Mystics Ristics like you might yeah. expect to see with such a blue pod. We're seeing mana development over over uh, resource development, card development. And, then, you know, uh, there there is there is definitely some credence to, to playing the slow turns. It, it, in the past, that's how every game went. You would start... Everybody would put their fast mana down before, you know, pre Thassa's Oracle. Uh, this is how Good CDH used to be back when we got to tournaments in wagon trains. <laughs> Another solar. And wow, I'm expecting quite a uh, quite a show for turn two, given all this mana. A talisman added to the mix as well. Let's get Jorah, the most mana. Dark side. Oh, yeah, this dock side. The dock side count looking egregious. And uh, to that end, I mean, if you're Max, this has got to be kind of bad for you, right? Like, you get to develop your mana and start trying to get Talon going, but everyone else is also developing their mana. You're kind of under the gun right away. Very Mastermind added to the mix. Yeah, if, you, if, you're, if you're trying to play Control, I believe it's a Carpet of Flowers under the Mox, by the way. Um, sure. If you're trying to play Control, you you got your mana vault down, you'll get Talion, but I, it seems like a case of uh, too little, too late, maybe, depending on... The development, like you see, out of out of Jory on four seat, three sources of mana and a Mystic Remora, you've kind of, kind of already, you're kind of already way behind, despite starting before. Yeah, I mean, being it's weird to think about being in second seat and being too slow, but yeah. I, I mean that may very well be part of the equation here. As multiple players having soul rings, you know, player yeah. in first gets to untap all the throw all three of their mana first. Just Malcolm has to be a good sign. That's probably yeah. one of the least scary things going on, surprisingly. Not normally the case. Yeah, just combat but... with Fairy Mastermind and then into a Malcolm. Some good honest attacking, something we've seen quite a bit of. Maybe disproportionately to the amount this present in CDH over the first few rounds here. And I've still loved it. Here. I've been talking to people in the lobby about how prevalent creatures have been in their games. And it's, it's, a, it's a very fun CDH to see. I think it looks like we are fetching and perhaps... Casting Talion. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, it looks like Talion time. All right, one or two. What's I, the... What's the? I named two here. You named two here, okay. I named two here, but, you know, I could well, be... an important tip that we missed. There was a there was a Mystic Remora follow-up for the Jorah deck as well. That yeah. is a huge one. Yeah. I, I totally missed that. And, yeah, that is, I mean, a huge component to the texture of this game, especially towards the Malcolm development. I mean, you could be going for something else, yeah. whatever, but you know what you don't want to feed. Malcolm's a perfectly safe play. And, yeah, actually... A huge boon for Max, who really just wants to play Tally in this turn and have nothing else bad happen. Does name one. No one? Okay, excellent. I mean, one or two is like the question, right? Everything yeah. else is mostly just nonsense. I just don't... I'm not... I don't know if anybody's ever sat down and just done the math, like, versus matchups, decks, whatever, what have you. Uh, it seems each player kind of has their own, like, preference, which is a really strange thing. I would not expect that to be the case. I but seem to remember to seeing someone do the math on... Um... Uh, the subreddit one time as far see so that okay so we trigger the fish yeah that does trigger the fish which does trigger fairy mastermind a uh, second is that correct uh, it'd be the second, second card right second one okay ad nauseum slamming ad nauseum <laughs> you mentioned ori loves to slam it is slam time everybody's tapped out only free interaction available two commanders in play though let's see what the table has to say if I'm Charles, I'm passing as fast as I... Oh, it resolved. It resolved. Wow. Oh, my God. Well, we we're dealing with see. Glare, which seems to be doing quite a bit of damage. Ristic study, I see there. That's three points. Oh, there's a force negation about to be flipped, flipped next. Wow. But, uh, I mean, Tal could, could yeah. actually be a meaningful amount of damage with yep. these flips so far. Especially with... We see the gamble. Uh, see, okay, yeah. Well, so that would clean it up, assuming there's extra mana for it. Did just tap out of the main phase. Only a color is floating, which you can see. Thanks to the tokens from All Trades Media, Orgus Bowmasters, Path of Negation, a bunch of other friends joining the mix. Fluster Storm. Wow, this is a fast ad nauseum. You don't see this anymore. Yeah. People don't just jam ad nauseum anymore. Or are we maybe able to get it done here? I mean, ad nauseums are probably the least safe they've ever been, but this one looks yeah. juicy. Uh, Ori, much like interior decorators, is great at choosing windows. Uh <laughs> I was wondering where you're going though. That's thanks. that's pretty good. I'll thank give you that. That's pretty good. Thank you. All right, this is this is the expert commentary right there coming <laughs> at you. 
I listen. I that's all I got. <laughs> that's that's all. all right, I we're got, at think man. time. Uh oh, yeah. the classic. I'm at eight. I need to count for talion damage. There's a talion uh, and mystic yeah. or potentially, and yeah, we're just not there. Imperial seal. seal. Does that change? Anything? Not doesn't help. I hear. I don't think demonic, demonic tutor, tutor makes this a little bit better. We have tutors already. We have gamble. We have ever. We don't have yeah, mana. We have I haven't mana. seen any zeros. I, I saw here. arcane signet and a talisman. I think we don't have any. We haven't drawn any like moxen. I saw morphic uh, pool. Morphic pool. So we're still flipping at five. I think that are there draws that kill us still with there's force already flipped. Wish claw. Now there are lots of draws that kill us. With now three. there's a ton. Yeah. I mean, you yeah. still need zeros. I think you have to keep flipping here. I think you have like, to. What keep are you doing flipping. with this? We have, I mean, yeah, we've we already been through Mana Crypt yeah, and Soul we... Ring. Ooh. Yeah. Like, the problem yeah. is, uh, uh, the Wizard, yeah, okay. And so it's we'll Fierce Guardianship, he's dead! Yeah. Oh my god. I think the problem there is that even if you flip Mana Vault, you cast it and then die. Like, and Mana Vault's enough yeah. to get you going, but... Yeah, the ones don't work. It has to be, like, Mox yeah, Opals it has to be and Mox Opal, the like. Yeah, Chrome Mox, that kind of thing. <laughs> Live fast, die young. You mentioned Ori's. Uh, next flip next was Mox was Opal. Mobile. There it is. And Ori is just, just going for it. Never look. Never look. He's yeah. going to keep flipping. Ancient Tomb. Yeah, okay. Holy yeah, all right. We're done. Yeah. <laughs> Brutal. Looking for any zeros. And Mystic Remora, well fed through that turn. Didn't continue playing. Did die to ad nauseum. Did Ori. Is now just struggling. On the outside looking in, draw still viable, but for the most part can only look on as Joyra added to the mix. Fish paid for. I I mean Yeah, I think the in, but you pay. There we go. I was like, how did we do this? Definitely paying for fish here. I'm, I'm... Oh yeah. So here's kind of the problem with Talion. I almost against Jorah, I almost feel like you want to name zero, zero. because there's so yeah. many zeros. But you just can't. I mean, that might be like the decision to name one because there's a lot of ones that you yeah. use, like the artifact reducers to make cost zero, all that kind of thing. But um, they've already requesting their phone back yeah. <laughs> so they can move along with things. And so we have a little phone swap out here. This application, much harder for with me to read. So much life total, yeah. I take this moment to really highlight all trades media tokens having that contrast the big bold it matters so much for clarity i'm sure those are really cool pictures on the application or whatever really cool figures just that clarity of just like the background of just a solid color and then the black text i can read it i can't read this and that's why these all trades media tokens are so great you should pick some up because they make everybody's life so much better absolutely the all trades media tokens are honestly honestly the best and they're they're so legible is the thing that's what gets so me. Well. It matters so much. It's something you don't even think about until you are in this position. And you're just like, what is that? This is unparsable. And it's like, okay, well, these tokens are here to save your day. Pick them up. If you're at Pun City, there's a boot there. If not, order them online. Yeah, if you're at Pun Find City, all trades media, search them. He's here. I believe it's Etsy. All trades media. Etsy. Etsy. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, I got it. I still got it. Got a little bit in, in the chamber here. Uh, what is bit. it? The, uh, the O. P3. The OP3, original print proxy pack. There you OP go. OP cubed. Take it. I got it all. I got it all dialed up. Third mana added <laughs> here for the Tim, the, or so the, the, the Malcolm Tana deck. And Eldritch Revolution yeah. on Fairy Mastermind. That triggers the fish. So Quickly drawing a card there. It's a little annoying here. We have the one yeah, mana up, so I think I. Th we, sorry, I moved away from my mic a little bit. Yeah, we have the one mana up, and so if this resolves, we have enough to activate Glinthorn in combat. And Pact of Negation comes down. I mean, that we could barely even pay for. It. We're going for the Pact. Table recognizes this is lethal. No help yeah. from Talion. Pact is going to work. Pact is unfortunate for the. Well, actually, of all the decks. That could have pacted there. Jora probably the least affected. Handful of zero drops, very likely. I mean, and just straight up has five man on. The yeah, table. has the five the only mana. Player with that. Do we and see back to max? We go to two minute tips. 
Yeah. Uh, after Max's turn two, all that setup certainly did lead to some sparks flying. Ori died to ad nauseum. Eldritch Evolution countered. And Max, maybe uh, brushing some sweat off? Happy to get a third turn? I, absolutely. I mean, it, the way that, that all that went down... You just kind of you just kind of pray and and it it worked out, but uh, uh, there is something about slamming your four mana commander that just feels really bad when you're tapping out to do it. Oh yeah, uh, I definitely think that was felt there. Yeah. Although now only three cards to work with, no cards really drawn. Yeah, off of power triggers that turn. Surprisingly, uh, if they had named a different number, it might have drawn some more cards. Is but, that true? I mean, what could we have named? Uh, I'm trying three? to think. Three? <laughs> like three or something, right? Yeah. Five. Name, Ad name five, yeah. Ad <laughs> yeah. Again, if you could name zero, you would have drawn a ton. Just could not. Did yep. not. Talion going to combat, striking the Malcolm Tana player. Uh, okay. Is there any merit to like holding back on defense? It just doesn't matter. I guess not. In the eyes of Max, I guess not. I think that there <laughs> is merit to holding back on defense uh, to have a blocker for the Malcolm in the event of a Linthorn Buccaneer win attempt. But with the Eldritch Evolution stuffed, I think Max is probably considering that he's got a little time. Yeah, I got a little bit of time in the chamber, and especially with a pack to pay for for the Joyra player. Only one mana to work with this turn. Probably not going to see too much of an explosive turn. And honestly, Talion still represents quite a bit of, like, cards and damage in the face of a Joyra win attempt because of the aforementioned, you know, artifact reduction, reliance, combined with, you know, you have a bunch of one-man artifacts. Yeah, you know, the, the artifact costs 35 cards. Uh, producer Alex uh, mentioning that the frustrating thing for Blake on Team or Malcolm is that now that we're down to two players, a Glinthorn Buccaneer win requires balanced life totals. So it oh, almost, is that true? I've yeah. never done the math. I just assume I die. I, I'm like that's a, that's a player flaw of mine. Yeah. It is I don't worry about it until it comes up. I have no idea what the context of that is. So yeah, yeah you walk you me a, through that. So what if happens you have if you're not balanced? neutral Glinthorn. So you if you have a mana neutral Glinthorn, which means you're producing two treasures. Uh, with each Glinthorn activation, essentially, if you have no excess mana, you will be able to activate Glinthorn Buccaneer an amount of times equal to the lowest life total of your opponents. Oh, uh, and then after that, you're just only making one, and that's not good enough. Yeah, and you well, you, you if you if you you will net zero, you'll net yeah, you'll net a single treasure. So the activations stop once the last person dies. Okay. So it almost behooves Max to beat Charles to death with Talion. Okay, so we got some action going on here. We did cast a Codex Shredder, a favorite of mine, which did draw cards off Talion. It looks like we went for a removal spell on Malcolm there on in step, which got answered with a spell, which drew another card off of Talion. So a couple cards there coming for Talion. Upkeep Worldly Tutor. That'll trigger Talion again. Talion. So we're finally getting Talion, uh, some Talion action involved, but Worldly Tutor, I, you know, I can't see life totals well enough, but, you know, I assume this could be lethal? I mean, you just walk us through it. Worldly Tutor, yeah. Worldly Tutor effects. gets Glinthorn, and then uh, with the one treasure in surplus, only Malcolm has to connect. Uh, and it seems to be open for Malcolm to get in on Joyra. Uh, of course, the, oh my God, the codex, codex Shredder. Shredder. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you did just oh worldly God. tutor into a Codex Shredder. Oh, my God. Yeah, no, that is unfortunately... Uh, Producer Alex has the card in his keyboard right now. Unless there is, like, a reanimation effect, a finale for five or whatever, finale, X equals three. Yeah, finale, yeah. You've, uh, you've, you've unfortunately, you played yourself. Well, he still needs to drop return. We've not drawn. Uh, we didn't draw. Oh, the maybe he did draw. Okay, maybe he drew. I I didn't see. Either way, but yeah. Glenhorn milled a Codex Shredder, an All Star Sylvan Library, unplayable. And uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, I would say certainly Blake struggling at the moment. Yeah, this is and unfortunate. Spellskite cannot stop Codex Shredder. Yeah, too spell strong. Spellskite is uh, unfortunately. Uh, probably too little, too late. Having whipped our Glinthorn Buccaneer into the graveyard. Quick graveyard check for totally not Memnonic Betrayal. Yeah, definitely not. Go back to Max's turn. 
I mean, that to see, Harry. I'm just looking to see what's in y'all's graveyards. You know, Checkers. it's it's one Checkers. of those things where Italian is just it's served by doing absolutely nothing, and you yeah. just kind of you just kind of hope that you get some action. And you know, you know Max I mean, got... we went for a removal spell. And yeah, it didn't work, and you drew some cards as a result. I mean, that's yeah, not bad. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Max drew three cards in that last mm -hmm. turn cycle, so you did it. Such you... a recall assembled. Yeah. See if there's any kind of follow up. Four mana now for Talion. Still getting dinged by the mana vault. You gotta Don't wonder. Worry, see that be untapped. You gotta wonder why. Why we rolled the tutor there? I mean, I guess it could be a case of I mean, not knowing what code. I mean, Codex 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 is not exactly a CDH staple. Yeah, that's fair. The uh, Jewel Little Scratch Digger's Cage. Oh no, that Glint Horn is in the bin forever. Yeah, that Graph Digger's Cage is a huge problem for Blake. I mean, even if the, how many redemption spells even are there? Does the invasion get it? The invasion the gets it, stuff? and the finale okay. gets it. All right. Any and, eternal witness action? Yeah. No. Ewit, maybe. I don't, but yeah. No it's, Ewit. I think it's Noxious just survival. gone forever. That's what we got. We got Noxious Survival. Um, but then that just gets the Codex Shredder again. Uh, Fug Bugly in the chat says, Glinthorn doesn't matter here anyway, only two opponents. That is not true. You can win with a mana neutral Glinthorn. That is how yeah. damage one at a time works. Yeah, just, yeah, you yeah, just, yeah. We just we we actually just got done talking about how you need an even life total between your two opponents. So now, what's the backup plan? The Niv Mizzet tandem lookout. Are we on setup? the Niv Mizzet tandem lookout? We are on the Niv Mizzet tandem lookout plan. Yeah, I mean that is that is definitely a possibility. Uh, uh one of the fun things about Malcolm Tana is that Eldritch Evolution gets you Niv Mizzet off of your Tana, but Eldritch Evolution is gone, and there's a Graph Digger's Cage in play. Uh, if you're Malcolm, if you're Blake on Team or Malcolm right now, you do not have the ability to cast Niv Mizzet. You will eventually, uh, but eventually, being eventually. The but yeah, right, six well, colored it's time to... a lot. Let's do some Jira stuff, shall we? That start with Dockside Extortionist. Dockside Extortionist, which is, tends to be a good start. Does trigger Talion, though. That has one power. So, not just CMC, of course. One, Does check two, power and toughness. Three, four, five, six, seven. Depending on if Max cracks the Lotus and Blake cracks the treasure. So, five okay, or seven. To me. Where do you stand on that? Yeah, are we cracking the stuff? Uh, no, I'm absolutely not cracking. I, I, I'll i die with interaction in hand. I'll definitely die with the treasure in play. <laughs> All right, no fear scoots, huh? No fear scoots. We'll see if the table agrees. I, I mean, the Jeweled Lotus looks really the, bad, right? Yeah, the Jeweled Lotus feels fairly inconsequential. I think if you give Charles a treasure off of Jeweled Lotus... Wow, look at this! Wow, okay. some cooperators! Wow. Cooperators here on the table. Five still a large amount for Joyra. Yeah, call is floating still, too. I mean, this is a ton yeah. of mana, I have to imagine. And nothing that really... I mean, Grafter's Gage doesn't really stop Joyra too no. much at all. It stops Breach, but, like, whatever. There's a lot that's going to happen before yeah. Breach happens I mean, in this kind of a deck. Let's just Words of Wind all our opponents' permanence. That would be fun. I remember that being a Joyra win con. That was a good time. Uh, what is that? What is Words of Wind? You make infinite mana, and does. then Joyra, it says, the next time you would draw a card... You may pay one, and if you do, bounce target permanent to your opponent's hand. So you just bounce their Jeez. whole board. Oh, there is a world of wind in this deck. Yeah, <laughs> what is happening? Yeah, you just bounce their board. It's fun. The next thing you draw a card, each player returns a permanent to their owner's hand instead. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Artificer's Intuition? Oh, my God. There's so many just CDH wild ones in here. Classic retract. I know what that one's up oh, to. Oh, retract. That good. Pa oh, um, uh, 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 paradoxical outcome. We got filter out too now. The one blue blue. Yep. Instant from. Uh, Jora has gotten some tools. Notably, Charles yeah, cracking Jorah. all of his treasures for blue. Oh, because we're Hercules recalling, Recall. so we gotta yeah. have the mana floating already. Yeah. And it's all blue. Don't need red. Stinking color doesn't work anyway. No, no shred. No codex shredder shred. What are we doing? Gotta get some shredding done. We'll shred in response, maybe. 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, maybe if somebody goes for a tune or something, you just want to have it up. You know, obviously, it's not clear. I just want to come out extra shredder, people. I love the cards so much. Maybe I'm a Joy Convert. I'm being converted. Just watches, you know, it hasn't won on camera yet. Might here. We'll see. But this is just awesome. So many cool cards. Jora gets to play a lot of cool cards. I, th- I think Jora has, like, a big attraction for people who who enjoy playing storm storm type decks po in other formats uh, it's re- it's really cool it's definitely it's just a very cool deck like very fun to play played a little joyra it was a good time really yeah you play a little joyra you and lauren apparently both joyra players i've never never given the deck a shot i played joyra in saying. the early days of joyra like Odawara targets something. I believe we just used the floating blue to redirect a spell skite. I think what, what did you go to bounce there? Uh probably Talion, maybe? It has to be Talion. Talion or or Graph Digger's Cage or What You know did that we... one? You know that banger? Artificer's <laughs> assistant? Is that the cost reducer? No, it's <laughs> one blue fly, whatever you cast a historic spell, scry one. Uh, Gives you a little it turns them into ops. That's pretty Each good. Each historic spells an op instead of just a cantrip. Quite strong, I imagine. One mana, pretty cheap. Flies, block, block Chrome. In chat, they are calling this the Joyra Yuriko brainwash stream. Oh, no. <laughs> it does feel that way. It this is not even intentional. We're just, yeah. we're just featuring leaderboard players, people that are winning in the top deck championship series, and apparently everybody else showed up with Yuriko and Joyra. I don't know That's what's up with that, goes. but I'm here for it. I'm and here for combo. it. They're cool decks. Yeah, combo. I mean, we'll have to check on Steven, see how Steven's doing. Oh, that's, yeah, we that's... do have to We do have to have a little check-in with our boy Steven, see what's going on. I'm looking to see some more combo, see some more ballista kills. That's that's the real CDH. People are just getting shot to death with manual <laughs> ballistas. Talk to me. <laughs> I just love that he gave him an option. You can die to your force of will, or you can die to this ballista. You know, the uh, the great... Paulo Vitor Dama de Rosa wrote an article at Channel Fireball once. It's called uh, Paulo's Golden Rule. And uh, the golden rule is never give your opponent options. But CDH, I, I would argue Paulo's rule, very bad. Not hmm. not applicable. Not applicable in, in CDH. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Now, I'm no Paulo, so Paulo can come in and just smite me with his almighty magic wisdom. But, you know. He could, but yeah, he it, won't. it might be he below him to watch He's a CEDH stream. We're seeing some tainted pacting here in response to a talisman cantrip. So I assume that the table after the Hercules recall is kind of pieced together. This is probably not getting better anytime soon. Yeah. And Talion may be looking for something deadly relic shaped. Uh, Thinking on subtlety. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't work anymore. Yuck. Subtlety. <laughs> cool card. But... I'm surprised Talion's even on tainted pact. You have to do some weird stuff with your basics. I kind of figured you'd want to play more basics than that. I guess not. One of each. No. Yeah, you do the, you know, you got to play River of Tears and the Pathway and Darks Lake Shores. <laughs> but, you know, it's a little easier now with the the Surveil Land. Yeah, Mystical actually, Tutor. Okay. Mystical Tutor could just get Codex shredded. <laughs> it sure could. Although it's kind of sure not in play, maybe a maybe a sequencing thing going on here. If top deck tutors are a thing that matters, what is uh, happening? With Talion oh, on one and Codex Shredder not in play, when you cast a Codex Shredder, he draws the card anyway. But the okay, tutor yeah, we're, target. We're currently struggling to get cards to the bottom of the library. Yeah. He says, I'm going to continue doing this. Can I just put them over here? That is the <laughs> new bottom of, of my library, mount. please. Yeah, love that. <laughs> just incredible. Speaks Very. to uh, the size of the decks here in CDH. I need yeah. to be manageable. Especially when you're playing these decks with all foils and you're double or triple sleeved, it's like holding a brick. It's just eventually, it's too much. So, so Charles, I mean, you've played Jorah before. What are the chances of winning right now? We got three mana, you got a bunch of cards, you got it's, your Artificer's Assistant. It's, it's, what are the odds? I mean, it, it's like, it's pretty good, honestly. Is the metamorph? It's it's way better now. It's gotten much better with the metamorph, and that doesn't draw a card off Tally because it doesn't get the one power from Dockside until it enters. Until Assuming, it enters. of course, we're going to copy Dockside. Can't imagine Tally or Malcolm are that it, appealing. But it does, however, trigger Joyra, which it is insane value. Yeah, check out my Dockside. Yeah, we have a Joyra. Dockside, so we make more mana here. 
quick recount. It is five. Now that mana is starting to look pretty good from the cracks of Jeweled Lotus and Treasure. The double down on Dockside. It's gone down to four with Spellscaping about the hand with Odawara. So Dockside actually getting diminished here as the turn goes on. Dockside slight, slightly worse, but, you know, it's going to be good. Everything's going to be good. Uh, so do you need a cost reducer to go off slash win the game confidently with Jura? Is that what we're looking for here? A cost reducer is, is extremely beneficial. I'm not sure if Charles is on an Aetherflux Reservoir build, but um, if he is... see one. Oh, here's a Transmute Artifact. This could be the aforementioned Aetherflux Reservoir. Let's or... see a Reservoir in this deck. Ooh, what is it going to be? But it resolves, it looks like. Got some bangers. Candy Trail. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Grinding Station. Helm of Awakening is a cost reducer if that's what we need. We have Helm? Park Clan Ironworks. Could it just be KCI? Oh, it could be KCI. Uh, we need um, uh, a Junk Diver or something. Uh, we have Scrap Trawler in the deck. Could grab that. I don't know if that does anything yet. I don't know. It's like more KCI shaped than yeah. really Aetherflux Reservoir shaped. Uh, let's see what else we got. Uh, not a whole lot. Top is strong. What is, what is that? Is that a helm? That is, might be so, it's like, what, it might be Vets Grid, actually. Oh, it could be D-Grid. Is that a schematic D-Grid? It looks like a schematic D-Grid to me. I think it's a defense grid. Yep. D-Grid, uh, confirmed. That's awkward. <laughs> Are we just dead? I think, <laughs> it, I think the table has now dead? died. Yeah. Yeah, Italian. I mean, does still do damage, but now the cards don't matter as much. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it looks like Defense Grid to me. The only other schematic stuff we got going on is Soul Guide Lantern, I and mean, that does not look like Soul Guide Lantern's art. So, gonna go with Defense Grid. Oh, we got a workshop. Mistress Workshop? Oh, we got a <laughs> workshop. Things look very good for Charles right now. I haven't seen that one getting it done in CDH too much. Obviously known for its power and vintage. Gonna redeploy the banger, yep. Codex Shredder. Codex Shredderino, triggering Talion. Triggers Talion, two damage coming. Cards still don't really matter. No three no. mana up for either of the opposing players. So we have oh, a looks... Scry and... Oh, there's a Mamber. Oh, no. Mamber seems very, very powerful. Likes what he sees, and if you're the table, any scry on top has to be a disaster. Has to be bad. <laughs> quite, quite bad, yeah. Just like, at best, it's a redraw, which lets you look again. Uh, at worst, you know, obviously you're just down the spot, and there's a cost reducer. That's the art of... What is that? The... What is that one? Uh, it's the two mana one. We'll get there. We'll get there. Ethereum Sculptor. Ethereum Sculptor. Name of that card. Artifact spells cost one less to play. So now Codex Shredder free. Maybe could have sequenced that one first. So had to have just been the recent draw. Might be the garbage put on top. As here comes Moon Snare Prototype. Why didn't he Mystical Tutor in mana? response to that draw? Because there's a defense grid. The defense grid got snuck into play yeah, we... with the transmute artifact. And now it's a moon players snare can't prototype. cast anything. Oh my gosh. Now defense grid tapping for mana. Thanks alongside Mr. Pony potentially. Beautiful. Now we got one more Mistress Workshop mana to use. Uh, Here comes Spellskite. We must need that. And, his own. and left on top very quickly. Uh oh. This game might be wrapping up right now. Pithing Needle. Pithing Needle. Three Pithing Needle. Like, what do we. What do you. What do you needle? You can't needle library anymore. It's not something that works. Name Thrasios. Uh, uh, just for fun. Did, did we actually name Thrasios? <laughs> no, I, I want I want them to, but no, I wouldn't name Thrasios. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. You could name Glinthorn yeah, Buccaneer, we're I guess. We're still drawing, and this no. is an impressive show from Joyra. Very excited to see what we're going to win the game with. Like I said, Crockland Ironworks kind of seemed like the way things go, but other options. I mean, it did have the Words of Wind thing going on. Yes, we have. I think we have options. We just got to get there at this point. Well, I mean, yeah, Start. you have all the draws and looks in the world. You got mana for days thanks to the, the cost reducers and two dock sides that happened this turn. Colorless floating from Moon Snare prototype, and it's retract! Retract. But that picks up the grid! That picks up D grid. Yeah. Uh, uh. 
And it draws for Talia. Or is it is retract any all non-land permanents or is it return all artifacts you control to their owners return yes. all artifacts uh brutal that does yeah no option to keep it back only one colorless left in pool so do you just start with mox amber or you start with yeah. shredder we start with the it even think... picks up the sculptor too it's not even free yeah it's an artifact yeah Ooh. i think retract yes. looking a little awkward start with the member all right, get the mana going. Now we can Mystical Tutor in response, potentially? Yeah, now we leave that Mystical Tutor available. Yeah. And then Grid could be taken care of, and that could change the shape of things. I mean, obviously, if retracts what you have, it's what you have, but I mean, I... there's a real cost now. Before, it looked like it was the door was shut. Now, not so much. Maybe Charles Ring. Was... Oh, okay, Soul Ring. Maybe Charles was feeling that uh, he was unable to win on this turn, so he just got rid of the D-Grid. Matched very quickly off of the soul ring. No thought given to Mystical Tutor or anything like that. I wonder if Rich rolled up with interaction. The draw before the grid was just great. And you're just rolled up on interaction and Jordan like it stopped here. It could definitely happen. It looks like someone is holding priority on the trigger. Yeah, the, the trigger, obviously active, non active, Max gets to draw first and might be thinking with the scry and draw or just draw one of the scry draw effects on the stack here interesting so this looked like it was going to be locked up now i mean obviously a lot of mana a lot of draws all that stuff but interaction works and that is what is key for max you mentioned talion a deck kind of known for not doing a whole lot and getting paid off for it and now here able to start doing some stuff after drawing a ton of cards doing a ton of damage force and negation getting involved on the stack at the soul ring we've done it try to constrict some mana I mean, this is huge, because if you can't redeploy Ethereum Sculptor, then your mana is severely hampered, and you might just be stopped here just on mana alone. Yeah. Pitching Pact of Negation, that's going to happen. Uh, yeah, the Ethereum the Ethereum Sculptor, sculptor or your uh, Phyrexian Metamorph, you can right. no longer get into play. And we've still got one from Mox Amber, but no more colorless mana floating. It's a Moonsnare prototype. That replaces itself and gives it the scry draw. So maybe just looking for some zeros, I and mean, this gives you more looks, but yep. does draw Italian again. Now Max is giving some thought to the Italian trigger. We saw him draw pretty quickly before, and it is Mystical Tutor. What do you get? pack has gone, Force Negation's gone. Just force, mind break trap, I mean, something like that. You could get an interactive spell, or if you're assuming that uh you're assuming that the rolling is over, what did we get here? That looks like Deadly Rollick. Deadly Rollick? Yeah. And that's gonna happen. On Joyra. Okay. I'd like to see that so that might just be more impactful because that just not only stops the action this turn but yeah. for future turns too because mission's workshop doesn't really help you cast that box amber turned off yeah Amber's uh, off Moose i have... mean you have four mana Whoops. i think moose snare but that's it yeah i mean we, we have a six. phyrexian metamorph in hand again true but like then then you have to like do something that's not joy row which is like what yeah. you want to do if that gets stopped it's just everything's a disaster yeah all right I think Max, I mean, you mentioned Italian getting to do not a whole lot. Yeah. Didn't have to do much there. I mean, one or two spells after drawing six or seven. Seemed Wait. to be a good setup for Max. It's a good rate. Good rate, certainly. <laughs> a good exchange. Yeah. An, a, an exchange of resources, if you will. An exchange of resources. Uh, Charles is holding up numbers with his hand. I'm not sure what he's indicating, but. Are we is there some kind of mana discussion from Charles here? Um, yes, I believe that is what is maybe going on. We're gonna be tapping for mana right away. Maybe time to redeploy Codex Ooh. Shredder once again. Does draw Talion another card? Oh, it's Mana Vault. Mana Vault. Oh wow, we could still be going. Oh my goodness. The show might not be over. With the mystical tutor a mystical tutor gone. Oh, it got countered. That one gets fierce guardianship. Wow. Is this in response to the scry? I mean, you still get a scry, even if you don't draw. Mana Vault eating the fierce. That's clearly Tough. heavily prioritized. Doesn't want to deal with Phyrexian Metamorph. 
I think Max has about had it. Yeah. yeah. He's like, all right, all right, all right. I was excited about the exchange. Having to commit fierce, I mean, that's a premium spell. Yeah. And just to stop this turn where you've already interacted two or three times. Yeah, we're discarding four lands to four hand lands. size. And, you know, we get to get a silver library trigger. Hey, Yay, two library cards. Trigger. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> What a great you suspend, raid. Suspend one, draw two for eight life. When there's a tally on board, the pressure your life total is here. I'm just going to I'm gonna be sipping sipping good on my Southern Library Haterade. Yeah, look at that eight <laughs> damage. Nom, 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 nom. De a delicious, <laughs> a delicious cup of Silver Library Haterade. Just yeah. horrible. Just unplayable on rate. <laughs> what are we oh, doing? well, what here is, we are. What is this? We've drawn, we've drawn two extra cards. Is that, that curiosity like on the pairs. Malcolm? Tandem lookout potential? That's a curiosity, I think. Oh, just actual curiosity. Yeah, like actual curiosity. Sweet. All right. That one's maybe a little bit better. Get some card advantage and some treasures going. Kid block with the artificer's lookout. Charles has that option. Can't imagine we're attacking this into Italian. Chooses to block. Wow. Well, if you're Max, you've got to love to see that. Uh, three mana follow up. Three mana follow up, or maybe a four mana I'll follow up. Named Could Tana. be two mana follow up. Oh, yeah, true, Donna. I think with curiosity in play, there's some onus to like get the spell sky back in play and protect your Malcolm. Yeah, I, I would tend to agree. You do want to protect your Malcolm here. I think if you hold up two blue red here, you're screaming extra turn spell pretty loud. But I don't know, you know, there's a lot of tapping and untapping. I'm not sure really what matters as far as mana tapping goes. Yeah. Did cast Curiosity this turn. Two mana tapped. Free to play spells. Spell. Yep. Good call. Jeweled Lotus. A little late to the party, but does get Tana into play. Now we get a Tana. None of that triggers Talion. No ones involved anywhere on those cards. Zero ones. Oh, Checking quick, graveyards uh, you know, again. You know, oh, I just want to well, see real quick. You know, definitely no reason yeah, that I want to look case. a little bit closer now. Yeah. Well, no, maybe not. We don't want to knock Deluge here. <laughs> That'd be... Ooh, no. Max just begging opponents to put things in the graveyard that let him win the game. Yeah, <laughs> Please, absolutely. just put cards that matter in the graveyard. Last turn, I, c I couldn't win, but this turn, yeah, mean bet is fat. Yeah, but with what? Nothing matters. Like, you like mana vaults and a glint yeah, horn. That's what like, I'm doing. There's nothing... You have to like yoink Malcolm and then who knows what happens. You gilded there. Drake Malcolm. You mean bet the glint. No, don't do that. Uh, you also don't even win the game if you do that. Disappointing. Okay. All right. There's a transmute artifact in Charles' bin. I know that much. Okay. Which... So talk to me about T Italian's path to victory. Is there any just shut the door and just toss his Oracle Consult and it? I believe it's Oracle Consult or Lab Man and Consult so you don't kill yourself with your Oracle. I think there are considerations there for Italian. Uh, and then I think the other win condition is your opponents just deciding that they're too hungry to keep playing. It's pretty much <laughs> those things. Those are the those are the win conditions. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I mean, you know, you got like Shieldred and stuff that can obviously drain the game through pretty quickly. Yeah. But uh, some of them you know, are as far on. As far as the trail potential goes, I'm kind of pessimistic. Some of them are on Mind Crank Blood Chief Ascension. Okay. Quick check. Blood Chief Ascension assembled. Uh, no Mind Crank. No mind crank. Just, okay. Just the the raw blood chief ascension. Don't need no mind crank. That's for nerds. It's a crutch, if you will. Uh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> much much like colors. Uh, we have. So, are we mnemonic betraying? Is that what we're doing? Well, it's not clear to me. It looks like we are. But I don't see one anywhere. I yeah. Mean, in the exile pile. So I assume we're just face up mapping out. He's saying, I have him in Trail. Well, Let me see what it would do. We're rearranging our opponent's graveyards without having cast a mnemonic betrayal. And honestly, we're not taking any game actions. 
<laughs> yeah, there's uh, maybe some consideration to uh, the pace of play that needs to be done here. But it looks like all the all the tables trying to kind of make sure they're all on the same page of what's yeah. possible and what have you. So the discussion happened there. Uh, gonna draw, take a point from Mana Vault. Did that very quickly. Notably, Manana Control does get around Grafter's Cage, putting the cards in exile, very she similar does. to how Living End does it. And uh, very quickly going to deploy Box Diamond, discard a land, play Spire of Industries land for turn, and ton of mana dialed up. We will see now we what are taking all the game Max action. has. Yeah, lots of game actions time now. See what he's cooked. Lotus Petal. Okay. More mana. Start. Uh, okay, yeah, we have done mana. <laughs> we have we have non betrayal. Does Eldritch Evolution get you anything? Bosses if you can find a I way to search, a oh no, Eldritch Evolution doesn't work. You have a Grafter's Cage in place still. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. Okay, maybe that's what stuff. you're thinking about. You can retract your Grafter's you Cage, then you Eldritch Evolution. Yeah, yeah. Here we go. This is, I think, what we're doing. So mnemonic okay. betrayal is happening. Okay. Mnemonic betrayal. Next. Next. Mana Vault gives you more mana. Okay. That's the insight I have right now. Mana Vault from Charles. There is more mana. We love that. Now remember, Mana Vault does do the mana fixing thing for you, it so you can does. use that any way you want. Of course, it doesn't work with Jeweled Lotus, but it does work with Mana Vault. Max P, notably, working through the line, trying to find it. A uh, Mr. Grimoire? Play. That one's on the house. Okay, yeah, it's oh. just free. <laughs> just, you just get to have that one for one mana, no big deal. Don't need that. If you're going to retract anyway, maybe you don't need the extra colorless mana or what have you. Notably, one of the mana vaults will go back to Max's opponent's hand, clearly not looking to play another turn is max so pretty apathetic to that particular side effect Let's see oh okay oh, yeah so we got the all trades media tokens i love this just, just so deliberate yeah it's like, all right i guess i need those tokens now fine okay, I'll float it's like you, you can feel the strain of someone that is so used to playing cdh by doing exactly nothing or just the bare minimum it's like ah oh, now i gotta oh, think i have to win that involves these tokens i mean good grief I thought you're supposed to have wanted lunch by now. What are we doing? <laughs> oh my gosh! Unfortunately, <laughs> the people who play against Talion do not get to eat lunch. No, no lunch. That's that is just, just how it goes. Thing. Yeah. Brings back to my Sphinx's revelation. Speaking of Codex Shredder, brings back to my Sphinx's revelation days. It was a, a meme that went around back in the Theros RTR standard uh, okay. where you could just cut everything but like jace's like you know the, the pro tour was won by a deck with no win conditions it only had jace's where you stole your opponent's win conditions where you just <laughs> looped an elixir until they decked so like people would put like codex shredders in just to like speed it up a little bit yeah and then you'd like rebuy your sphinx's revelations with it i mean that's part of where i really get all that love and charm for it mm. uh, this this deck reminiscent of that experience just putting your opponents in the dirt as slow as you possibly can we, as retract you're gonna go ahead retract. and retract so now the cage goes <laughs> away and you ee -E for a win yeah we get to ee -E. Are uh, EE not being engineered explosives, but Eldritch Evolution. That's uh, maybe a little bit of my boomer show. Yeah, that e. is, that is, no, explosives. you know what? That is fair. Maybe, maybe there's the, the, what's the new, the new EE something engine. Anyway. Oh, there's so, a new EE Enigma engine? Is there another thing? I don't know. I, that sounds right. Um, <laughs> it's probably not. Probably not, but it sounds right. Uh, <laughs> All right, so we mana vault lotus petal. That's four mana. So we got four, five, six still. Three to Eldritch Evolution, and then you still need to search for demonic consultation. Now the question is, how much backup can you have while doing that? We know there's a pact from earlier that was paid for. And that's one piece of backup on the house. Yes. Yeah, is there anything else? Clear? Not clear. You even need anything else. It does. Eldritch seem Evolution. Like we, are, we are set on Eldritch Evolution. Italian hits the bin. The work is done. Italian Kindly being has, sacrificed. Italian is given their all, and 
They are no longer needed here. Making sure that goes to exile. It yeah. sure does. Elder Revolution does exile itself. And before it's just not Thassa's Oracle or Scrabble like Shield or something. Just, you know. <laughs> the game must go on. Hmm. Can't grab Holebreaker Horror. It's one CMC too short. That That's... is Phyrexian Metamorph? I believe so. Okay, so we've made a Metamorph on Dockside. On does Dockside? What? Uh, Two plus four is six. Okay, we have more mana now. All right, so it wasn't Dawson's Oracle. Nope. It means we have something else out of hand we're thinking about. What? There were a lot of cards in Max's hand at the start of this turn. All right, pile of treasures. Yep, we got a lot of mana now. <laughs> What's the follow-up? Can we, if we just cast Holebreaker Horror, is that good enough? We could probably because it's a jeweled lotus to trigger it. Yeah, I think uh, if Holebreaker Horror was uh, an option, yeah. I'm just trying to think of all could be in hand to, to yeah. just needing more mana versus just trying to go for a kill. I'm not. No, I'm not sure what the total aggregate resources are in hand versus in graveyards uh, that would lead to a kill with Italian deck. That's a spot of unfamiliarity to me. I've not played a lot of Italian. I'm looking at the list right now. Holebreaker Horror, Thassa's Oracle seem like the primary ways to win this game. Do have random other goofballs like Ocean Thief and I assume Time Twister. Yeah, Time Twister is present as well. Yes, we could do that. Uh, do we have a Bowmaster? Oh, yeah, there's a Bowman. Don't leave home without those these days. You know, a really fun way to win is to make infinite mana with your Holebreaker Horror and then do it with your Orcish Bowmasters. Oh, peak, <laughs> peak C E D. That just does it for you, huh? You just love that, love that stuff. I uh, I've been trying to kill people with it and Cloudstone Curio and pretty much any deck I can run those two things. So, I was pretty addicted to trying to get uh, Orcish Bowmasters going with World Gorger Dragon for a while. But okay, I, I still just don't think it's there. Uh, uh Travis Carlson uh, in the chat. Ahead. Where can we find the deck list? You can't until the event is over. Then they'll be. Posted. Yeah, you get deck list once the event's over, you fiends. You fiends, you've been spoiled by open deckless tournaments that can just provide you the deckless whatever. This is not an open deckless tournament. Players do not know what each other has to work with. So deckless will be available immediately after the event, which should be Sunday evening at some point. Uh, to follow Top Deck on Twitter. I believe it's just at Top Deck GG, but maybe an underscore at the end. And there will be a post, I'm sure, once decklists are live. Or, of course, just check out EDH Top 16 on Monday, and that's a surefire way you'll find it then. But uh, while the tournament is going, decklists are not available to anybody but us. No decklists for you. So, a transmute artifact sacking a Phyrexian Metamorph. Okay, that grabs Wish Claw Talisman if you want it. To get... And then do we just have enough mana? For the Holebreaker Horror thing? It might not even be Holebreaker Horror. It grabs Wishclaw. We could have Oracle in hand. Sure, sure. We could still be doing the Oracle Consult yeah. thing for sure. Are we on? I believe we have Bolus seven mana exactly Citadel? left over. Yeah, no Citadel. There's like the One Ring and Wishclaw Talisman are really the only juicy things. Unless you're an Imposter Mac fan. More mana? More mana? I mentioned previously how the CDH has certainly moved to being flooded wow, with clone call. effects. Yeah, and it is imposter mech. That requires you not to pay oh. more, and here's more mana. No, just just get All a right. Malcolm here. You have a Glinthorn Buccaneer in exile to your mnemonic betrayal. Just make a Malcolm here. But no, was a jar way dog, lower so. on life? I mean, it's just uh, yeah. I, I I think it's probably too disparate, but. And also the Malcolm clone can't attack. Maybe that doesn't matter. I don't know. I don't know anything. You, I mean, you just have to go to combat and attack with Glinthorn. If you have like 80 mana left over, you can start activating. Sure, it, it just works anyway. Yeah. Okay. So maybe maybe an opportunity there. Clearly doesn't see the need. Nope, we're going for another Dockside. More mana. We have... What's wrong with more mana? What do we have like 13... 13 mana. Yeah, 13, available. I believe, is the number. Jolt Lotus already deployed. Maybe looking to just redeploy Talion with fish and just all this mana. Like, whatever, just go. <laughs> I'm just winning the game. Off it. Okay, Worldly Tutor is next. Okay, so that can get. 
Um, I mean, a host of things. Once again, Hole Breaker Horror. Yeah. Uh, another clone, Sakshu the Imposter, present in this deck if we just want to keep the clone train running. I mean, I guess. Uh, <laughs> Gilded Drake, if you just want to yoink the, uh, the Malcolm. Ah, uh, Spellscape makes that pretty hard. True. And there is Hole Breaker Horror. Hole Breaker Horror. All right. Plenty of spells left in the graveyards to cast, I imagine. And then once you start bouncing the docks out, I mean, things are just all over. You get one redirect with Spellskite to, like, try to tax the spells, but, I mean, that's just not good enough. Question is, can he execute in time? With a homework or... to the library. Pay eight, draw two on suspend. Love yeah. to see it. Yeah. Great. Unplayable on raid. Was then, is now. <laughs> Still garbage. Beautiful. Everybody home. Take them. Just throw them in the trash can. It's where they go. And, uh, yeah, move along with things. Hullbreaker Horror notably not able to be countered. Not if, I mean, obviously. We wouldn't see counter magic. We, if we, if, rather, if there was counter one magic. Ring out of one hand ring, just draw. in case. <laughs> That's how you crack your top of the deck tutor. Where's Kodak Shredder? If Kodak Shredder was in play, this wouldn't have happened. I miss it miss it too dang if we yeah. had codex yeah, it looks like culverger horror has entered the stack quick count treasures yeah it's all of them all right there they go they're gone all right what's next need a spell one mana oh, left that... lotus petal oh that's how we win the game isn't it we make the mana and then we recast the one ring over and over again sure i mean you know there's a billion ways yeah. you can do this. Give imposter mech to like Make dock sides and then who knows what. Okay. Yeah, there's a mox diamond out of one of the graveyards that will target. They'll create a target with Holebreaker Horror. I think that is Max's own. Mox oh, is that diamond. out of hand? Okay. Yeah, I think because of because of the retract that went back into his but hand. Infinite mana. Yeah. No, we don't. Not none yet. Of these... We we have vaults, so we, yeah. we need a mana the... vault or a mox opal. We need like a mox yeah. opal or something. And now Spellskite could potentially get involved. I assume, but I I mean I can't imagine that being good enough. There's so many spells. I mean, as soon as you redirect, you could just like pack your own mox or whatever. Like <laughs> you just you get so many options. Yeah. Imagine you have to do it. Yeah, we're going to see that happen right now. He says, I'm going to pay life and redirect that whole breaker or activation to my spell sky just to make you have another spell. Yep. And Max, I'm sure, will. I'm thinking about, thinking about cracking pedal here. I mean, if you think about cracking pedal, you've got to have something. Or just, you know, nothing matters. Just you a... need to let this resolve first. Yeah. I, yeah. I think, I, Oh, that was wrong. You need that to finish resolving. Spellskite's in hand. And now you can cast another spell. Any other spell. And, yeah, you just do it however you want. We notably, did we discard a land to the Mox Diamond when it entered? It's still on the stack. So that's now getting countered while it's on the stack. Oh, to this offer you can't refuse. offer you can't refusing our own Mox. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And uh, that's going to bounce Mana Vault. This time. Okay. And then that will counter the Mox Diamond, make two treasures, and the counter spell uh, that you don't like very much, used for its best mode, in my opinion, which is a Rite of Flame yeah, impression. It's, yes, it is a, it is a ritual. Uh. And here is the Mana Vault that needs to find a zero to pick up. Uh, or um, Imposter Mech. Oh, sure, Imposter Mech. Well, we just picked up one ring, so it might just not even matter. And there is Graph Digger's Cage. Okay, Graph Digger's okay, Cage. Okay, so works. that makes infinite colorless. And then you can. Got a cage. One ring thing. Yeah, and I think we're now explaining that. We're going to make infinite colorless yep. mana, and then I'm going to make enough mana that I can just one ring, pick up the one ring, have a bunch of protection from everything, and uh, draw my whole deck. That will find Thassa's Oracle, and that will win the game. Things are rolled up. Yep. Quick check to make sure that I, I don't actually know what we're checking for. Checking for something, but uh, this is it. Max Pfeifferman 
your number 28 on the leaderboard, Ori, who has not been present in the game for some time now, got to got to click the escape button with ad nauseum very quickly. Uh, is going to uh, take a loss here, number five on the leaderboard, still two and one, going to pretty easily be able to rally, make top 16, and provided some more wins are in the near future. But Max Feiberman looking very, very good to make a repaint performance and find himself in the top 16 once again yeah. on the blueberry pie Italian take. Okay, so it looks like there's the Mox Amber. That would sure, make colored color mana sure. with Italian in play. But right. there isn't Italian in play. Yeah, I mean, you just... What are we talking about here? I mean, I mean yeah, okay. you just bounce imposter mech. Yeah, you, there's a treasure. Bounce imposter mech. Okay, you make a dock side. Okay, well, yeah. What are we talking about? And now you I mean, have... There's a talisman of dominance mana. in the deck somewhere, too. Like, I don't... Yeah. <laughs> Arcane yeah. Sigbit. What are we? What are we talking about? Yeah. Colored mana is trivial to make, as far as I understand. It is, it. in fact, yeah, we're at, we're at the point where that's basically a deterministic. And there's the Bowmasters. Hey, it's your favorite line! Hey, we did it! We're killing with Bowmasters <laughs> and Hullbreaker Horror. What a good day. What a good day. Oh, my gosh. And Max? handshakes all around. Max, remember from an, an impressive performance? I mean, a lot of you. patience. Knowing when to uh, tap out, maybe getting lucky in a few spots one way or the other. But uh, I think certainly towards the end, once Talon started drawing cards, great sequencing with resources, knowing when to, when to act and when not to act. And uh, I think the commitment to interaction on Jorah's win attempt, especially with like committing the Fierce Guardianship there at the end, really speaks to a lot of CDH knowledge and uh, really picking picking his spots and rewarding with a win here. Midnight Betrayal, yeah. Telegraph kind of early. Patience on that, waiting to cast it until it was, you know, at least close to deterministically lethal. And, uh, yeah, I mean, rewarded with a dub. Max Reverman, 3 and O. Oh, really excellent start. sequencing. And another another game that that went a little bit longer. Beautiful. <laughs> excellent. <laughs> Some grindy CDH today. This one, not as much about creatures, even though there was a... Fever Malcolm, there was Joyra, you know, yeah. Italian drew some cards. Very much about the cards and the resources in hand. Not as much about creatures, kind of a divergence from what we've seen in the first two rounds and really showing your CD chick needs to be able to do both. If you yeah, can't cover absolutely. for creatures, you're going to be in trouble. If you can't cover for cards in hand, you're in trouble. And, uh, you know, I think Max Fireman's deck, Italian, showing it can do both with ease. Well done, Max. Um, I think we're going to, Alex, we're going to throw it to the stuff okay great we're going to uh play the in-between round stuff for you now thank you for joining <laughs> us for uh for eminence's uh, nope swear jar top deck dot ggs top deck. continuing coverage of punt city three uh drake i think that does it for you today thank you so much for joining us and uh it was it was such a such a pleasure to be able to cast a couple rounds with you it was a pleasure being here again. I can't thank Top Deck enough for having me here in the booth, even though I am remote. I'm the only caster not in person because, you know, I'm, I'm just the problem child. But it was a pleasure to be able to be in the booth with you again, especially covering some high-stakes CDH. I definitely will be back for a few rounds tomorrow uh, to watch more of the conclusion of this event. I cannot wait to see how it unfolds, especially, as Memo said, everybody's there. And, uh, yeah, you can, I mean, you can't miss this stuff. This is what CDH is about. It's a pleasure, and I uh, can't wait to see the rest of the rounds. Thank you for having me. Uh We'll see you tomorrow.
Well, it's Mr. Clam Chowder himself. How'd our first two rounds go? Uh, one and one right now. So. Okay, which, what was this last one? Uh, third seat, kind of tough beats, and uh, everyone got a Ristic study, and the person who was in first seat won with the extra mana. Okay, that's, that's how it goes sometimes. You were in third seat, you said? Yeah. Yeah, sometimes it's dice rolling simulator, you know? Yeah, it was a little tough, but hey, happens. Awesome. Well, uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing more. Are people respecting it, though? People respecting the, the, the brew? Uh, sometimes. Not everyone's... <laughs> remoras and stuff because they think you can't convert it, so, but that's about it. In, in inflated remoras, you said? Yeah, like if you were playing... Uh, okay, there you go. If you're playing like a classic SSA build, you might not convert raw cards the same way. Okay. So, because... But a Breach of the Thoracle will convert rock cards. And so they'll see the Remora, they'll run a bunch of stuff into it thinking it's a Sissé. What are they going to do? Draw a Nickel Boas? I drew Breach, actually. Sorry. And uh, and it's because you said you're running very, very um, interaction heavy. Yeah, interaction heavy. Tutors, that, a tutor suite that's more designed for Breach wins. So stuff like that. Awesome. Well, I'm glad to hear that it's working out. That that people that I mean on the one hand you want people to respect the deck but on the other hand you want to kind of s sneak under the radar I like it yeah <laughs> we take those absolutely we take one one more time your name Duncan Duncan thank you for taking a second I appreciate it of course so we are here post round two so there is 34 minutes left in round two and People are starting to stand up. We've got some easy matches, some easy wins like we see. We've got some we've got a lot of people who are still buckling down trying to go for their super grind. Oh, we we caught you with the meat in your mouth. I'll let you finish chewing and then we'll uh, we'll we'll grill you a little bit. <laughs> Sorry, sorry to force you to not enjoy your cookie there. We're here with Baldy. Baldy, how we doing? I'm doing well, doing well. It's running really smooth, so that's awesome. That's the dream from from your perspective, from the TO. For, so what's your role today? You're not head judging. What's your role? I'm not. I am a, I'm the tournament organizer and the scorekeeper for this event. So I, I am here in case for some reason something was to go wrong, fix it before it's actually an issue. So Beautiful. Support the judges, uh, support the staff, make sure players are having a good time. And uh, just facilitate awesome CDH play. So, uh, when things are smoothly going smoothly, it's the absolute best position to be in. I am sitting back just like this for most of the day. I have done my job. Yep. Yeah, just chilling. So, well, awesome. I'm glad to hear you found a position that you're super comfortable and happy to be in. Uh, yeah, I, mean, I don't to too often. I usually have just like a uh, Cowtown coming up. Yep. Uh, Two hundred fifty-six. $12,000 event. I will be the head judge for that event. Tell me a little bit about that event. I don't know anything about it. So that event surprised us in a very good way uh, because Fun City 3 sold out in 21 minutes. Like yep. Uh, Columbus, uh, you know, it is it is Midwest. It's a different market. There's a lot of amazing players out there. I was anticipating that event to sell out in a month or so. This is the Cowtown event. The Cowtown, yeah. The Cowtown in Columbus uh, later this year. It sold out in two hours. Okay. 256 players, two hours completely sold out. Like, this community is growing and thriving and, and hungry for good tournament experience. What I've found specifically is what I learned in Atlanta is out there, people are willing to travel as well. So the East Coast games, people are a little more hesitant to travel. The West Coast games, people don't want to travel at all. The m anywhere in between, people are ready to go for a drive. Yeah, it 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 it, it appears at least at least to me the Midwest is getting is getting really thick with CDH play. The East has existed because of a lot of eternal play, legacy, vintage, old school, and so CDH definitely falls into that vein. Um, the South is growing uh, bigger. Uh, West Coast, I I hope it catches up with the rest, but yeah, I mean, we have players that are here from California. Yep. We had a player that flew in for this event without a ticket in hopes that they could try to get Wow. Ticket. I mean, they're going to play in the rebound event and things like that. People are hungry for this format. And if, if, if us as organizers are, are running good events and helping foster a really healthy community, it's going to continue to grow to probably the point of like the Grand Prix level of events. Yep, that's what we want to see. And that's great, you know. So players support it. They love doing it. If we can help facilitate that, awesome. We get to see a format grow and 
and quiet the haters and all that kind of good stuff. So. Well, I look forward to seeing you in Columbus. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Thank you. Have a great time. Thank you. We love Baldi out here, one of our absolute favorites. Uh, I want to find Max. He said he had a good a good beat story, which we love. We love the good beats, but I'll show you guys what's going on in here real quick. So this this is the main area. I'll show you guys also the... Um, We've got the head judge looking over the shoulder. I'll give you guys a little more Inception moments. This is our feature match, and we've got Memo on the memo on the feature match. We've got our head judge overseeing it. I love seeing this kind of just super plain. There's nothing. If I step back, there's no partition, no nothing. The feature match is just over here in the corner of the room. So I can show you guys from a perspective if we turn all the way around. There's the rest of the room all the way back there. So we love seeing that. It's fun because an event like this is super tight. There's not a ton of things for me to run around and show you. So the emphasis really does become on the players. It really revolves around me sitting down, talking to players, and giving you guys direct player insight, which is everyone. Oh, we got, we got, another, we got another, uh, another bully here. How we doing? Good, yourself? Post round two, right? Yes. How'd we do? Um, I actually missed the round. So we get to laugh about it, though. I saw the clock. I thought the clock was good. The clock was not good. But it's okay. We take it with grace. My birthday's tomorrow. I don't care. I'm here for a good time. Nice. And it's, I, so were, did, did you run up to your, your pod, and were they like, what's going on? No, actually, I came through here up to the booth and found out, like, well, everybody's starting. Like, oh, really? Cool. Are you the guy? I, I am the guy. <laughs> and I'm like, well, it's okay. So I think you're going to have to take this L. I'm like, okay, well, maybe it goes to a draw. Maybe it doesn't. And that that pod plays a three top? Yes. <laughs> we don't need to talk about them. <laughs> Good luck to y'all. <laughs> to me. So, well, that's sometimes you got to take it with grace, and, you know, sometimes you got to TCB. You know, these things come up. Absolutely the truth. The full-on truth. What are you playing this weekend? Uh, TNT. Okay, and how are we feeling about it? It's been really close. I was two cards away in a Thor Oakland hand from a turn one, or not turn one, uh, round one win. Okay. And I say the best part, I am the fan of Angel's Grace because that's what saved from not being able to pay for the pact I had to play to stop the win from the other person before. We love it. Uh, what's the spice in the deck? What's our hot tech? Honestly. Any, like, brand new cards? No brand new cards yet, but, yeah, right now it's been hiding behind a Grand Abolisher. And then go, cool, just Angel's Grace, maybe add Nas, draw my deck and win. Beautiful. What are you watching out for this weekend? What are you, like, really worried about? All the Rockstar players are out there. They're lurking. There are a number of them. All and the turbos? Guys. Yeah, all super mean. They got the Sonic shoes on. Just <laughs> get all the I rings. love it. Awesome. That's so you got to watch out for the turbo pod players. Do you, when you're sitting down in a pod with the turbo deck in there, do you mull to tech against it? Absolutely not. You got to follow your own game plan because they know what they're doing. You need to know what you're doing, and hopefully you come across them and say, "I can stop." And pray that other people at the table are working to help this plan along. Okay. Awesome. Well, I really appreciate the insight, and so do the people out there. Uh, thank you so much for taking a few seconds to answer some questions. You're coming through out of Buffalo. For the players at home, this is one of the Bufftown Bullies. Oh, my God. Queen of Cardboard rating with 21 people. We love to see it. I'm going to be live here for about another half an hour. Thank you guys so much. For the people at home who just joined us, what's your name again? I'm Brian Knowles, also Rufus P. Funk online with the Bufftown Bullies. Represent from Buffalo, New York. We love the bullies out here. You guys have been doing an amazing job with the community and with community, not just with the charitable events, but specifically with community building for all different metas. We really love to see it. You guys are doing something really, really good. So thank you for what you put in. Thank you. I'm going to keep finding some more people out there. Uh, Queen of Cardboard, great to see you. Thank you so much for the raid. We're going to put a friendly face in front of the camera real quick. Not that, not that Rufus wasn't, but we're going to go over here. We got Dan in here. Dan is not playing in this event, but we're going to blow up your spot anyway. Dan, it's good to see you. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing great. I'm here to enjoy some CDH tournamenting, and uh, I'm here to have a great time. And to see your hair looks really nice, so that makes me happy. I tried to keep it. It wasn't it, – I kept it small today. We kept it small. I, I, <laughs> I like you got to go conservative day one and go all out for day two after Swiss rounds. Well, everybody's – you know – Day two, everybody's like kind of bummed out. The, you know what I've I've been talking I've been talking to people over and over, and everybody I love the balance. Are you trying to get out there? 
Uh, I love the balance of coming in and like round one, round two, round three. Everybody's, I'm so hyped to be here. Everybody's got such a good attitude. Everybody's in such a good mood. And by end of day two and beginning, or end of day one, beginning of day two, people have a much different outlook. <laughs> yes. I think it's very, I mean, I'm not very going to like rip on somebody for having bad beats or anything like that, but I love seeing the progression of the attitude that people go through. Well, I was talking to the Howling Salt Mine guys last night, and they're like, are you coming today? And I was like, yeah, I'll be there in the afternoon. And they were like, oh, great. Once we scrub out for day one, we'll be there with you to play some games. On yep. They know They know the story. They know those, those post-game games. It's one of the things that... Uh, this event, it's a CEDH tournament, it's established, this is year three, but what I'm most impressed by is I ask people, what are you most excited about this weekend? And they say Saturday night. <laughs> That, I think that's probably true of everyone here. Yeah, I you know it's such a big community in CDH that like I'm most I mean I'm here not as a competitor because I want to see all of my friends here from the CDH community. So I'm sure everyone feels the same way. I think it's something really beautiful that they've managed to establish this not just a an institutional tournament but an institutional gathering, and I think that's something that is extremely important for the community. Absolutely. So it makes the East Coast CDH community the best one. Oh, all right, all right. We're planting flags right now. I love it. What uh, If you were going to play in this tournament, what would you play? I was talking to Gold Sabretooth about this last night and saying that I feel the most comfortable right now on Tibbet. I think that I like the mana base a little bit more. I like a three-color mana base a little bit more than I like a four-color mana base, okay. a blue farm. And I think I'd be just a little bit more comfortable uh, feeling like that was a more consistent option. Okay, I like it. And here's the million-dollar question. Would you consider running your own copy of Trouble in Pairs in Tivit. I've seen uh, Ian running that in Timna uh, Malcolm. Yep. And I've seen some people on it in Tivit. I don't know. Four mana is a lot. I run um, the the Smothering Tithe, which yep. is also four mana. Easier to cast. I'm not on it yet. I guess that's where I'm at. I talked with uh, Mike. Uh, Michael Levine, who's on Heliod, and he was like, Trouble in Pairs! I hear people say it's really good and performs really well. I haven't seen it in action yet, so that, I guess I'm waiting to see it in action to be won over. In, in mono white, it's an easy call. Yeah. <laughs> in a mono white, I like the idea of running it in to host other people. And yeah, it draws cards. We like drawing cards. I do like. So I, I was also talking to somebody who. On uh, Winona this weekend, and I was like, it's an interesting choice in there because you don't want to draw into the things that you want to flip in. So it creates this like, mm, maybe you do, maybe you don't. But I think it, it creates an interesting dynamic. Like maybe you don't want to be drawing that many cards. Oh yeah, for like a deck like Winona, I don't think that's the right call. I do think that you want to have more cards in your deck. So. <laughs> We're just excited to, excited to play games. Yeah, I'm here to hang out, play some games, uh, enjoy my people. We're here to hang out with uh, Chuck S. Will and uh, Gold Saber 2. Well, I'll let you get back to I've literally got your corner here. Like, I know, corner. I can't get away. I'm going to let you do it. Enjoy the rest of the day. I'll keep catching up with you. I'll, I'll talk to you post round five and see what your thoughts are. All right, yeah, <laughs> good. All right. So Dan has been one of my absolute uh, just a, from Thank you for that. I appreciate it. I will have to keep a closer eye on things. Okay, yeah, so that's what happens. When it slips out, it stops taking the mic and then gets the rest of the sound. So that's good to know. Thank you guys for that. I typically ask over and over again about the AV quality. I'll have to figure out where the connection point is. I'm guessing it's the phone. Uh, oh, Zero, how we doing? Uh, we got a raid. We're doing good. We got good people here. I want to talk to some more people about how the games are going. So I'm gonna go ahead and find that. Find somebody to find somebody to bug. 
and we're looking around. A quality interview. Oh, thank you. We appreciate it, Zero. How are we doing? You ready to answer some CEDH questions? Yeah. So are we playing in the main event today? Uh, yeah, I'm playing Blood Pod right now. Uh, but actually, it's going more towards a mid-range Blood Hulk. I'm, so you're on the Hulk lines? Yes, I am, actually. Okay, do you which uh, do you find that with Hulk lines you run into a lot of dead cards? Um, yes and no. It's a little awkward. It's just kind of play patterns and also just choosing on what you want. I you personally run three reanimation targets that can also just steal creatures in case. Okay. Um, so is what would you say is like the new tech in there? Do you have any new brand new cards that you're excited about running in Blood Pot? Currently, what I'm running at the moment uh, with Blood Hulk at the moment is just Samwise Cat Combo. Okay. It actually performed relatively well in my last game and pretty much saved a game because I couldn't get swatted. What's your uh, standings right now? Uh, one and one. Oh, nice. Okay, we like that. We're still in it. Uh, yeah, no, I'm still in it. And uh, the deck was impressively not doing too horribly from what I did. And are you, with something like Blood Pod, it's traditionally looked at as like a heavy, heavy stack stack. Are you running that sort of strategy? I decided to actually go more towards mid-range since stacks is a little iffy at the moment in the meta. I think you could still run stacks, but it's a mid-range meta at the moment with stuff like Atraxa and Tivit being some of the bigger things you have to worry about. So that was going to be my next question. Is Are those the decks that you're like looking out for? What are you like totally folding to with a deck like that? Um, usually it's decks that run certain hate pieces, and maybe a couple of mid-range decks can usually beat me, especially because uh, the deck I'm running doesn't run as heavy combat as it usually should. Okay, so you're not necessarily coming through with Tana and building up a bunch of board state? No, not at the moment, um, though I remember I have played Jetmir and Elishorn in a while. Jetmir, Jetmir does big punches. Oh, Jetmir can finish a game. It's impressive. I, so I played Dalsim for a long, long time, and I love that deck, and I would just be so furious to be totally outclassed by Jetmir because it does what Dalsim wants to do, except a little better. I mean, yeah, it, unfortunately it does, but also there is some advantages Dalsim does have. It's yep. Again, it's just kind of a little bit of a weird meta at the moment with uh, Dalsim, er, where Stacks is a little, not horrible, but just everyone's able to play around it. I've been poking around with my old, um, I've been poking around with my Dalsum list because I think it's particularly well suited in the super mid-range meta that we're in right now. I think it could, it could have a nice foothold without having to rely on the heavy stacks that I originally built it around. So it's something that I've been thinking about for sure. I 100% agree. I think Dalsum could work out pretty well. It's just, there is some loopholes but I think it still could work. Also, Elevir is another interesting idea, if need be. Uh, Elevir, I've heard. Uh, I've heard that there's a couple registered this weekend. Oh, really? So yeah, keep your eyes peeled because it's it's it becomes very threatening. Uh, the longer the game goes, the scarier that deck is. Yeah, no, I I'm a little scared of Elevir. <laughs> I I don't blame you. Yeah, it's a strong deck, and it will kill people. It's. I love the idea of a fully, like, Solesnia aggro game plan is wild. It's been doing pretty well since they've been printing really good Solesnia cards as of late. And I don't I don't know. I'm not familiar with the deck list itself, but I could only imagine getting things like Calyx out there and starting to double down on your enchantments. Like, you could do some really cheeky stuff with that. I think it's a little too cute, but I honestly think you could work with it, honestly. Well, one more time, what was your name? Noah. Noah, thank you so much for taking a little bit to talk with me, and I will catch up with you throughout the rest of the weekend. Best of luck. Best of luck to you as well. Yes, we do stand a Selesnia player for sure. So let's find somebody else to talk to here. So uh, I should be looking for Peacecraft wants to see Voja players. I will look for the Voja players for sure. How are we doing? Oh, pretty good. I just uh, won the second round, so I'm 1-1 one, one right now. Oh, all right. What are you playing? Uh, Malcolm Vile. Okay, and is it your? Is it like just super kind of traditional build or? Um, I'd say I play a lot more A plus B combos. Okay. Um, I think Malcolm uh, and Grixis really works well with a lot of different uh, A plus B combos that it can make. Just the fact of you know it being a pirate and triggering treasures and 
Treasures do a lot of crazy things. They're only making more too. Like they just keep adding AVs to the pile. I think it's really funny. Absolutely. I mean, like one of my favorite lines in there is Mayhem Devil Trickery Charm. Yep. You, know, you have Malcolm out and that's it. You can win on top of somebody if you have Mayhem Devil out. Is Trickery Charm a newer card? No, it's an old card. It's uh, It's got like three different modes, but the one you care about is that you can uh, make target creature a uh, creature type of whatever you choose. So you turn into a pirate and, oh, you know, okay. there you go. Yeah. What's, uh, is there any brand new cards, any brand new spice that you're on? Brand new. Um, nothing from, like, the any of the most recent sets, I'd say. There hasn't been anything that I, I'd say has really upgraded the deck. But, um, but you know, there are cards and combos that are being tested out all the time. You know, like Necropotence Born Upon a Wind is something new yep. I'm trying in the deck. So. Oh, wow, yeah. very cool. Yeah, yeah. So, like that, so that's like, because it, it plays a lot of the things you want. You know, it's got Final Fortune in case, you know, you need to take an extra turn. And the thing that Malcolm Vile suffers from the most is draw. You know, yep. the problem is it can make mana, it can do a lot of cool Grixis stuff, but if you ain't drawing cards, you're behind everybody. You're not going to get there. And and in the current meta, it's all about advantage. It's all about that just drawing cards off of anybody doing anything. Absolutely. And, like, one of my favorite recent plays, not at the tournament today, but at a, a you know, regular home game, uh, I got an Orcish Bowmaster with the Curiosity effect out. Oh, amazing. Blast everybody. Oh, it's a fun time. Fun time. <laughs> what decks are you particularly worried about this weekend? Have you been at home, like, jamming your head, uh, slamming your head against the brick wall, like, doing the bad matchup? So we have a pretty good meta. I live in Long Island. So oh, okay. All right. You're out there at Rip and Ship? Malcolm. Yeah, I'm from Rip and Ship. So, yeah, so there's a lot of great players out there, and uh, they're all playing, you know, the meta decks, your Timnacroms, your Kinnons, your Sisses. You know, I get plenty of practice against those kind of decks. Um, I'd say, one, I guess, uh, anything that plays Blind Obedience. Let's put it that way. That's probably the one I'm... I hate that card. And there's three of them now. There's a Blind Obedience, there's a Manglehorn, and there's the Dauntless. And the Dauntless, yeah. But, like, the Blind Obedience is, like, the worst. Because at least the creatures you usually can deal with, hence, like... Because I play Orcish Bowmaster. I play Mayhem. You can blast them. I play Niv. You know, like, I have things that can ping those things away in time in the right circumstance, right? But, like, yeah, once a Blind Obedience comes down, it's like... Got away from my bounce spell, and that's annoying. Okay, interesting. So you're relying specifically on bounce spells to get well, rid of permanents like that. Get rid of blind obedience themselves if they need to. Yeah. Captive and you know, uh, captivating off of like you know uh, somebody else's mistakes or something like that. You know, that's how it's an opportunistic desk, uh, deck. I Not walked. I walked over to a game over that way, and there was a blind obedience out, and I saw at least twenty tap treasures, mm -hmm. and somebody was trying to resolve. There were two people trying to resolve Docksides on top of one another with all the tap treasures yeah. and, like, were popping things back to each other's hands. The There was a Heliod player flashing in clones. It was... And I love that the Blind Obedience has created, like, a super strange risk reward parable with dockside because a lot of people will just play into it and be like it's cool i'll use my treasures next turn and it's like that's no that's, that's, that's that. a terrible mindset absolutely get stop having that mindset if that's you if that is you don't because you're not getting to your next turn no you're giving you're giving whoever gets untapped treasures 40 treasures absolutely or the blind obedience player who's just like oh cool you guys are doing this stuff waiting for a turn i'll just win their fingers together like Mr. Burns for sure. Right. Oh, I have my clone for all of you guys playing your dock sides and clones. Yeah. <laughs> so one more time, what was your name? I'm Nick. Nick, yeah. thank you so much for taking a few minutes to chop it up. Absolutely. Best of luck the rest of the weekend. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Uh, the player. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> so we'll get the white background here. So I like this. This nice. Oh, wait, no, can we do it? There we go, the full white background. Isn't that nice? Uh, so I hope everybody at home is having a beautiful weekend. I can't believe that there's 30 people in here hanging out, watching this stream right now. And if you are watching this later in the day, not live, uh, to all of you watching the Top Deck stream, thank you so much for tuning in. It's such a pleasure to be a face of CEDH content right now and to be a part of this. I'm going to go do a lap, see who else I can talk to this, uh, and see if there's any people... Yeah, worth uh, worth really picking their brains. I like that people are stand, sitting outside, puffing butts and all that. Oh, so you had uh, you had your easy win. Come, let's talk. <laughs> so we had some people in the chat asking for you as well, which I think is wonderful. We all love to hear that. Uh, for the people at home, what's your name? My name is Max Sternberg, also known as Wounded Satellite Online. 
And Max, what are we running today? Uh, I got convinced to go back to Kinnan. I was very torn between Kinnan and Italian for today. I feel like there's a lot of Kinnan hate out there. As much as I love the deck, Italian's also very, very good. I'm I'm super like mixed on Italian just because I think that it. I've been playing it like in casual CEDH games, and I find that it creates like mega grindy games and has trouble closing. That's where I flourish. <laughs> that's that's my specialty is the grindy. Control. That's your sweet spot. That's my sweet spot. So Italian being a deck that I get to go slow, I get to be honest, not be the threat, get to develop, get to be the solution to other people's problems, and then eventually become the problem. It's exactly how I want to play Magic. Because I'm typically seeing it in a live setting, in an entertainment-based setting, I it makes my blood boil. That's fair. <laughs> so it's like this is I understand that this is an immaculate game plan, an immaculate play, but it is it's not cloning dinosaurs it's not <laughs> right i mean playing playing pure control it, high skill floor gotta stay focused it's mentally exhausting but the wins are so rewarding yes because you don't get free wins like my no. last round i got a free win you know you don't get that on talion you get that on kinnon sometimes which is nice Let so me. so you said you're on kinnon you you came up to me earlier you said you want to hear a crazy story oh, I just said it was the freest win of my life let's hear it uh so i'm on the play my starting hand has two blue lands soul ring spell skite trinisphere mirror tezzeret and i'm like okay turn one one land, soul ring, spell sky, turn two, trini, turn three, tezzeret, get the one ring, grind out the game. That's the plan. Turn one, top deck a mana crypt. So I get to go land, mana crypt, soul ring, trinisphere on the play. Turn two, top deck the green source for Kinnon. So I'm like, okay. And then turn three, top deck basalt. I'm like, great. No one has three lands. I, I win the game. Uh, no, and nobody had anything. Nobody had any free free interaction. I have an active. Oh, because the trinisphere yeah. makes the three. The interaction costs three. Yeah, I have an active trinisphere. The only card that could have messed me up was exactly Besaju from Atraxa, and they didn't have it. I I love hearing that. That's a wild win when you just top deck the pure gas and have a, a card that just shuts everybody out. Trinisphere is broken. More people need to play it. The card is amazing. I had a game years ago. This would have been years ago when I was still running Marin, like very, very heavily. And I had a turn one Trinisphere, and one of my lands was a sack outlet lands and I went turn one Trinisphere into a turn two uh, mines uh, mines uh, mine, yeah turn two mind slicer all the hands yeah I turn one Trinisphere into a turn two mind slicer and everybody was like all right you got this yeah GG's let's just scoop it up play the next one there's no point there's no point nobody wanted anything to do with it no, when you get when you can slam a Trinisphere turn one in the play in CDH most people don't even have three lands in their starting hand they don't want anything to do with it they're done they're done so so what are you, and these are the questions I've been asking everybody, what are you watching out for this weekend? What, are there any maybe new cards you're worried about? Any commanders that you've seen kind of slowly rising? I mean, new cards, not really. I think generically there seems to be a lot of Kinnon hate right now. Uh, yeah. A lot more people are just going up Curse Totem. A lot more people are just not letting Kinnon survive, which is, it's frustrating from two perspectives because obviously you don't get to develop as well, so that's that's fine. But frustratingly, people preemptively use interaction before I think they need to use it a lot of the time, which leads to opening up windows for other players. So you're even more susceptible to losing quickly because interaction just gets used on you by being in a threatening deck space right now. And that's part of what was mentally leaning me towards Talion is I don't want people blowing their interaction necessarily. So like round one, I cast Kinnon twice, it didn't survive even one person's turn both times, and then we just lose to the person who's obviously ahead when I was in fourth seed and not doing anything. I literally had an interview 10 minutes ago, and I was like, you know, what's, what are you worried about? And they were like, well, with Kinnon, you just blow it up three times in a row, and they're, you know, ass out. I, I tend to lean towards hand that aren't Kinnon-focused. I coach on the deck a lot, and one of the main things I say is don't go for the all-mana Kinnon activation hand because it's so easily interacted with by just blowing up Kinnon or playing down certain stacks pieces. I like hands that do other things. Yep, and that's, that's why when you told me about this amazing hand and you listed a bunch of stuff that – you know, you weren't able to like think about turn Ken until turn three. I was like, oh, that's super interesting to think about the deck from a different uh, a different angle or a different metric. Which I didn't even have a land for Ken. The plan was just Trinisphere into Tezzeret for the one ring grind. Yeah, win that grind 100%. Um, but that's just what you got to look for. If you focus too much on Ken, you get blown out. Think of Kinnon as the nitrous to your engine, not the gas that gets it started. Oh, awesome. So uh, what's your standings as of now? Uh, we're one and one One and one Well, I look forward to hearing about the rest of it throughout the rest of the day. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to TopDeck.gg's coverage of Punt City 3, live from actually not sunny and not very beautiful Rock Oaks, three. Pennsylvania. It's actually it's really gray outside, but we're here at the Hilton 
Garden Inn, home of the most average breakfast in Pennsylvania. And we are having a grand old time. Spirits are high, and so is the smell level. Yeah, um, if you needed toilet paper, you are in the wrong place. You are in the wrong place. Uh, I would remind any competitors watching to stop watching. And But if you're not, if you're not a competitor and you are here... Flush the toilet. Thank you. Uh, we have here a, a, a pretty good matchup, I would say. Mike Sad said, I'm bringing Spice and played Rograk Thrasios. Um, there's a lot of storylines going into this pod, I think. And we know um, this is a, a lower end of the pods that we have selected, but the storyline is just too good, and the odds of these folks being paired is so, so low. We have Mike Saad, the winner of Punt City 1, and seat one, Brian Koval, winner of Punt City two, in seat two, Lewis Stardust, um, themselves in seat two, and then Josh of Elder Drunken Highlander fame in seat three. So absolute stacked pod. What we, else is Josh from? <laughs> Josh, Josh has a podcast with me called the Punt Pals, where oh, okay. we uh, appeal to the seventy-five percent of players on average who do not win their commander games. But I'm not here for that. I'm here to cast and hype up our pals who Excellent. are not, hopefully not punting. I who mean, if Josh punting. does punt, though, this is great content. Josh has the certified punt token right on his right it's on his perfect. mat right now. Now, also, if you want one of those certified punt tokens, I don't think you can get one. But if you want one of those path priority tokens, you can go to Etsy.com and look up All Trades Media and get the OP3, the original print proxy pack. Yes, yes. Uh... All Trades Media, who's here vending this event, uh, they are selling their tokens here. They sponsor the stream. They sponsor TopDeck.gg's streams um, and, and this event. So very thankful to have them here. We met them for the first time, too, which is which is very, very exciting. But um, very, very cool to uh, see these tokens. I, I think the active player token is such a cheat code. Absolutely love seeing it. Extremely thankful for All Trades Media for sponsoring us and this stream. Notably, we got a little picture of Josh's hand there. Josh <laughs> saying... I showed you my deck. Please respond. Yeah, uh, he's playing notably to lose, but not to lose. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, okay. Yeah. Clever conductor? Anyway. To lose? Clever conductor? <laughs> it's very cool. Just like Helenium said, so many friends in one pod. Very cool. I know Lou and Josh. Hey. Hi, can you guys hear us now? There we go. Are we audible I, in the volume? I think so. Can you hear us now? No hey, audio. Gamers? Are you guys messing with us? I don't think you are. I think they can hear us, Lauren. Oh. I think they can. Can they? I, I don't think you are. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, chat is just being a bunch <laughs> of ace holes. <laughs> More puns from Lauren. Thank you, Lamora's cards. Pains in my asshole. Okay, everyone who's typing yes in chat right now has to Venmo me. All right. Um, I just got so rich. Alex, the game has started. Is there any way we could pull this audio thing out of my eyeballs? Thank you. Oh, wow. We have yeah. quite the turn right, one. So quite, a, quite a turn one. 
I said a, a Mopal, a Mana Vault, a Talisman, and a Rograk, and a Fish from Mike Sad. Lua playing the uh, Windswept Heath into, a, uh, I'm assuming, a Sacred Foundry. I do love and hate Lua's K-pop sleeves. Yeah, I actually only hate them. Uh, exiling a Simeon Spirit Guide. Darkside? No, a Null Rod. A Null Rod. A spicy, spicy turn one from Lua. That Lua-Rod. is hilarious. I love this play. Yeah. You, um, you know, you set Mana Rocks back to the Stone Age. Now all Mike gets to do is take it. Oh, here's an offer you can't refuse. Uh, Lua may try to refuse it. We are all passing priority. You know there's no misstep if you see that fish resolve, right? Absolutely. Yep. Um, those are easier mana sources to cast Minota next turn? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I mean, you you figured it out. You saw the line. Dang, I'm very good at this. The All Trades Media Treasure Token coming down. The Active Player Token is such a boon to the cast. I'm so, I'm so happy about it. Josh? Looking at his options. Uh, offer you can't refuse does not exile. Herod Misa. Oh, we are land passing. Land go. Okay. Oh, yeah, the monkey should be exiled. You are so correct. You are very, very correct. Um, monkey. I don't know if that's something we're going to call judge on. No, it's something that I just... Actually, said. here's a judge here. Judge? Oh. Sorry, can you take a judge call from stream? Um, an opponent used a simian spear guide and put it into their graveyard on their feature match. Okay. Uh, just say go fix it. Just yeah. Whatever the proper fix is, is, I'm just informing you we noticed. <laughs> Thank you, Judge. Shout out to our lovely Judge team as well. They, you know. Yeah, that, that person really just wanted to eat. Uh, Ryan Koval wooded foothills into a tropical island. I love the pro gamer slant. Uh, tilting everything, aiming it at their opponents like it's a gun. My my um, concern with seeing that at an angle is I find that to be angle shooting. Okay, that was rough. Uh, ESG land into a Green Sun's Zenith. Um, X equals one. For a birds, birds of paradise. Okay. <laughs> Throwing the active player. And I think that's a little bit of gamesmanship from Brian. Um, maybe a little frustrated with his start comparatively, but maybe also just kind of having fun with it. I know. Yeah, it could just be, you know, playing cards around. Yeah, I, d- I do think that's funny. Um, but yeah, shout out to our judges. Um, I'm very appreciative. And I know we all are here at the topdeck.gg team. They put in very long hours. These are not easy hours to do. Um, it's a lot of thinking, um, a lot of critical thinking, a lot of decision making. There's a balance between keeping players happy and adhering to the rules. So yes. um, they, they're they doing an incredible job and, and can't thank our judge team enough. Absolutely. Uh, we'll see Mike Sad pay for the fish in their upkeep. Well done. Oh, the Scribbities themselves said, go Lua, go. Lua has a channel, the Scribbities. Oh, right, the Scribble Dibbles. <laughs> I forgot about that. Uh, taking one from the Mana Vault in their draw step, and then what happens? So paying for fish. We have two mana available. We just... Oh? Okay, Josh is moving things. Josh is, in fact, moving things. Yeah, making sense. Deploying the Thrasios. The Thrasios, you, yeah. You're hoping you're going to refill your hand. I think clearly missing the land drop here. Um... You're, I think you're hoping to re-hit it and trying to go off in the next turn or two. Um, tapping the Rograk. What would tap the... Oh, attacking for it to be funny? Okay. Maybe yeah, we're just we're attacking, attacking to... Attacking okay. I like... Uh, there's a little bit of gamesmanship going on right now in this feature match, and I actually kind of love it. I'm here for it. What? Uh, is that a Loyal Apprentice? That looks to me like a Loyal Apprentice by Lua. I can't tell with the K-pop sleeves. <laughs> um, no, nah, might not be a loyal apprentice. Oh, does loyal apprentice have haste? Yes. Oh, the two one with haste. Cool. Yeah, we take those. Two, uh, old, uh, old Timna staple. And if you control your commander, it makes a Thopter also with haste. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, that was a Thrasios Passios pigeon. Enlightened tutor at end step from Josh. 
all of these decks are a little low rolling, and I'm just terrified of Mike at this point. I mean, Mike does have a pretty well developed board, and we enjoy that. Uh, looks like so. Josh with the Enlightened Tutor, you think it's um, I think it's Mana Crypt. Yep, called it. I think I I thought maybe if there was a dark written hand, maybe we were gonna see a Necropotence, but I, I'm a dreamer in that kind of capacity. People say I'm a dreamer. Oh boy. Okay. Uh, is that a a waste? No. It Pigeon. Can't be. Josh is on Toulouse. Toulouse, clever conductor, but like trains, not music. Por qué no this? Fair. What's this guy's name? Which guy? Tolu. Tolu? Ooh, um, Tolula. Tolula. <laughs> um, okay, so we have the crypt. I think that is a tundra, knowing Josh's proxies. Yeah, that sounds correct. Um, deploying the talisman of progress. Yeah, progressing their board state. While feeding the fish. Yeah. Well, you don't respect Mike Sad, right? Like, it's just a complete lack of respect for the winner of Punt City One. <laughs> Why you're sitting next to the winner of Punt City Two? Yeah. <laughs> well, there is a succession that must be had. Uh, Rhystic Study is quite good. I hear that is a good Magic card coming from Josh here. Uh, we're on three cards for Josh, so we have a chance to refill. Uh, clearly, the table feels comfortable with feeding the card draw engines. Yeah, no respect for the, the Thrasios. And Zero. if I'm Mike, I am salivating right now. Yeah, I mean, you've drawn a fair amount of cards in this turn cycle. I'm, I'm very happy to see that if I'm, I'm Mike. I'm sure the deck is like all action, so. That's been, I, I would say, easily um, eight cards for two mana so far? I, I think so. I think about at, like seven or eight. I'll pay half a mana per card. That seems fine. Here's a, with Brian Koval going into his turn and untapping. You have to assume there's a land drop into cannon into something for two mana. And looking at every other board state, that's actually like pretty awful. Uh it's all I mean, Brian was kind of set to to be in a rough position from the beginning, right? Having been Is that a cradle? It is a cradle. For land number two. Being in seat four following a Turn one Remora and to a turn yeah. two Rhystic by another opponent. There's nothing that you can do to get ahead. It's just unfortunate. Um, I think Brian's in a position where he's hoping Mike Sad can either be stopped or just doesn't have it yet. Right. Some sort of stack speeds gets deployed by Lua. I mean, it's it's a huge. He's 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 really needing the help of his opponents to try to get out of this unscathed. Yeah. I mean, we we certainly tried to deploy a stack speeds, but it didn't work out. It happens. Yeah, that starting hand by Mike with the protection of the offer is yeah. absolutely bonkers. Offer is a terrible card, but um, it you was good here. Can't refuse it. Is Above the thing. rate. You can't refuse it. That's true. You couldn't ever refuse it. Hello, police? Hello? <laughs> All right, we are untapping. I, I love the throwing of the active player token. We have dumped our Mystic Remora away. And... Could be poised for quite a turn. So we have three known mana available to us now with the ability to hit a land drop, have yeah. the Thrasios Passios game plan going. Could do that, or we did draw like eight cards. So we could just win the game. Winning the game would be cool here, actually. I would suggest that if you can, just do that. <laughs> Um, and I'm not familiar with the, the build Mike said has. Is this a polymorph type build? Or I, what are we cooking with here? I don't know. I do not know. I'd be uh, curious to know. We haven't seen it yet. We heard it was spicy. <laughs> That's all we heard. I didn't. I do love spicy fish. You like. What? I was thinking about food. Like wasabi on sushi, but then I oh, said it. Out, okay. I said it out loud, and then I regretted it. No, it's, that's good. That's that's good, but that's what we call chat inside head voice. A little inside baseball. Uh, 
Is we that have an Eldritch Evolution that is backing an... Rograk? We're getting a Dockside Extortionist? That, uh, what's Dockside count? Uh, Enough. It's it's pretty large. Enough to party. Moment. Yeah. Presuming Lua cracks their treasures, we are ending up with a minimum of four, right? We like to party. Yeah. We have at least four from Josh. We could get two more. Lua is not cracking their treasures, it looks like. No. Cracking your treasures is for cowards. That's what I'm saying. I, uh, yep, a dockside extortionist. Turns out making treasure is good. Weird. I, uh, you know, I'm a big fan of not cracking treasures. We were playing last night some warm up games for today. <laughs> I had uh, six treasures on board. Someone cast a dockside for 12. I did not crack. It's the coward's way out. I won that game. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. You never crack. Oh, wow. Lua cracking her treasures. That's one way to do it. I mean, I, I, you have to assume there's table talk. You have to assume they're conferring. I mean, the difference between um, four mana and six mana in a Thrasios deck, I think, is huge. Four mana with the ability to activate Thrasios and cast a spell, as opposed to just activating Thrasios, is huge. When Mike follows this up with a two mana clone, though, like that's <laughs> that's when it, it really all comes to fruition. Yeah, I mean, that's almost it's a two mana right of flame at this point, right? You're gonna pay two mana to make four. Yeah. Are we? That's it. We pass a turn. Um, wonder if we're switching phases. I think to yeah. Clear I think the treasure. Trying to determine what colors of mana were made. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Um, and if they care about that, it must be relevant, right? Probably. <laughs> yeah, I would agree. Who Excuse TF cares? I believe Mike is in a winning position right now. Yeah, Mike has a very good board state. Only going to get better, especially with Winota severely slowed down by the Null Rod not staying in play. Yes, yeah, that that offer was absolutely clutch. And if I'm Lou, I understand why I kept that hand. It just absolutely hurts. Oh, it's the Mind Goblin. <laughs> we I... saw Mike fan out his sticker sheets earlier, and here we are. We're sticking. Hey, everyone. Stickers have entered the game. Sticker sheets. <laughs> You know, that thing. I'm glad you like these tokens. Those treasure tokens are from Gold Sabretooth, and every other token that's being used is from our stream sponsor and event sponsor, All Trades Media. The very good ad read. Thank you. I am looking at the teleprompter. I'm glad we spent $10,000 on this. It was worth every cent. It's bulletproof, which is convenient. <laughs> I got ops, so. Yeah, people are gunning for you. Yeah. <laughs> So we are casting the Mind Goblin. Yeah, Ashani is trying to tell everyone to tell me how old I look. So that's nice. I love that. <laughs> yeah, there we go. There we go, boss. Got him. Oh, wow. We got guacamole. Wow. Oh, yeah. G-U-W for guacamole. That makes sense. Josh, um, this is one thing I love about Josh is when he's bored, the games he plays. <laughs> we got a lot of red mana from casting the Mind Goblin. We got the full enchilada. Yeah. Well, we we did get it with guacamole, so oh, guacamole sounds good right now. No, I'm just like very food motivated. But you know, I have a dog like that. Yeah. Yeah, he. We'll do anything for a treat. Well, they say I got that dog in me, so. Yuck. I... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> so we are. We sky turtles being Psych channeled to, yeah. to bounce our own dock side. Yeah. And we're going to filter mana. Makes sense. It seems very reasonable. Um, yeah, you don't need to play with stickers. Stickers, I think, were much better implemented on MTGO, where I don't have to have stickers. Have stickers at all? <laughs> uh, stickers have been interesting because we, we have seen in previous events stickers you, being used as a tactic to just tilt your opponents. You say, "Hey, would everyone like to take out their sticker sheets?" Yeah, there's actually positive EV. This is actually the sad part. There's positive EV to be gained by having a sticker sheet without having any stickers. Um, in the off chance you have a, a clone effect or a Praetor's Grasp in your deck and you do not have a sticker sheet, you are technically losing out on, you know, that you can't mind a 1% yeah. EV value. So if yeah. everyone at home is who's min-maxing, 
Bring your attraction decks. Bring your, bring your sticker, sticker sheets. sheets if you want maximum positive EV. That 1.5% didn't help me because, you know, 0 to 1.5 doesn't really do much for win rates, but it might help you. Can I reveal a contraption deck at the beginning of the game if we're not playing in that unset? No, because contraptions are not legal, I don't think. Is there anything that makes a contraption that is not silver border legal or acorn? I don't think so. I don't think there is. Uh, we have a judge in there who's yeah, looking. Who's up. Excellent. <laughs> and these are the hot takes that we are bringing okay. to stream. Fell ski tay. That's pretty good. That's one of the things where you roll over in bed and you're pissed off that you have no. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, we have deployed a spell skite. That's that's <laughs> that's going to protect quite literally everything. Oh, and we are deploying the seedborn Lord. muse. Um, that with Thrasios is pretty backbreaking for Mike's opponents. That's quite a turn, Mr. Mike said. Is this turn two? Uh, turn three. Three. Yeah, this is a kind of a clinic on Rog Thras being played. And this is no affront to, to Mike's opponents. I think they're doing a phenomenal job. It just shows sort of these Tamir value engine uh, grindy oriented decks are um, really good at doing the things they do. Yeah. I mean, I, I, you you see it. You, we've seen it with like... Uh, we've seen with we've seen it with Malcolm Timno. We've seen it with Animar in the past. You you can play all these value. You put all these value engines into these decks, or Malcolm Tana, sorry. Uh, and then also in Rog Thras and and Thras Dargo, we can we can add all these value engines to our deck and and crush just hold people under the weight of our Seedborn Muse. Yeah, I mean. And it, uh... It, we're, everyone's saying we're in mid range hell. We're in mid range hell. No. Um, I think these decks though are the ones feasting right now. Yeah. It's not the turbo decks. It's these grindy value centric sort of decks. And we have a smile from our judge that's in the room right now. Are we about to get terrible news about contraptions? Yes, and okay. Okay. All right. While you do not have any cards, the themselves will assemble contraptions. Okay. There is a card that references. Steam Flogger Boss. Steam Flogger Boss. Okay. If you would assemble contraptions, you can assemble two of contraptions instead. Uh, the implication being, maybe at some point in the future. So if we register... So can I do it now? If I register Steam Flogger Boss in a deck, can I bring a contraption deck? I, we need to and whatever you say, can I appeal it? Yes or no? Okay. <laughs> so Do we have an L five of it. So we are we are in a weird situation right now. There is one um, legal card in the form of Steam Flogger Boss that does reference contraptions. Um, we... So we are waiting on the resolution on if oh, is we can a have a gamble a contraption. Oh, a red and tomb. Okay. okay. All right. well, contraptions well. themselves are not commander legal. You cannot min max by having an attraction deck, a contraption deck, and a and a sticker sheet. and a sticker yeah. sheet. Sorry, everyone. Uh, yeah, we are going to appeal it uh, to our judge who's on lunch break, hanging out with us right now. I think that's very reasonable. So we had. Uh, <laughs> we're not. We're not. Ju I'm just kidding. <laughs> the red and tomb. Yeah, red and tomb. Uh, Lua going for the jeweled lotus to deploy to the Winota. Winota that would trigger then the uh, thing that makes the Thopter. Oh, God, the Thrasios activation revealing a cannon for Mike. No way to flash it in. I'm saying this through clenched teeth. Yeah, a land and a cannon. We we had enough for two Thrasios activations. And it looks like we're going to have enough for more. <laughs> yeah. Um, and these. This, these fetch lands only get better with the Seedborn Muse yep. and the, um, the Thrasios. Yeah, I think Matt Mike is hacking. I think um, his deck is hacked. I think that there is a chance that, that Mike is Thrasios maxing right now. Wait, hold on. Hold on. Mike's online name is Sap Robot. Do you think he got hacked? Dun, dun, dun. Sad Robot? Sad Robot? He seemed pretty happy, so I don't even know if it's actually Mike. So, <laughs> why is that the one that got me? I don't know. Uh, Josh, I've been playing some games against Josh when Josh has Sorry been playing to lose, and um, he has said that he built this deck to be predatory upon Rogsai and other decks that try to play at that speed. 
I, I don't think that he's run into it very much today. No, no, I'm actually pretty surprised. I um, we've seen a lot of Yuriko this tournament. We've seen a lot of decks where I'm like, huh, that makes sense. But it's it's really not yeah. the um, it's not the decks that I thought were going to be played. There's a lot of hype online. Everyone's playing their turbo stuff. The cables playing a lot of stuff, um, and and just people aren't playing those decks. Or the decks that are successful at this tournament aren't the ones that are these turbo builds. It's the ones that are built for the long game. Um. But yeah, I, I think resiliency is taking uh, precedent in deck building and card selection. Um, and, you know, these Swiss Army Knife type games or these Swiss Army Knife type decks are the ones that are, are really finding long term success, at least in this tournament. Too much serotonin. Uh, I noticed that we are deploying, we're deploying Lotho. And I think I've, I've generally heard, Lauren, and tell me if I'm wrong here. That uh, having both a mana production engine and a card draw engine in play is quite beneficial. Yeah, uh, making treasure and drawing cards seems decent. Um, if Mike can do that, um, what's half of 18 times, he can actually kill Josh. No, that's not happened 36 times. So Mike yeah, needs to cast 72 spells over the course of 36 spells. turns, and yeah. he can actually kill Josh just with Lotho, assuming no other wow. game actions occur. Now, honestly, it's these kinds of insightful comments about the total value of the situation that really get me um yeah i mean that's why that's why we're brought on to do casting yeah, it, it's absolutely. for me to make you know introspective uh analysis such as lotho you know dealing damage not a lot of people notice that part of the card and you know i'm just happy to be here we also have ledger shredder which is another card advantage engine and deploying dranis magistrate and lua <laughs> What did I say? I said card select. I said oh. card advantage engine, and two people got so excited to tell me I was an idiot. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, I'm going to throw in more buzzwords such as texture and composition. Okay, could you, yeah, board texture. Board texture and card composition. Um, you want to go play poker at the casino <laughs> later. Something I do, and, and I love Josh, and Josh and I have a podcast together. We play a lot together. Um, I disagree with the decision to deploy this Draneth Magistrate. The only person you're really affecting is Lua. Is Lua. Um, and I think you need Lua in this game. A, a rog costs two mana. You're stopping a rog being cast and sacked, which could be relevant, but there's a, a, a mind goblin anyway that can be sacked. I don't like this Draneth. And I, I don't know if it was a desperation play to try to trigger the Ledger Shredder or the Lotho, but um, I'm not a fan of this play. I think you need Lua in this game. I think the damage is not coming at you if you're Josh. I think it's going to be coming at Mike Sod. Um, I don't like it. I, I don't know. I think it's so... In in the interest of being advocatus diaboli here, um, I, I think it's fine. Like, it's not... It's not terrible. Any game that Winota is not a factor in is an enjoyable game of CEDH for me. Um, I... I want to go fast. My my whole thing, though, is this is very clearly a game of Arch Enemy. <clears throat> yes, very much so. And that's a Phyrexian Metamorph. So we're going to double our Dockside uh, going into our turn. That's okay. It's a little yucky for everybody involved, if I'm honest. I don't like... I'm not a huge fan of that, but... Um, I think this is very clearly an Arch Enemy game, and now yeah. you've made it a... 2v1 with Lua watching. Well, which one Which one of them is playing Gideon? I'm giving it my all for Gideon. Um, thank you. <laughs> thank you for setting me up for I, that. I wanted to. You mentioned it yesterday. Oh! We're, oh. We're doing the Okay. Thing. Okay. Now, this really changes the tide of the game. The this, texture and composition. The board texture has changed entirely. Yeah. Um, the tempo of that play. Look, <laughs> up, look at the synergy and tempo of this play. <laughs> Mamma Mia, we're in the pizzeria. Synergizing. <laughs> um, this will be our last cast. We were just we let were go. Just fired. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you for everyone for being here. Um, so that, and notably too, and I'm sure this is a given. Phyrexian Metamorph does not get interrupted by Spell Skype. Phyrexian Metamorph is going to enter... Oh, if we're viewing a force as well. Slip force um, off of, off of Thras. Um, Spell Skype cannot redirect anything. 
um, because Phyrexian Metamorph is going to enter as a copy of a uh, creature or artifact in play. Does not target. Spellskite cannot be cheeky here. Mike Sod revealing a Force of Will off of a Thrasios activation. Force of Will says that instead of paying its mana cost, you may exile a blue card from your Lord, hand and Lord. lose one. We're getting lost in the sauce here. <laughs> the sauce has become too thick. Uh... You feel good about that one? Yeah. Okay. Um, let me let me find my way out of the sauce. <laughs> Let's dig our way out of the sauce. But no, I, actually, I'm curious about Force Will. I wanted your opinion on if your mic's had with a Force Will in your hand, you um, put it on the stack? It depends on if I have another blue card in hand. <laughs> that is fair. <laughs> on a, like, a, like, not memeing. Yeah. Um, if, if there's another mana source or if there's like an Elvish Spirit Guide in hand, which I think it might have been used already, um oh no that's an eldritch evolution in exile yeah um i think i hard cast it knowing that i have the seedborn muse okay. oh oh koval is having oh. wow i was not expecting okay. that okay yep i mean that's huh interesting I was not expecting this at all. So Brian had the Fraction Metamorph, could have had to be a Dockside. It is entering as a Seedborn Muse. I wonder if this is going to be a clone effect coming up now. Um, I see Brian tapping his mana. Okay. Trophy Mage. Trophy Mage. All right. I mean, that's good development here. Uh, Seedborn Muse. Interesting. The Dockside count is... Pretty high. I feel like that would have been two cannon activations. I count Dockside as one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight. And that is uh, the, the mana that you make sixteen mana. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can have two cannon activations cannon with activation a treasure left over. Left over, yeah. Uh, and we chose a seedborn. Well, I mean, uh, the Gaia's Cradle gives you a cannon activation every turn the way that, the way that this is. That's a very good point. Okay, so I this this is what... Um, what happens if you metamorph my goblin? You have, uh, it wouldn't actually do anything because Brian did not reveal a sticker sheet. Yeah, there's no sticker sheet. <laughs> you would have a 2-2. Two -two. <laughs> Thank you, Drake Sasser. Um, I actually think that this speaks volumes of the quality of player that Brian is. Brian isn't going for the desperation. I need to activate Kinnan now twice and pass. He is thinking three turn cycles ahead and he's playing a long game, which I can really respect. And I know, um, you know, sometimes players can get burnt by doing so, but Brian's here to win and he's here to play the long game. And I actually pretty respect it. I, I respect that a lot. I mean, it cer certainly, certainly could, could come down to being a very heads up play, but I do, I do enjoy uh, yeah, the thought pattern is good. I think kind of viewing things from a different angle. Like my initial instinct would have been Dockside, activate Kinnon twice, but Steedborn in the long run, especially with the knowledge of the uh, the trophy mage the... stuff. Is that an Atali? Yeah, we just revealed an Atali just... off of uh, Mike's Thrasios activation. Um, and Brian will be untapping with um, Mike. So they're in a Thrasios race. Mike has a Kinnon in hand. There is a Kinnon in hand as well as an Atali. As an Atali. We have lots of options. All right. We are spinning the wheels. I'm assuming at upkeep, I'm right? I'm assuming in upkeep, yeah, before draw step. That's my guess. Um, You do have to get around the spell scout, so Holbreaker Horse could be awkward if that's revealed. Yeah. I'm pretty excited to see what can be done. I think a Wandering Archaic is maybe one of your best, better flips right now. Consphinx. A Manglehorn. Manglehorn. So that's pretty much guaranteed to hit the Spell you Sky, right? It, spell Sky, yeah. yeah. Um, but relevant if there's any Dockside loops um, until it goes to Seedborn Stern. You can... Yeah. No, that makes it hard, though, to, to bounce and then replay. That does make it difficult if you're not making treasure while doing that. Um... That's a that's a decent hit. Yeah, Manglehorn, Manglehorn, notably good against the Dockside clones and stuff. So, <laughs> uh, good against Soulbreaker Horror type loops. Yeah, Manglehorns. Um, Mike could punt this game as well by uh, infinitely activating Spellskite with in response okay. to the Manglehorn trigger. That and is just an lose option. Lose the game if you wanted to. Swat. We're not even activating Spellskite. We're just swatting it. Probably hitting the Metamorph. 
Mm, the seedborn metamorph. You th That's true. We have to have so we have to have an even number. Oh, so Manglehorn's targeting spell sky. Mike is deploying a deflecting swat. My assumption is deflecting swat's hitting the seedborn, the seedborn. or it's going to have Manglehorn hit the seedborn. Does Manglehorn say opponents control or destroy target artifact? I I think it is just a short target artifact. Okay. I think. We're going to find out. I'm going to look up the card Manglehorn. I am. You may destroy target artifact. Um, artifacts your opponent's control enter the battlefield yeah. tapped. All right. I am extremely EP, so I could I could have been wrong. but That is okay. Wandering Archaic oh. You says Drake Sasseroni. Thank you, Drake. Okay. Are we fighting over this deflecting swat now is my next question. Looks like so far no. Yeah, it looks like there's a slight pause. I'm curious what the table talk is. We have politicking in play. Currently watching this and getting timer stalled by Yogg on MTGO. Gonna blame Stillman for this. Yeah, Steve Stillman's actually here. My favorite content creator. Him and I go way back on Standard Arena Brawl. Uh, we did a lot of standard videos back in the day. Um, like, share, subscribe for that. But yeah, Stillman is here. Uh, he signed an ad nauseum for Mikey. Um, and it's a one of one. Mikey's really happy wow. with that. Amazing. With a Sharpie. <clears throat> Looks like SWAT has resolved, but I don't know what we, I don't know what we hit. Anyway. I'm wondering. Wasn't the Seedborn muted? If the, ar nothing, I don't see anything that got blown up. I'm wondering if um, Brian was like, the Manglehorn hasn't resolved yet. Then Mike caught or cast a deflecting swat, yeah, assuming maybe. it resolved. Yeah, I mean, deflecting swat <clears throat> can target a spell, a spell on yeah. The bank. So, what I think happened, yeah, I think that's exactly what I happened. Think they held him to it as well. That's brutal. Silence, okay. A silencio, silencio. It's a may. I bet you choose whether to destroy the target on resolution. It's an enter the battlefield effect. I, what I think may have happened was Manglehorn was cast. Mike saw it, was like, okay, in response, I will cast the deflecting swat. Mike could have even been like, okay, what are you going to target with it? True, that's and the truth, too. Yeah. The swat. Cluster storm on silence. Oh, you were so right. It wasn't cast. Oopsie. Oh, there's still an ETB, though. The swat? Oh, no, the Manglehorn. The Manglehorn was not cast. You're so right. Yeah, just put into play. You're right. Yeah, it's a main ability. So, yeah, the SWAT was wasted. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, we just chose not to blow up anything. Okay. And we are flustering the silence. Okay. So, Mike's going for it. That's that's what that's telling me. Oh, you may. So, even if the target's changed, you can decide to not blow it up. Yeah. That's cool. Okay. Good catch. Great catch. Uh, we're flustering the fluster on the silence. Yeah. Um, Mike does have action. I mean, Mike can clearly fight over this with the amount of cards in hand. I think Mike wants to slam at Tali at the moment. Um, do we have the okay. mana present? All right, Brian. I see you. <laughs> X3. That's very funny. Um, okay, so we have silence, fluster, fluster. Um, assuming Josh did not punt and is not flustering his own silence. Who knows, though? Josh is a wild card. Um, and we have one, two, three, four mana after that from Mike. So we need a little bit more action if we're wanting to get a tally out there. My assumption is there's a clone yeah. or something in hand. And now, politicking is on the stack. Very interesting. Uh, yeah, people's death, but here we are. Uh, yeah, I've heard that's one of the main rog side tenants is yap equals death. But um, there's something to be said that the decks that value politicking are the ones that are being successful. <laughs> and these Turbo Nas decks, the just win mentality... Granted, we are all here to compete and win. Well, we're not because we're casting, but everyone else is. The decks, though, that you get to really, really capitalize on this politics game are the ones that we're seeing in the top pods. Certainly. Certainly, certainly, certainly. I mean, we see, we see Kinnon 
also, yeah, Kim intends to thrive off of the politics and the sleight of hand and that kind of thing. And Mike has metamorph revealed on Thras. Yeah. Oh, Mike has Phyrexian metamorph was revealed too. So metamorph becomes a dock side, becomes a a tolly. Yeah. Counts one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six. We're probably going to see Kinnon. There's a Manglehorn in play, so it doesn't become a dock side. It becomes something else. But Dang. What pod is this? This is pod number 29. Round number four. Pod number 29. Okay. It looks 26, like 2024. we are untapping. I didn't think we were getting out of that turn. Josh pointing to his Lotho. Presumably missed trigger. Could be. Who's winning? Yes. Good question. Um, I, I don't know if there's a... I think we're all winning, Charles Powell. I think us getting to spend this time online together um, that you know, really out? signals you know, winning through the gathering and friendship. That's why we're all here is for the yeah, gathering. I agree. I agree. Um, but I think it's Brian. <laughs> so we have Dockside Extortionist on the stack. We do have a dockside. Count is pretty good for Lua. Um, what does Lua have, though, that they can capitalize on this as effectively as possible? The Draneth sucks for Lua right now. Can we overload um, that exile wipe? Uh, Winds, Winds of, of Abandon. Abandon. Oh, that would be hot right now, actually. We oh. there is a Dranath Magistrate. You may not cast Winota. Yeah. Unfortunate. This that's like we need to Oh, they come into play. Yeah. Okay. So there is a multitude of uh of uh issues there. Um Oh command beacon puts Winota in the hand. Okay, there we that go. Is a command beacon they in still the haven't fixed the come and tap thing. Yep. Wait. They still haven't done that. Yep. Oh, there we go. Okay. We got it. We have a judge right. in the room with us um, who's vicariously living through the stream. It's actually very fun to watch their reaction to what's going on. <laughs> we have Renota in hand and a bunch of mm. tapped Tesoros. Uh, Tesoro? That's Spanish for treasure. Is it? Yeah. Oh, Lo Ciento. That's Spanish for the Ciento. The Ciento. Uh, we have a lightning bolt. What's lightning bolt hitting right now? Oh, the cannon. The cannon. Okay. Um, that's a big middle finger to uh to Lua. Yeah, I have this bolt that's not hitting Draneth or Manglehorn. The two cards making your life really hard right now. Brutal. San Pellegrino is very good. We should reveal a snap off of uh, a threat <clears throat> activation. All right. I like that. I uh, I take it back. I think Mike might be winning this game. Mike could probably pull this one out. Um. Yeah, I think he can pull this one out. Yeah, I think Mike could really finish here. I agree. I think uh, he has a big game, and he's really, you know, not afraid to show it off. Yeah, I think Mike really has the thrust of the situation right now. Anyway, okay, we are, looks like we are on, we are, pa are we passing turn? I have to assume we are, right? <laughs> That's where these, uh, these round timers, though, really can be working against you especially with all these thrasios activations it's a laborious task to to resolve these effects absolutely it could take time it could take experience the spell sky has gone what happened um what is that that got is that i'm assuming that's something that got revealed on to the right of the birds of paradise i did not recognize that card I... oh it's the thorn it's the thorn mammoth um, hey, Uriah, thank you so much for being... Oh, he said, screw you, buddy. Well, Uriah, I'm here and you're not, so let me know when you actually show up to an event. That's the Thorn Mammoth, isn't it? What does Thorn Mammoth do? It's like an 8-8 that blows up an artifact. 
No, it uh, fights. Fights. It's a fight. Yeah, it's a fight creature. So it fought a spell skite. It fought the spell skite. Okay. It probably tried to fight. Something probably else. tried to fight Anything. something else. This seedborn, and then it got skited. Nice. Yeah, I guess you have to go for it, right? You have to try see if he's gonna yeah, maybe whenever, not activate. It's whenever creature comes into play under your control. Or, or nice. Or another. Nice. That's cool. What set is that from? M11? That's sick. Okay. Super sick. Thorn, Mammoth. <clears throat> Thorn, Mammoth. It's no armored scrap gorger, but it'll do. It's no Thorn Elemental. We have... Okay. Have knowledge exploitation. I have to say, this is bringing such a smile to my face. Knowledge Exploitation is like a build-around card for Josh for this deck. He Lotho loves that rogue. card. And Lotho is a rogue. Josh loves this card. It has Prowl. I'm loving seeing this, especially on camera. I don't know if Josh thinks this is going to resolve or not. Knowing Josh, he might have just done this for the camera. That's what He asked Lewis specifically not to block. <laughs> Yeah, I I love seeing this. I'm curious, is he hitting Lua with it? I don't actually know. Uh, Mike, he's hitting Mike. Oh my god, it's resolved. Wow. Oh my gravy. And now he can search Mike's deck for an instant or sorcery? Yep. And cast it without paying its mana cost? I think it's without mana cost, yeah. Yeah. It's wow. We prowled. We're prowling. How did he get away with not getting blocked? I... He asked Lua not to block. Oh, he's hitting Lua? Yeah, he swung at Lua. Oh, and then what, I thought you had to do it from the opponent that you hit. I think it's just if you've dealt damage with a rogue. Oh, wow. It just reduces the cost. Got it, got it, got it, got it. Okay. Knowledge, uh, knowledge exploitation. exploitation. CEDH staple. <laughs> a lot of people are testing that card and... Um, cast it as part of the rogue. Bribery? Gotcha. Um, yeah, I think Bribery's starting to see an uptick, which I like a lot. I actually was considering playing it in Mimeo Madness this evening. Nice. I did not, though. Mm. A Neoform. Okay. Um, okay. Neoform. We are Neoforming Ledger Shredder. That'll cast and trigger, right? Yeah, so... We have the Ledger Shredder trigger and the Lotho trigger. They're both go on the stack because Neoform is the second spell cast this turn. What three drop is relevant in Esper that we are concerned about? I Ranger Captain of you. That's a good card, I've heard. And also uh, we'll grab you an Esper Sentinel. Yeah, that might be quite a swing to get a Esper Sentinel and a Ranger Captain. Okay. Uh, Revealing a Mox Amber. So not what Mike's wanting to see right now, I don't think. Yeah, more mana is not what Mike needs right now. It's any action at all is what Mike needs right now. All right, we're, we're going in blind. We bottomed that card, and we are revealing a Misty Rainforest. This can be the problem with Thrasio-centric decks. You just keep revealing mana, and then you, you know, you get more Thrasios activations, but without action, don't have anything to do. Can't close the game fast enough. Um. Okay, we are. In the politicking phase, I presume. Yes, I think we're in the is neoform resolving phase of the game. I I I I I am hard pressed to There's think. The force. Yeah, yeah, yeah. has to come out. Your metamorph's not great right now through yeah. the stacks pieces. Um, neoform just too strong. And now we have the Ledger Shredder and Lotho triggers to resolve. Lotho shouldn't. Yeah, I don't think Lotho triggers because it is being sacked. But it's its second spell when you cast it. It's it as an additional cost, so I don't, I don't, maybe it doesn't. It's not on the field, so it doesn't see the spell, right? That seems correct. All right. We will get the Ledger Shredder trigger, however. Josh valuing card selection, not advantage, card selection uh, over mana, which I think at this point in the game is the correct call. Certainly, given the board's current texture. 
and composition. The texture composition. Did this man forget about Ristic? Probably. That's so... I will say, like, to the credit of these players, triggers can and do get missed during the course of an afternoon of playing. And it's, you know, much easier. We have the much cushier job of being able to sit back in a room, in a comfy chair, hanging out with our friends, casting this game. These With no AC. These players are in the thick of it. They are playing for their lives to stay alive in this tournament. They're playing for legitimate high stakes money. They're playing for the championship series points for the invitational. There's a lot at stake and sometimes you can get tunnel vision. You can miss triggers. Um, things happen and that's okay. Um, you live and learn again. It's much easier from this side of things to see where mistakes happen. Yeah. I mean, hindsight, hindsight is 2020, right? Just like my glasses. Your glasses were only 2020. Yeah. Oh, that's very inexpensive. <laughs> oh no, I meant my prescription. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, yeah. Any glasses users in the chat? <laughs> any spectacle enjoyers <laughs> in the chat? This is quite the spectacle, by the way. Nice. Thank you. Um, spectacle is not a great ability, though. We are using our mana. Um, have they? Koval has two cards plus Basalt. Yes, that's correct, Jacob. Yes. That is correct. So Brian's not out of this game, and I actually no. like how Brian is posturing himself at the table. Of He's just a patient player. He's going to pass everything to Mike. He has no reason to fight over things. Yeah. Uh, we'll, if we see a Kinnon recast, we get another Thorn Mammoth trigger. That's true. Oh, that's fun. That is we true. We can't cast Kinder. There's a Dryad Magistrate. Unfortunate. Unfortunate. If we get another creature cast, we get a Thorn Mammoth trigger. Is that yeah. Anomo? Yeah. Yeah. I think I think you need the other creature. You hit the Dranith. Yeah. And then you go for the win here, right? This is your yeah. window. I, okay. We swing <laughs> the Thorn Mammoth at Josh. Reading Thorn Mammoth. Reading the Thorn Mammoth explains the Thorn Mammoth. <laughs> um, so we're swinging in. Uh, Josh is probably just taking this, right? RTFTM. Yeah, Josh is probably taking this. All right. We are getting hit. Making five mana with Gaia's Cradle. Minamo. What cost seven? A Nether Hall. That Nether will Hall. fight. Fight, fight, fight. That sure does fight. So we have enough to be killing. Okay, we're not going for it this turn. We're playing the Neza Hall, and we are. Um, honestly, what if you, do you kill the Thrasios? It's locked out with the Drana, and then you force Mike into position where he has to get yeah. rid of the Drana set yeah. up for your next turn. I think that's a good play. Sorry, I'm watching stream with my monocle. Yeah, shout out to any monocle enjoyers in the chat. Um, if you use a monocle and a pocket watch, um, I don't think you play magic. You're a 1920s cartoon villain. Or Mr. Monopoly. <laughs> Actually, uh, Snidely Whiplash is a known tournament grinder. What? Snidely... Snidely Whiplash is a Hanna-Barbera cartoon villain who wears a monocle. And oh, Hanna-Barbera. I'm familiar. Just dated. I uh my first um my first uh exposure to Hanna Barbera was through uh Space Ghost. Coast to coast? Or? Coast to coast. Okay. Yep. I'm beginning to think I am as old as everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Mike does have snap, yep, that is true. Yep, Mike has a snap. Oh snap. Oh snap. Um but what did we fight, did it, we? If you are in chat and you like mis you look like Mr. Monopoly, DM me. <laughs> nice, 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 nice. Scoot's exposing the fact he's old right now. It's true. I uh I you know, Scott is driving right now and he, he's very gracious enough to drive. Um I did get in his car and see his social security check, so that was, you know, a little embarrassing for him. Yeah. That is true. Also, my uh, tin full of Werther's caramel. So I keep those. <laughs> okay, hold on. Those are I great. I keep those ready for the for for my friends. 
I keep that saying on me. Yeah, that's correct. That's correct. I do like the fact that when I first saw you, didn't hug me. Go, did you want candy? Yeah. Well, I mean, if there's anything I'm known for, it's giving candy to strangers. <laughs> Um, anyway, we are back to Mike Sod's turn. Yeah, we are. What? Mike Sod revealed a invasion of Ikoria. Oh, Nezahal is fighting the Thrasios. Nezahal has fought the Thrasios. Didn't use the snap to save it. Didn't. Interesante. That's Spanish for interesting, Asante. Wait, it is? Yes, I've checked. I've read the oh, dictionary. Okay. The worst story I've ever read. The cognitive load from Josh's board is insane. Uh, yeah, that's how yeah. Josh plays magic. <laughs> a lot of triggers, a lot of things to manage. That's just what Josh does. My grandpa always had those caramels. Is your grandfather Scott? As far as I know, I am not a grandfather. Mr. Monopoly does not wear a monocle. I'm thinking Mr. Peanut. If you look like Mr. Peanut, DM me. Hey, if you're in chat and you look like Mr. Peanut... Go see a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> Something is wrong. Then DM Lauren. Yeah. <laughs> see a doctor and then see me. We need to talk. <laughs> yeah. Hey, talk. I do love peanut butter, though. That's such a good snack. Any peanut butter enjoyers okay, in the chat? Type right. PB in chat if you like peanut butter. Um, huh. The The... The, the, the not using the snap on the Thrasios to save it from the Nezahal is interesting. I'm wondering if we are snapping, uh, <laughs> if we're snapping the dock sign. Yeah, we could do that. Ah, oh, snap. Ah, oh, snap. Um, Mox Amber, which is, uh, Mox Amber is a strange one. It's entering tapped. It's feeding Ristic. It's going to feed Ledger Shredder potentially, and it enters tapped and can't tap for mana. Do you think Mike Sad knows that it enters tap? I don't know. Should we? At the moment, no one has mentioned that it enters tap. Uh, hold on, Judge. And we Mox Amber. There's a Mox Amber that was played. Are you guys on lunch? Never mind. I'll get a judge. Did we cast a cannon from. We did. Um. Well, we had the cannon in hand. Yeah, Alex. Could you call Judge? Okay, okay there we go. They fixed it. When are they tapping it for mana though? They tapped it for mana. Yeah, they did. Yeah. They tapped it for. We need to make sure. And this is also the really nice part about being on this side of things is we can see all the mistakes that happen. And I feel better about myself as a magic player. Every time someone else screws up, I can prop up my own skill. <laughs> Um, yeah, well, there's the whole pipeline. Actually, I'm curious where the pipeline is. We have a few judges in the room who I think will appreciate this. I think when you become washed at playing, either you become washed or very... No, no, actually, here's the difference. When you're washed in you at Magic and you're terrible at tournaments, you get into content. When you're really good and you hit a wall, you become a judge. That sounds fair. I think that's just, like, the correct pipeline. Yeah, that sounds fair. I don't know many judges who are bad at Magic. And if you're not good at Magic, but also not a great judge, you... In no, never mind. You play CDH. Yep. Um, we are having a judge call on this, right? Yeah. Okay. So there is a judge call um, on the... We are figuring out what's going on right now. Scott is the strongest CDH player in the... That's why they keep him in the booth. Yeah, we actually physically lock him in here. Yeah, actually, it, I'm so... I'm so hot and so tired, but they won't give me a bed or an air conditional. No, you get... Um, I'm I'm blowing air at Scott to help cool him yeah, down. Yeah, that is what is happening. I didn't know if they could hear it, maybe. Because <laughs> you were making an effort to make the whooshing noise while you did it, too. So. Whoosh. 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 You're so baka kawaii. I hate my life. Um, 
So there's a judge call being resolved right now, which is, I think is a great time. Hey, Shani, which is a great time to mention our sponsors, Propaganda MTG, who is here vending, sponsoring our streams. We're so appreciative for Propaganda for being here. We have All Trades Media who donated these token packs. They're here vending as well. They will be. Um, they, they sponsor our streams. All of these tokens are from All Trades Media. Um, they have tokens for almost every token that's generated in CEDH and these mana tokens. I love them personally, uh, uh, both as a player and a caster. Being able to see active players is extremely helpful. Um, and being able to see what mana is floating is just top tier. Um, huge, huge fan. Gold Sabertooth has I'll be right entered back. the casting room. Um, so we are here. We are here. And we are resolving a judge call. We are judge calling. If you hey. have two, you can pay for extra mana and die, right? Yeah. I'm allowed to kill I was going to say, I've taken that option before, so. Um, my favorite, um, removing myself from the game story was that my top six team game at the cookout, I didn't a tense out. And there was an Ajila player, and I said, if you swing at me, I, this is my only out. I was like, if you swing at me, I'm just going to necropotence myself. Mm -hmm. And he goes, no, you won't. I go, okay, enter combat. And he goes, enter combat. And he goes, okay, I'll swing you with Najila. I said, okay, before damage, I'll pay my life total. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, uh, what? And I completely stopped him. I've also done that to Tivit players. I've done that to a Timna player. Oh, love it. I was at one, and they were like, I'm going to hit you and kill Alex, you. Alex, was it me? People have done that to me. And you it's... deserve it. Thank you. If they're at one. True. Headed to my first CDH tournament this weekend. Hey, Unequal, great luck. I hope it's a wonderful experience. Glad you're getting into the format playing. Yeah. Super excited to hear how you do. What deck are you playing? If it's Punt City 3, you're late. <laughs> yeah, you're a week late. We will not see you this weekend. A dress down? A dress down, and I I presume the judge call has been resolved. Aren't we okay with dress down if we're Mike? Uh, not if we're trying to win. I mean, we, we have a million cards, right? We just remove it. Uh, Cast Thrasios, then remove the dress down. Can't he just reach? Yeah, or breach. Or... Well, there's a Draneth in play. Oh, I think well, it won't have abilities. Yeah, 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 I see what you're saying. Playing Sisse. Green, white, Sisse. Nice. I'm kidding. Green, white, Sisse? No, no, just oh. Sisse. I was trying to get a reaction out of Steve or Scott. Uh, my assumption you, you is... You did? Oh, my God. It's, my assumption is five color Sisse. And I woke up for a second. <laughs> I was like, oh. Have you seen that deck, though? It's, like, kind of spicy, the green, white version. I like green, white, Sisse. I really liked it when it had Paradox Engine in it, but it's fine now, too. Oh, the miscast. Um, I do find such rich irony in Josh casting Miscast. Miscast is a podcast with Mike Yallahan and Drake Sasser. Josh, who's my podcast co-host, Say the Miscast, is our rival podcast. Yeah, so absolutely. Um, him casting the Miscast, cringe. Yeah, I mean, you've both been absent for a, a significant amount of time. Who? The Miscast and the Pump Outs. We've had like two new episodes in the last month. Well... I guess that's on me. My bad. <laughs> wow. It's like you don't even listen to my content. I listen to everyone's content, just not when it comes out. <laughs> that's fair, actually. All um, right. So Lua going into their turn with a bajillion untapped treasures and a Winota in hand. That dress down needs to be in the graveyard also, uh, correct? No. Because it was flashing at an end step, I'm assuming. Oh, understood. So it stays. And so Winota doesn't gotcha. have any abilities. Understood. And neither does the uh Oh there we go. It's apprentice. sacrificed. Okay, never mind. That was wrong. Yeah, I was gonna say I thought it was in main phase. It, what is that? Is that a Boromir? Mm-hmm. Boromir, Warden of the Tower, has I... entered the field of battle. Yeah, Brian Koval is Bosch and Roll of the Epic Storm podcast. No. <laughs> eternal glory, I think. Yeah, it is eternal glory. <laughs> yeah. Every time I see Brian, I go and we're friends, I go. Hey, Bryant, or I'll say, hey, Phil. I think it's funny. I love it. Does he find it funny? I don't know. Who knows? I don't know what makes Brian laugh. I've never seen the man laugh. So Lua is attacking. With a Dockside Extortionist. Oh, I think 
they are making their Thopter token. So we are going to... Yeah, there was two spells cast with the Shredder. A little Thoppy lad. Um, we are going to have two Winota triggers. Yeah. Seeing 12 cards is pretty good. Asper Sentinel. Oh, it's a human. Yeah, it's a human. <laughs> so weird. It's because it's all covered in metal and stuff. Yeah. 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 Esper's a weird place. It's that Ethereum, baby. Any Ethereum enjoyers in the Any chat? Ethereum enjoyers. Um, Bryant Thraben, Thraben, Thraben Koval. Anyone got huge holdings in ETH? Diamond hands? I just have big swords instead of hands. Less excited. Any Costco Glizzy enjoyers? No, I hate hot dogs. Never been to a Costco in I, my entire life. I hate hot dogs. We don't have them. We don't have Costco in the frozen north. Really? Yeah. I uh, I would go to Costco, but I live alone, so it's like, what am I? I'm gonna get bulk yaki soba and eat it for a week and just. Wait a second. That sounds like a great idea. Hold on. You came here for grocery shopping tips. We got you covered, Lauren and Scott. What is up, everybody? Costco has good cheap meat. I know that much. Scott loves his cheap meat. We I are passing the turn meat. to Josh. I know that. Um, and we are having a mana crypt trigger. Oh, I love shmeat. I hate the hot dog man. Uriah, come say it to my face. Oh, wait. You didn't sell your dark ritual to Coward. get here, brother. Nerd. Brother. brother. <laughs> All you do is get concussed and lie to judges. What? Where's the lie? <laughs> no, there was no lie in that statement. Wait, he also is uh, in network. Oh, oh yeah, it is a network. Think of the tub of peanut butter you could buy, Lauren. Oh. Lauren is the Brian variant. <laughs> we are casting a cyclonic group, but it looks like a baby roof. Single target onto something. Yeah, floating in colorless mana. I. What am I looking at here? What do I think it could be? Uh, Manglehorn? Modulehorn? Mungalhorn. Mungalhorn. Give me a break, lol. MTG hot dog. Do you enjoy Costco hot dogs? I'm about to stag one and proceed to enjoy the stream. I'm fine. I do like a good Costco hot dog. It is um, a cost effective, delicious <gasps> yeah. option. It, we we have a. Horn. Yeah, hitting the Mangalhorn, casting the flesh duplicate, uh, entering as a copy of Schmockstide Extortionist. Traditionally, we would call that a wombo combo. True. Um, but yes, I do. I had a weird period of time where I didn't eat meat for like three years, and then I tried eating a hot dog when I started eating meat, and I was like, wait, this kind of sucks, but yeah. now I like them now. Yeah, I had a friend who was a uh, Buddhist, a, a, a practicing Buddhist, and was uh, vegan, mm -hmm. and said that he would um, eat hot dogs because they did not count as meat. That's fair. Yeah. That's completely fair. His name was Thomas. He was a very bald man. I'm going to step away for a brief second. Is that okay? Take your time. I'll be right back. So what we're seeing unfolding now is Josh making a lot of treasures off of a flesh duplicate, which is what I my nickname in high school, flesh du flesh duplicate. Anyway, uh, looks like we're gonna make what it, we we've revealed something off of a Kinnan activation from Mike's on. I cannot. Tell what it is. I yeah, I cannot parse what that card is. I my brain no worky. It's gold, and it's from. Oh, what set is Pliz, that? Pliz, Pliz to help. It's a gold card, and it has the gold badge, so it's from one of the universe beyond sets. I oh, just don't know what the card is. It's an UB card, huh? That. It's like they keep printing art treatments on cards that don't look like magic cards or something. Anyway. Very carefully. Uh, we're activating Kinnon a second time. I still don't know what that first is card is. We're revealing a Simeon Spirit Guide. Surely we could have scribed that to the bottom. Thank you. Hi, Lauren. Welcome back. Thank you so much. I we are activating Thrasios in response to a flesh duplicate on the back. Which card are we missing? The 
That is a Birds of Paradise. Birds of Paradise, Alex. Birds of Paradise. Yep, that is from the Lord of the Rings, Birds of Paradise. And I know that because I've had this same issue <laughs> seeing that card. Yeah, I could I couldn't tell what it was. Um, it's really nice art though. I'm sad it doesn't come in foil. Isn't isn't that foil? Wait, is that not foil? No. It's just really nice art. Oh. oh geez. Don't like it. Um, so we have another flesh duplicate, it seems I missed. Yes, Josh, flesh duplicate. Looks like we're probably gonna make a oh, oh, Mike flipped the flesh duplicate into play yeah. too, off of the off of the cannon activation. Crazy. Wow. Wow. Make a Winota. A win nota? A win win mora. Loser. Ursa. Is that Costco? Oh, I love Costco rotisserie chicken. Um, I love Costco rotisserie chicken. Who doesn't? Um, I've never had one. I've never been to Costco. Is this a CDH broadcast or some slapstick on a routine? I was homeschooled. Wait, who who asked that question? Stephen Lamar. You don't have to watch if you don't want to. <laughs> um, the gold card was flipped on Lua's turn. What gold card? Uh, it was the bird. Oh, the birds gotcha, of paradise. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. It just looks. I really like golden. that art. I really wish it came in foil. That's not a foil. Mm -mm. It just looks weird. I know. I keep saying it. I keep looking at it and I keep going. <laughs> I wish, like, I'd TCG player right now and buy it. Like, yeah. <clears throat> um, what did Mike's flush duplicate enter as? Because I, I don't see I treasure. Think, I think dock side because we spent treasures to flip again. I think. Mm. Gotcha. Yeah, then you got us Indian spirit got off the next flip. Oh, nice. Yeah. Beautiful. Exactly what we wanted. He has monkey. Monkey. Uh, okay, and now we have five green mana being made. I like that. Are we in the win the game phase? Oh, wait, we've decided to not make five green mana. Drana's still in play, so that gamble did not work out. Five. Mike's with the dockside flip can on a bunch of mage Josh dockside now he's yogging yeah. and willing. Okay, got it, got it. Yoggers. So Brian's trying to stop the yog will. Yes. With hard, a cast hard cast my MBT. And some green floating. Yep. You guys are just hard cast MBT. That's true. Lewis sleeves, yeah. I like Lewis sleeves. It makes it very hard to see the board. <laughs> That's a natural camouflage against stream games. A swan song coming down on mind break trap. Love it. Um, and he he does have to fight through this Neza Hall as well. It's a, a non-zero yeah. amount of cards to fight through. Certainly not going to be easy. And um, through a Yogg loop, presumably um, Brian will draw more cards and potential ways to stop the loop or whatever's going on. But also, if we are hard casting Mind Break Trap, maybe bad things have happened. You know, it's true. So I think we're establishing what's an exile, what's not. Um, yeah, there we go. Okay, perfect. Wait, he didn't have to cast Josh Went Psycho Flesh Dupe Yogg. Oracle and Consult in the bin. Uh, Josh has cast Oracle and Consult with a ton of protection, I think is the the thrust of things. Um And Josh. Oh. Oh. Yep. You're gonna get No, it doesn't have oh, it does have blue mana. Yep. Uh silence does not stop the activation of Cephalid Coliseum. No, unfortunately. I think you did just play yourself. I don't think the spells were cast. Okay. I think he was showing, I have these in my yard. Do you guys want to play this through? Yeah. Yeah. All right, so we're casting Silence. Wow. Josh does not see the Cephalid, I don't think. I don't think he does. Understandably so. I mean... Yeah, I mean, that's tough. That sucks. I... Activated abilities and lands are, are tough to account for. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, to lose funds. He's uh he's about to lose right now, so maybe we'll see. I mean I don't see feasibly how he gets rid of the Cephalid Coliseum. Is that Angel's Grace? 
from Lua? Yeah. Where? In that one card? Is that Angel's Grace or? No threshold for activation. Gosh, you guys are good. Oh, yeah. Are we short? Oh, you guys are so good. That's an ephemerate. It's an ephemerate. Cracking Boromir. Oh, it uh, uh, turn free spells on? Turns them off, right? Turns them on if you crack them. Because right Got now it. you can't. Uh, if you spend zero. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So we're cracking Boromir. We're being bullied into cracking Boromir. Um, yeah, no threshold. That's my bad. Totally missed that. No threshold. Cracking Boromir. Colossal Sky Turtle. What are you... To uh, return the Mind Break Trap. To hit the silence? And now it's free, baby. Um, I think it was free already, but... Well, because of the Boromir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you are forcing Josh in a position. Uh, there's a lot of mana. Um, you're forcing him to use more counter magic to then draw Brian more cards, which is what I think Brian's going for right yeah. now. You Dude. can discard it as a hall to reach threshold. That's also true. This is a surgically executed move by Brian right now. I love the patience of this play. I... I think Mike's burnt out, right? Like, Mike's a non-factor yeah. right now. Um, Mike's already activated everything he can activate, I think. Like, we got to the point where we flipped the Simeon Spirit Guide into play. Rough. I think we're probably tapped out. Yeah. Lua has the one card in hand. It's an Ephemerate, too. Ephemerate. Ephemerate, Dockside doesn't do anything. Yeah. So not worried about Lewis, not worried about... It's it's now become a 1v1, Josh versus uh, Brian yeah, right now. Josh versus Brian. We're yogging back the swan song. Um, We've reached time in the round. Extension. They have a time extension. This table has a time extension. About okay. three minutes. Okay. So, yeah, we are in, we are in the endgame. Uh, f there was a force of will used unequal. Um... I don't know if there was another Force of Negation or something that was revealed, but I do know Force of Will was used earlier in the game. Yeah, the Force that Mike revealed was used earlier this game. So Brian will make a bird. One burb. Okay, we have two burbs. Double burbed up. And now we have... We're not out of this, though. Nope. Oracle. Oracle and Consult. Trigger, Trigger Nezahal. Nezahal. Does Brian Koval be the line? Of discarding cards to Nezahal? Yeah, of activating Nezahal twice and discarding cards to it. Is there enough cards to discard? Uh, I think he's drawn a bunch. Seems good. This is make or break. Between uh, Yogg, Will, Swan, Song. Oh. And I, I, I think Furlough, I think Lua has missed Esper Sentinel triggers. Yeah. Is Josh going to do it? Josh does oh, it. Oh. Wow. You didn't see it. Wow. I. Hindsight 2020. Wow. What is showing by Josh on Toulouse? Nobody say it to Brian Koval. Don't, don't, don't mention it. So Josh did not play Toulouse. He played two he'll win be, that game. He'd be so mad. Nice. He played. Oh, they're here, aren't they? No. No? No. They're not here this time? No. Sorry, Cam. Sorry, Dylan. Sorry, Tyler. I love you. You're not uh, here. You should have been here. Huge mistake on your part. Should we Should we try to squeeze in a quick Josh interview or say to heck with that? We're yeah. over time in the We're round. Past time. Gotcha. Gotcha. Well, what a showing. That strong start by Mike. Brian absolutely f gave it his all for Gideon on that one, trying to get the win. Lua, I, I was a testament to Lua's patience as well. That was a tough game for Lua. There was not a lot for them to do that game. Very, very tough, but but I absolutely, the, what a swingy game. <laughs> it was, yeah, I mean, it was, it's, we've seen some grindy CEDH today, and uh, that was another, that was another part of it, just huge swings, resource building, and Eventually, everything came to a head. Uh, honestly, I've, I've really enjoyed all the rounds of CEDH we've had today. And how, do you, how have you felt? Yeah, they've been great games. I um, I've been really impressed by the quality of player. And like I, I think we've said earlier, I was telling Alan. Alan did a quick little you know, hallway interview with me. Yeah. Um, 
compared to Punt City 1, especially with the circuit and everything that, you know, all the tournaments that are popping up all around the corner, all around the country, the quality of players is just going up. Yeah, like, absolutely. Like, you can't argue with that. Players are just better. And with better players, I think, comes new and more interesting deck innovation and yeah. a better read on the, the metagame. And I think we're seeing that now. I think the players that are playing now are, are even if it's the same players, they are better after a year of CDH. Uh, especially with how hard games are getting to win. Yeah, I feel like I feel like innovation in CEDH has been stifled by being locked behind discords or paywalls or that kind databases. of thing. Databases. Databases. But there's this new breed of CEDH player, data-driven CEDH players to see what's working all around the country and then adapt their game to that. And I think what we're seeing here at Punt City 3 is a result of all that data. So I do want to say, if you also want some data to brew your deck with, you can go to edhtop16.com. The edhtop16.com dev team is the best in the business. And uh, speaking of edhtop16.com, it's like we have an ad for them in the reel. So uh, kick it. Okay.
I'm starting to fade. How you doing? I'm doing great. I'm on the I love it. Surgeons. I punted my two first games like really solidly. Like It was weirdly blurry. I don't what's going on here? Sorry, we got like AV stuff going on. Okay. So you said you punted the first two games. Yeah, solidly, like clean lines to victory in both of them and just like misread board state, misunderstood what was going on. Just No, no, we hate to see it. We hate to so see it. One of them went to time, took a draw, and then one of them I lost, and then I just win the won my third game. So, so I'm, you are... I got a little bit of everything. One, one, and one. One, one, and one. Variety is the spice of life. On Sisse. On Sisse, yeah. But not Clam Chowder Sisse. Not Clam Chowder Sisse, because I don't like Clam Chowder. <laughs> I learned all about Clam Chowder Sisse from one of the pioneers of the deck. From uh, Duncan. Duncan. Nice. He was saying that it's not on your, like, bloom tenders yeah. and your doesn't have those dorks that tap for five, and I was like... Yeah. This is crazy. We're we're living in crazy town. It's almost more like you're like pretending like you're a Najila, where you're like, well, my commander goes fast. It's three, and I get all five colors. So what can I put in there? But I don't like that. I want my weird fiddly. Oh, you have to tap it and untap it and piece together all these legends. So that's what I'm on. You have to keep keep them coming out one after another after another. Not exactly. And then eventually. People can't deal with it, and you go up the chain. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, what have your rounds been against? Any? Have you seen any crazy decks so far? Um, I know there is a Send Triplets player, and there, yeah, there's a Send Triplets player, and there is a a Gyruda player. I played against uh, the Elish Norn, the five mana Elish Norn that stops flip error. Oh, interesting. It stops ETBs and doubles your own, and. I like ETBs, so that sucked for me. Um, but it was really cool to see. She had like all the Phyrexian like stuff. She was playing Phyrexian Sensor, which was cool because it like. So it was like cool to see a CDH commander that was just like aesthetically blinged out too. Like oh, it's, cool, it's so cool. It's got the sleeves. It's got the. She had the life counter that was Phyrexian. It was it was awesome. Well, that's. I'll have to take a look. Point her out if you see her at some point. I will definitely. Uh, and so, how are you feeling about the rest of the day? Well, I'm, I've played a lot of Magic, and I get to keep playing a lot of Magic, so I'm feeling great about it. That was you don't great. get to 03 drop, though. You have to keep working. Oh, no. <laughs> awesome. There's a guy who kind of looks like you walking around, and I'm like, why is Bootleg Mike walking around? <laughs> See, I usually wear a funky, whimsical hat to differentiate myself. But oh, there it is. I'm off on that right now. so I, That's super funny. It's impossible to determine which one's me and which one's Bootleg, so... Best of luck the rest of the day. Thanks. I got to put a food order together before I go to round, time and round again. So. Awesome. Good luck. Thanks. Peace. So here we are, post round three. Nice little talk with Mike. We love Mike. There's 33 minutes left in the round, so we'll see how that goes for everybody. I'm out here in the... We'll do quotes with these two. Vendor area. And uh, vendor area looks tight. We love seeing... We love seeing Sabretooth. We love seeing these as well. Uh, we love seeing awesome tokens. We love seeing awesome playmats. And we love seeing Sabretooth. See, we love seeing our friends win. Uh, I'm so happy to hear about my friends actually winning rounds. Uh, we're going to we're gonna pull you over to the side real quick. Uh, I'm going to go on mute. So a little bit of little bit of secret talk here with our buddy here. We gotta we gotta have our our secret meta talk with Ian. Uh, did did I catch up with you earlier? Have I talked to you yet no, today? Yeah, this is the first. Yeah, no, I've gone to time my first two rounds, so that was where I was for those first two. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Pivot, look pivot. At that. Oh, Isn't that beautiful? Quality. So the most important question: How late were you partying last night? Um. 
for me, pretty reasonable. I think it was only like midnight. Like, I, Oh, okay, because I left at like 11.30. -ish. Yeah, like we straight up, oh, you know, I think it hit like 12.30 because I was like, as soon as y'all left, I think it was last people, I like cleaned up. Uh, it started like 12.30, we were like done. I was like, all right, I'm like picking up one last can that someone left on the thing. And I was like, I'm going to bed. No one else talked to me. <laughs> like, <laughs> it was, thank you for having me. It was a lovely time. That was uh, quite the roster. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, it was a good time. Glad people so how have your games been? Uh, I'm exhausted. <laughs> it's been a long day so far. So two draws, my first two rounds going right to time each and every time. Uh, my second round, I had more interaction and potential win attempts than I think I've ever had. Like, did a crazy thing on an end step, went for a win on a turn, that turn didn't work out, final fortune for a second turn in a row. So like literally, instant speed win attempt, uh, main phase win attempt, second turn main phase win attempt, all got stopped and I was like, okay, we draw now. <laughs> like, uh, With that question, having final fortune, what are we running? Uh, so I'm running Tevesh Krom today. Yeah. Interesting. What what led to that decision? Um, so I brought it to uh, two tournaments before this. They were both online webcam tournaments, um, like way a couple months ago, and it felt really really clean. Um, the the basic concept of, of the list is like it's way more like Blue Farm than like a Rogsai, right? It's much more like if the format's going to be slow and grindy and mid range, I might as well just stack my deck with two giant card draw engines in the command zone. And then just be like, draw, 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 draw. Eventually, can I do the thing? Is that cool? Like, with so with that in mind, with our Staxi, not Staxi, but with our mid-range value engine meta in mind, I've been starting to like side eye Dalsum again and be like, I'm starting to kind of be like, hey, you're looking pretty good all of a sudden. Yeah, man, Bowmaster sucks though. Yes, like, Bowmaster sucks very hard. That's just like that's the thing. It's like every time I get excited about a creature combo deck, which is my favorite way to play, I'm like, yeah. And then Bowmasters ruins my day, and it's just like, it's tough. There are some that are still good, right? Like Sisse is obviously still out here killing it, but like because they can do everything from the command zone, right? Yes. Like any creature deck that has other stuff it needs to do is just like dead. I've been hearing. I don't know. I think there might be one running around today. I heard there's an Elevir deck running around. That's hot. I think someone lent. Charles one or maybe that was last night. I don't maybe think it maybe it was last night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like Elevir has a leg up today. Yeah. It's I've <laughs> also heard I've heard rumors. I won't keep you from your food. I've I've seen there's somebody on send triplets to That's watch so out hot. for. That's so and there's a Gyruda deck. Dude, I love it. And Gyruda right now yeah. is crazy. Yeah, because like sometimes you're like, oop, I let it resolve once. They're not going to kill me this one time. And then it's like clone, 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 Thoracle. And you're like, how? Well, right now, yeah. Everybody's deck has clones in it. Mm -hmm. so yeah, Gyruda is extremely well positioned right it, now. It like it, meme aside, it's Turbo Stonks that deck, right? Like it's just like for sure. It's like I hope your deck is. It's Itali, right? In the sense where you're like, I hope your deck is good, but they also get counter spells, which is kind of hot. Like got like if they're in a matchup against any deck, there there's any deck has four clones in it, and God forbid they're in a, de a matchup against Itali or um, uh, Krark Saka. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I'll let you get to it. Enjoy your food. Let's catch, ca keep catching up. Absolutely, man. Post round three, how we doing? Horrible. Oh, I hate hearing it. Yeah. So Tim Necrom is doing Tim Necrom things. I'm getting everything I need to win except actually winning. Everyone's stopping me. Oh, you're running into like heavy interaction. People are just like ready to ready to yeah. stuff you. Yeah, no. Every, everyone in my pod is not taking game action. Is waiting for me to do things and then stopping me. And the player next to me gets to win. That's a bummer to be. So, I, do you have? Has this changed your game plan at all now? Like, are you are you ready to pivot like in the next match and like sit and wait in the cut for to to wait for somebody else to push first? I'd rather not be on the back foot with Tim Necrom. I'd rather just be proactive, do my thing. Um, but I know that I shouldn't be the first to push. I just need to wait and tutor for Born Upon the Win, and then hopefully someone else tries to go, and then I can go on top of them. Awesome. Well, best of luck in the upcoming rounds. Thanks for. I'm glad I caught up with you. And uh, sorry, sorry to hear that it's not not falling out the way you want. But I'm uh, excited to hear about the next few rounds. Thank you so much. Glad to be on the show. Appreciate it. Oh, gotta, gotta catch up with Dan.
Dan, how are we doing? Uh, we've been better, but we're not doing too bad, I guess. What's the standings? Uh, zero, one, and two. One of my punts was screwing him over, and I'm very sorry. <laughs> we, it probably would have been another draw, honestly. It probably would be 0-3 if, if that hadn't happened. So, like, What yeah. are we on today? Uh, we're on the usual, Thrust Timna. Okay, and how and is it feeling like well suited in this in the environment? Yeah, it feels fine. Yeah, I'm on smothering tithe, and just like everyone's putting Mystic Study in play constantly, so I'm had a ton of mana to activate Thrasios whenever I want. Are you big question? Are we on uh, trouble in pairs? I'm not. No. no. Why not? Uh, there's just a lot of different four mana options, and I think the other ones I'm playing are better. All right, that's fair. <laughs> you can yeah, you can only play like so many four mana cards, right? Yes. Just, like flood out with four mana cards. And are there any? Is there anything that you're like guarding against? Is are there any decks or strategies you're really looking out for today? Uh, not especially. No, I just went up on uh, creature silences to play around all the risk studies. Like another, I put put a cutsel in. Okay. Um, but yeah, other than that, nothing really too special. Just pretty usual value engines into uh, Thoracle or uh, Razaketh. Okay, so you're you're just, it's just business as usual for Dan, huh? Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> yeah, stick with what I know. I love it. Well, best of luck in the rest of the day. What's your standings, you said? Uh, zero, one, and two. Okay. Yeah, we just actually took an intentional draw because one player was just going to let the other player draw their whole deck and stop everyone and then win if we didn't draw, so... Oh, interesting. Yeah, so he had a whole breaker horror loop he could do, but he couldn't actually win off the whole breaker horror loop. Okay. And the other person had Mystic Remora, so it's like, oh, he's just going to draw his deck if I do this, so... Okay. We're like, well, I guess we have to draw because otherwise he just wins. So, <laughs> Interesting. Well, uh, best of luck in the rest of the weekend. I look yeah. forward to hearing about it. Got to actually try to get some wins down. <laughs> yes. <laughs> awesome. Thanks. So twice now you've been talking to other people, and I've come and talked to the other people, so we're going to talk to you. Yes, What's your name, boss? Uh, Corey. Corey Hayslip. Corey, what are we playing today? T and K. All right. And how are we feeling about it? Uh, I feel good for the most part. Uh, it's been playing well. I'm 0-1-2, and two, unfortunately. Okay. Uh, but it, it's been fighting the good fight. All right. What's the what's the secret tech? Do we have any new cards that we're really happy about? Delny and Steel Enchantment. All right. So Steel Enchantment, I've heard people start talking about recently. Yep. It's a cool card. What do you, what are you looking to take from people? Is it like Ristics or Ristics, Mystic, Smothering Ties? They're everywhere. Okay. Have you seen has have you seen anybody resolve a trouble in pairs yet this weekend? Not yet. I was uh, considering playing trouble in pairs over the one ring actually. Oh, and, wow. Uh, I can't find one yet. So. Okay. Okay. It's a it's a cool card for sure. I've run it in casual games and it just does gangbusters. I've seen it do work recently. Yeah. And I mean, in a comp game, if you can resolve it, yeah, you've just got it. Something that's just the the EV on it's just through the roof. Yeah, it draws mad cards. <laughs> surprisingly. So, what are you watching out for this weekend? Uh, for the most part, I was looking out for Kennen, TNK, obviously, and Sisse. Okay, and do you have any strategies built in against that? Uh, Either card-wise or, like, play-wise? Well, not necessarily. Uh, I did some tech. I, I play uh, both Fire Covenant and Toxic Day Lose right now. Oh, sick. So, two mass removals. Uh, I added Path and Swords. Uh, and I, um, I mean, obviously Oppo for certain things. And I really considered Dauntless Dismantler, but it didn't make the cut. Okay. And going into something like this, do you play a lot of uh, tournaments? Uh, yes. Do you have any rituals, either, either like good luck rituals, specific things you do, or just things that you like to do? in order to get yourself ready for a tournament like this. And that can be like gameplay training wise or just like I like to get a good sleep, like anything. Uh, good sleep's unfortunate not uh, in, in, in my realm of the future, I don't think. Uh, yeah, I got a five year old, I could tell you all about it. I have two boys. Um, no, so Ryan, we're playing with Powers, a very good friend of mine. Okay. I'm cool, I'm out of Ohio. Um, and we play every Thursday when tournament time comes. Oh, nice. Prep, and we, we, we make you know, we uh, we try to test cards. Uh, we've even done some things like where you start with the test card in hand. Oh, okay. You know, because, I mean, you could play 40 games and see it twice, I mean, honestly. So, yep. You know, we, we have our own things, but no rituals other than that, really. I love that, honestly, playing testing a card and playing it with, an, playing with it in hand. Yeah. I have a friend who recently, the conversation of, like, when a card comes up and people are like, oh, it's so broken, it's so good, and the, the response is always going to be, oh, how is it in testing? <laughs> right, exactly. And, and so I, I've, I'm on Delny, 
Uh, and I've wanted to test Delny for quite some time. I just never draw it, yeah. unfortunately. Um, I will say it's a point to be removed every time it hits the battlefield. Oh, interesting. Uh, but, yeah, it, we, we had some games there a couple Thursdays ago before before we started here. And um, I start, they, you know, we started with some test cards in hand, uh, and, and it does work. It does. Now, you said you're on TNK, is that correct? How many creatures do you – so – Timna is one of those, right? I'm not crazy. Timna's one of the T and T and K. Yeah. Uh, how many yeah. how many creatures are uh, does Delny hit? Does Delny a trigger off of? Uh, so it triggers off Esper Sentinel, Orcish Bowmaster, Thassa's, not that it matters. <laughs> Timna. It could, it could matter. It, it could, <laughs> I guess. Um, so obviously like Timna, um, Esper Sentinel, Lotho, and Ragavan. Okay, so it's not like there's like 20 cards or 12 cards, but there's enough that it makes a difference, but you find? Creatures, not, creatures being greater than two, not being able to block, is comes into play more than you think. Okay, so it lets you get, it lets you attack, and their only options as blockers are things that they don't want to lose. Correct. So it lets you just, I, I found that recently in games, people are beginning to rely on pressured life totals with things that are doing it incidentally like talion or uh yeah, blood chief round, attention i just lost round two to a flip to tolly so i'd say i'd say that'll I'd pressure say, some life totals that'll pressure some life totals yeah i'll delete some life totals it deleted mine very quickly oh i'm sorry sorry to laugh about it i run a talent a tolly so i'm anytime i think about flipping it over and just People get real serious real fast when you flip that card over. I, I watch your channel, so I've seen I've seen some of your gameplay. Yes, Atali spicy. It's good. It's uh, they were on the play, which makes it a little worse. Uh, For sure. But but yeah, I mean it's it's a good deck. I mean there's a lot of good players here this weekend. Yes, absolutely. I know a lot of the people. I've played a lot of the people. Uh, so we're just gonna we're gonna keep grinding. It's not over yet. No, absolutely not. Four rounds to go. So you know we'll see what the rest of the day has. And One more time. What's your name? Corey. Corey, thank you so much for taking a minute for chopping it up, and I look forward to hearing about your standings for the rest of the weekend. Appreciate it, boss. How's it going? Appreciate you. Thank you for supporting the channel also. Yes, sir. Absolutely. We'll turn right around. You want to chop yeah. it up for a second? Sure. What's up? What's your name, boss? How's it going? I'm Ben. Ben, what are we on today? We are playing Dargo Thrasios. Okay. That's a fun one. Yeah, it is. <laughs> That's one of those decks that people just, the Dargo stands are real. Yeah. No, uh, my, it's my brother's favorite deck. Uh, I've played a bunch of different decks over the years, uh, and I, he, we went to play some Kitchen Table ZDH with some buds a few weeks ago, and on the way, he's like, you should play my deck. And I'm like, I'm not playing your deck. I played it once, and I won, and it was really fun, so I started <laughs> playing it again. And uh, yeah, it's pretty sick. We're 1-1-1. Uh, one, 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 uh, oh, all right. One, got the draw, turn two of the table on round three, and now we're just chilling. I love how explosive that deck is, and it's hard not to love it when you find something that... Like, you look at your hands, and then, like, it might not have it right then, and then you draw one card, and you're like, oh, let's go. Yeah. The only thing that, like, I found, like, the only thing that kind of stinks is that sometimes it's obviously one of, if not the most Dockside-reliant deck in the format. Okay. Uh, so if, if like, like the, the game I just won, my opener was Dockside Neoform Mystic Remora. Sure. Okay. I'm in, I'm in fourth seat. If they don't feed it, I'm not winning turn two that game. Like, yeah. Yeah. Who doesn't feed Dockside? <laughs> so, so what are you, what are you watching out for running that deck? What are your foils? Blind obedience. I'm hearing it more and more right now. Blind obedience is a crazy card. It's a double-edged card. You have to be very careful. People will play into it, for lack of a better term. People will blindly jam Dockside's into it, and it gives it to the next person. Like it's such a I'd almost go so far as to call Blind Obedience a parasitic card at this point. Yeah, I can see that. Um, really, uh, any any type of that effect, Manglehorn, Dauntless Dismantle, or things of that nature, uh, the deck can have a hard time with. But a Blind Obedience specifically, you can snap a Manglehorn. You can, uh, you know, you can, you can, you know, get, that's a lot, little, or you can lightning bolt it or whatever. It's a little bit easier to get rid of that. But there's like. Not very many ways for Dark Thrasios to sort of move Blind Obedience. <laughs> a, a couple of bounce spells yeah. or counter it when it's being yeah. cast. Or and that's about Tyrant. But if you have Tyrant, you should just win the game. You're, you're, you're <laughs> usually getting there, yeah. Um, 
what's the secret tech? What are you most excited about in any brand new card? Um, I, I'm, like I said, I'm pretty new to the deck. Um, I'm playing my brother's build. Shout out to Nazarific. Also, shout out to the whole OD crew at Tiger's Eye Games in Bellingham, Mass. What up? Um, <laughs> I'll have to come out sometime for sure. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, I saw you at King's Court. Uh, yes. That was a great event. Um, uh, I know that a lot of Dargo players don't play Magda. My brother and I do. Magda is the truth, dude. <laughs> All right, I like that. What? So if if you can if you can activate Magda, what's your target? Uh, if I already have Dockside, I mean, like you can usually just go get Curse Mirror or Metamorph to Dockside again. Oh, beautiful. Um, but the real sauce is Cloudstone Curio. Oh yeah, okay, for sure. I mean, you could also get you know, Birthing Pod, Defense Grid, uh, stuff like that. Oh, uh, the, the one ring, I actually just did that in the game that I drew. I got stopped, and I was like, I, I guess I'll just pass with the one ring and Seedborn Muse and see what happens. I love that that um, Magda becomes a toolbox card. That's very, very it's cool. very cool. I, I won a game with Magda underneath a cracked Ranger Captain, and they were just like, he can't win. And I'm like, guys. <laughs> <laughs> guys, it's, it's Magda. It's Magda. <laughs> yeah, deck's really fun, man. One more time, what's your name? I'm Ben. Ben, thank you so much. I love hearing... Super, your energy is amazing. The super oh, upbeat vibes <laughs> is everything right now. And uh, while we got you, uh, ban a card. Ban a card. Okay, this is, I, I know we just mentioned it. Uh, and this is not like the definitely the right answer. It's just a personal, this card always gets me every single time. Manglehorn. <laughs> Mangled, old Mangle Dangles Get is tough. Here. Get out of here. We don't like you. Go away! <laughs> Megalhorn is a rude card. For a long time when I was making my stream graphics, that was the card I would put on it yeah. for my deck. Yeah. And uh, I could totally understand yeah. that. It's just one of those ones that, like, it just finds me. You know? It just, it always, it's just there. Like, it's a personal vendetta. It's not even green at the table, and all of a sudden there's a Manglehorn, and I'm like, ah! <laughs> Love the channel, man. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it, Ben. Yeah. Enjoy the rest of the day. Absolutely. We're going to keep this party going, guys. Oh, there he is. It's Dio. Yes, sir. Dio, how are we doing? Uh, we are two and one. Oh, all right. I like yeah, that. Yeah. We, we, got, we got burned last round. But happens. That, that's what happens. It, when, when you're 2 0 and oh, they put you into a tougher game, sometimes you go 2 1. You got to play with the big boys. Yeah. So we're still on Tivit. <laughs> no. No, we're not on Tivit. We're not. What are we on? I'm a Sisse. Okay. To say the captain. Which are, are clam chowder to say or normal to say or like? What is clam chowder? It's not on clam chowder to say is not on your uh, Wooberg tappers. Oh, I'm on those. Okay. Yeah, I'm on those. Yeah, classic planeswalker lines, yeah. creature lines. Yeah, gets around Graf Sigurd's cage, but doesn't get around like cursed totem. Yep. You know, but uh, yeah, it's like. I don't know, 10 cards away from Ian's list. Yep. What are you watching out for? When you're sitting down in a game, what commander are you like, okay, this is a tough matchup? Um, I don't think there's any particular matchup. It's it's more like the speed. So any of your any of your very aggressive decks like Godo, Rogsai, like any of your ones that are just going to spell you right out and win the game before you can even set up, that's that's the ones that I want. Those are tough. Yeah. So I got to mull for interaction at that point. Oh, interesting. So if you're sitting down against Turbo, you mull specifically to be like, okay, I got to be able to handle this, and then worry about your game plan once you're able to get into those later turns. I'll, I'll prioritize that when mulliganing. Yes. Awesome. And uh, you're feeling good about the weekend so far? Yeah, it's a good time. Get to see all awesome. the people that I don't don't get to see regularly, so it's it's a blast. Awesome. I appreciate you taking a second. Great to see you down here. Looking forward to throwing down tonight for sure. Hey, you got it. We got to find Memo. We're looking for a Memo. Where'd he go? I was told I got to talk to him, so we're trying to find him so we can talk to him. I don't see him sitting down, so that means he might be, you guessed it, standing up. Go ahead. There he is. That's the guy. So allow me to vamp for a second. I hate interrupting conversations. Oh, we're in front of the bathroom. Let's pretend we're not in front of a bathroom anymore. So if you're watching the chat, say hey. Give me a how we doing in the chat. If you're watching the stream in the chat, say hey, how you doing? I love seeing that people are out there. And if you are currently watching 
the top deck stream. This is probably post round four for you is my guess. I'm not sure. But if you're watching the top deck stream, flood the chat with emotes, please. If you're watching me right now and we're in between matches, just absolutely spam the chat with emotes. Make these top deck guys know. Uh, hit the king. Hit the me mental misplay. Oh no, because it's on. It's on YouTube, so you can't spam with mental misplay emotes. So spam the chat with something. And if you're following right now, if you're watching right now, just say hey. Let me know how you're doing. I'm gonna turn this around. I'm gonna go ahead and talk to our boys over here if I can get the second. I'm starting to see people come into the venue with sandwiches. I love that. People are starting to realize, like, I need my food right now. So, all right, we found you. Yes. Finally caught you. Yes, can I steal, you? Yes, steal him away from this conversation yes. real quick? Step back this way. Okay. So. Hi, Ellen. I'm Alan, you know that. And for those of you at home who don't know, what is your name? I'm Memo. I'm a German CDH player who got flown out by Top Tech TG, shout out to them, to participate in Pan CD3. And it's been awesome. I'm so stoked to be here. So I was lucky enough uh, about a year and a half ago to get uh, the chance to go out and cover and play in uh, the Tier 1 championship. Ah, in Denmark. I was at the one in Copenhagen. Uh, I, I watched it. I, I didn't play that much. That's when I got into CDH a couple of okay. years ago. And I, I watched the coverage. And so something I've learned is that because of the localization of the game and because of the localization of in-person tournaments, the metas kind of shape differently. Have you found playing here stateside that the metas any different from where you typically play? Uh, I typically play online events. That's what I'm known for. Okay, okay. And, and it's a pretty similar. Like it's it's all on uh, uh, it's all on uh, EDH top 16, the top 10 decks. There will be like at least 10 TNKs, 10 Kinnons. It's it's the same stuff most of the time. Okay, so you're not finding this this thing's driving me crazy. So let's go over to perfect. There, there you go. Um, so what are you running today? I play um, Agro Warriors Najila. So oh. I, I'm known for playing Najila. I played a lot of Turbo Najila. I also won an event with Stex Najila, so I figured this time I want to play the mid-range version. I play a bunch of warriors and try to turn sideways. So right now it is, you are, that's the meta right now, is the mid-range meta. Everybody's talking about mid-range hell, mid-range this, mid-range that. Nobody wants to win. Nobody wants to win, and I will punish them by beating their face. I don't, I don't care about your Might Break Trap, I don't care about your Fluster Storm, your Force of Ignition. I play one creature each turn and then I will swing for 10 damage. And then the next turn it will be 20 damage. Your game plan is resolve Najila and just start punching? Yes, I have a prior, I prioritize turn one Najila into turn two uh, Warrior, like Chatterfang, Facebreaker, stuff like that. That's, that's annoying, but not as annoying that you use your Force of Will on it. Yep. And you can hide behind your Rhystic Study, I don't care. I will just swing and then e eventually try to either put a combo like Grim Hireling or the Revy on the stack, yep. or just win via like normal combats. Just full on damage, just pushing. Yes. yes. So that, that was going to be my question. So you said uh, Chatterfang and Grim Hire, uh, and uh, Facebreaker. Are there other warriors that you're looking at in the deck? Yes, I'm also playing Bramblewood Paragon. That's a one and a green elf warrior. Okay. And that's um, each other warrior that ETBs gets a counter. And oh, every, easy. Every um, creature with a counter has trample. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, and we have a synergy with Katzel because Katzel also lets you draw cards if the base power is lower than the power of the creature. So I've been hearing a lot about this card. Yes, yes, Katzel has been very good. If you just put the Katzel and like turn to turn one Najila, turn to Katzel, you might be able to present a turn three win with something like a Green Sense in it, and they have to respect it. If they don't, we might just kill them. Or we just pass the turn. We swing, make some warriors develop a little and pass and then they're unsure if they have to remove Katzel or not so for a long time I played uh, Dalsim nice. and I was playing Dalsim with a heavy stacks build and it was like eh, you know like stacks I'm really like hinky on I, I, I leaned on it very hard but got discouraged by it but now that we're in this mid-range zone uh, Dalsim's I'm starting to look at it again I'm starting to be like oh like maybe you could like hold your own again that and uh, Elevere oh. are two decks that I'm like we could start doing some yeah. really cheeky things right now they also want to like punch face right yes yeah let them have the wrist stick their smothering types we just turn sideways and try to not care Do you have a Delny in that deck no I don't because it does not trigger Najila because Najila has three power 
so it, but it's it's like close. But I think I'm already winning with Samut in the Revy. Yep. And it's just a little too much. I will not de delay my the Revy or my Samut just to get out Delny first. I think it's a little too cute. Have you built anything into your decks to deal with the contemporary meadow? Like, do you have any answers for the, any secret tech or answers in there? Not. And if you don't want to talk about it, I'm certainly not going to ask you to. Not really. Um, I just decided to. Uh, so my deck folds to like turn two wins. So if I that uh, like paired with double rock side, it's very tough for me because I prioritize turn one Najila, turn two warrior. That does usually does not interact with the table. It's very yep. greedy. And but I would I would just rely on the blue players to keep each other in check uh, because this was what I was experiencing the last couple of months. Nobody tries to win. Everyone holds up counter spells. They play for born and ten treasures, and they want to like. Born on top of other people, win attempt, fluster storm, MBT, and I want to dodge all of that, and I just hope they use it on each other. It's a little parasitic. I love. I. I mean, it. It can be, but at the same time, like if you just stay in your own lane and push your push your agenda of punching people, like you'll get there. And with other decks leaning on the pressuring life totals, it puts you in a very good place as yeah. well. Yeah, exactly. I think my only hot tech. I went up to 30 lands. I'm usually more of the 27, 20 end land guy, but adding Bosage and Otawara has been huge because you just love hitting your land drops with Najila and also obviously the versatility of having them as removal spells has been great. I've been hosed by channel things so often. I play a lot with uh, Tyler from Play to Win, who's on Kennen, and he's he, he doesn't just run the lands, he's got all the creatures too. Yeah. yeah. And I've gotten hit by like so many of them, so I'm always wary of channel, and I think it's very cool to see it being s utilized so strongly in this format. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Channel is busted. I, I think like channel was also those two lands, they kind of killed stacks as an archetype. Like, like after they got printed, the amount of stack stacks just got less and less because it's so much tougher to win now. You can just go over under them, all that sort of stuff. So, what do you think is the most overrated CEDH deck? Uh, I think it's Kinnan. Kinnan is the good cop, and people let Kinnan get away with too much stuff. And if would people uh, would uh, respect Kinnan more, Kinnan would immediately stop winning as much. I think, I don't know, I don't know, but apparently Kinnan gets to do everything, and all the other decks get headed off the table, and I don't think that's that's correct. All right, and uh, we'll go with some of my favorites. Uh, ban a card. Um, Rhystic Study. Right. Yeah, that card is, uh, no, and Mystic Romora, it's close. I think they're super boring. Also, the judges ask for a ban because the board states that the stack war, it's so hard, like, trigger this, trigger that, and we don't need those fucking comments in the format. Like, get them out of here, please. What are you doing? All right, I like that answer for sure. And and for the fact that it's just creating these game states that are like, yeah, eye-rolling, huge, huge stack wars, everything. I mean, it is certainly a... Uh, it's not even a symptom, it's a cause of the mid-range hell that we're in, for sure. Yeah, exactly. Like, I think it has, it has proven itself. It's been there for too long. I don't think the casual players would mind. Like, it doesn't even matter. It's not a very, like, iconic EDH card like Soul Ring, which arguably, from a power level perspective, is also, like, super ban-worthy. <laughs> but, uh, like, let them have it. But I think Study and Fish are so toxic and uh, just create so many games evolve around them. We don't need it anymore. We're so, uh, to, to go back to some more uh, standard stuff, how long are you in town for? Uh, until tomorrow night. So I'm only here just for the tournament. I will have to leave tomorrow night because I was tight on vacation days. Okay. But yeah, I hopefully like if I come back next year, I try to stay longer for sure. Are, th are you taking place in any of the paper tournaments uh, in Europe at all? Uh, yes. So the German CDH scene specifically is um, growing. Shout out to CDH Deutschland. They're doing an awesome job. And we had the biggest CDH tournament in Germany in February. And okay. I was there as well, and I fucking scrubbed out, but doesn't matter. It happens. Like, and being there is like a huge yeah. part of it. All weekend, I've been asking people, what are you looking forward to most this weekend? And they said, I'm looking forward to Saturday night at Punt City because everybody hangs out and it builds the community. Yeah, exactly. I had, like, yesterday was also awesome. It's so cool to hang out with people. Also, like in the online environment, you just know the names, right? Yeah. You see the hands and the cards, but you don't see the face that often, and it's just cool to, to have a face now to those kind of players. To be able to sit across and look at people who you've even played with before many <laughs> times is really, really special. Yeah. Or the content I watched for years. <laughs> I'm also stoked about that. Uh, I'm, I've got my eye on the... Um, the, the finals in Lisbon. Oh, yeah, that's going to be awesome. I'm, I'm looking at Lisbon. I'm like, all roads lead to Lisbon. And I'm like, goosebumps thinking about it. Like, I don't know if I'm going to get out there, but like, I'm dreaming of it. Yeah, me too. I'm, I'm also not too sure, but I, I hope I can make it somehow. But we will have to see. 
Here's to us making it to Lisbon. Yes, let's go. Hell yes. All right, well, it's absolutely a pleasure, Memo. Thank you so much for talking for a minute. Thanks for having me. Bye, guys. There you have it. I'm going to shut it down there, guys. That's 35 beautiful minutes. Thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate it. I'm going to send this one over to the Top Deck team, and I will catch you guys soon. Post round four, we are live. All right, we're post round four, we're live. Can I talk to you for a second? Sure. What's your name, boss? Uh, I'm Show. Show? Yeah. How are we doing today? Ah, okay, one, two, and one, not great, but okay. All right, one, two, and one, something. Can we yeah, of course, yeah, sorry about that. Uh, so, what are you playing? I'm on Blood Pod today, Tim Natana. Okay, and how have the matchups been? They've been okay. Uh, Presenta win every single game, just not getting there. <laughs> we like that, though. We like pushing. Yeah, we like pushing a lot. Have you found that you're pushing first and other people are just kind of like waiting for somebody to push and then winning on top of it? Um, no, not really. We're just getting stopped in these grindy games, you know. Just sit there. That's what the game is right now. Big grind right now, right? Yeah, for sure. Are there any particular strategies you're running into that you're really wary of? I mean... Always to say, always can in. Um, three of my four rounds, I've already run into three to says. It's a lot. Yeah. What? Uh, what's the new heat in the uh, in the deck? What's you, what's the if you can talk about it? What's the secret tech? Oh, nothing really that secret. I mean, Dolly was a huge boon for the deck. Dolly's insane. Double timna triggers are crazy. We love it. Yeah, for sure. Awesome. Do you typically play in a lot of tournaments? I do. I'm usually on stacks though. <laughs> okay. Um, are you local or? Uh, I'm from New Jersey, so yeah. Okay, so at least East Coast local, it counts. Yeah. And you play, um, I can't remember the follow-up question for that, but uh, so you, you're enjoying yourself, though? Yeah, I'm having a great time, man. What were you most excited about this weekend? Uh, just getting to play some good magic, dude. That's all. Always good magic. <laughs> awesome. That's why we're out here, for sure, right? Have you seen any fringe decks? Anything wildly off-meta? Wildly off-meta? There's somebody on Elishnorn Mother Machines, and I... I my heart. Oh, I was so happy to see it. <laughs> I've heard Elshnorn Mother of Machines. I've heard there's somebody, uh, there's somebody on uh, Sand, Sand Triplets, and and there is somebody on Gyruda. Gotcha. I also heard someone's on Elevir, which I'm. I also love that deck. That I've been playing that deck for so long, and then I was like, I'm just gonna play Blood Pod this time. I think Elevir is. Ex I think a light stacks, like very minimal stacks, Elevir could be incredibly well suited in this meta. Yeah, I, I've been looking around. I kind of wish I was on it right now. I played Dalsim for a long time, and I feel like that's got a similar vibe, except Elevir has the finishing power. Oh yeah, for sure. Don't don't ever let her stick around. If you do, no. you're gonna be sad. She's pushing with eight drops all day. Oh yeah. <laughs> One more time, your name? Uh, I'm Show. Show. Let's get some hot takes out of you. Ban a card. Ban a card. Go on. Uh, Rustic study, please. All right. <laughs> <laughs> no, no more Rustic studies. Ugh. That's why we're in this mid-range meta. Yeah, for sure. What do you think's the most overrated CEDH deck? Overrated? I mean, I don't know if I have to say it, but Rogsai. <laughs> That's a pretty standard. Who complains more, CEDH players or casual players? Casual players. A hundred percent, man. Oh. We, gotta, we gotta laugh from behind us off that one. <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong. CEDH players complain a lot too, but oh, casual players. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Show, for answering some questions. I really appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. Anytime, man. Sorry if I was standing no, in the way you're or anything. Good. You're good. I'm just big as hell. 
Looking around for more people to talk to. If you're watching right now, say, hey, we love talking to friends. We love seeing buddies out here. So if you're watching, I'd love to chop it up with you. We could go around here and see what the casuals are doing. So guys, just so you know, there's a whole CEDH tournament in there. There's 30 minutes left in the round. But when I come around the corner, we got like five or six pods right now firing off with good casuals, content creators, amazing people, good friends. I see Ryan over here. We're going to chop it up with Ryan and see how his matches are going. Oh, is we got a five-player game? Yo. Big casual hours out here. We got five players, including Vaughn, Yogg, great people. All right, we're back. We're back with the race car, man. How we doing? Oh, it's been a rough day. <laughs> things, yeah. have, things have changed since we first spoke. <laughs> what's, uh, what's the standing? Uh, right now it's 1-3. Yeah. Okay. All right, off round four, one three is not where we want to be. How? What's your plans? Are we going to keep at it? I'm going to try one more round because there's a couple more before I can get there. So if I win at least two more and maybe draw one, then that'll be at least it, it to get in. That's something. That's uh, there's we got to hold on to it, right? I'm not out yet. But. Have they been? hard fought games have they been blowouts what are we looking at i don't feel like i've made any mistakes with with the exception of maybe the last game you know they were well they were well played and stuff like that sometimes they just had it you know? yep went for turn two win they had the one they had one man open to get it you know all right and are you feeling like it's in a similar place that it's uh, goto is in a similar place that it's been in before when you've played in tournaments uh, i think goto's in a really strong spot right now um we've gotten a lot of Really good stuff brewing in the Red Love Discord that's really put it in a really strong place. We have two new cards that are coming out, not for this tournament, of course, but in the new set. So really looking forward to those. Uh, I was talking with oh, uh, one of your friends. I can't remember his name. He had kind of gingery hair. Uh, and he said, you guys do something awesome when you play test. You start with the card that you want to play test in hand. And I was like, that's so cool. That's such an interesting way to think about it. Yep. Yeah, I mean, because a lot of times there's so much variance in this format. What you end up doing is you like try and play like 20, 30 games, and you never end up drawing the card, especially since our format doesn't last very many turns, and you don't always see a ton of cards, especially something like Godo. Like, yeah, if you're drawing your whole deck, you're going to see those cards. Yes. But, so yeah, a lot of times we have to start in that kind of thing when playtesting. I thought that was so cool. One of my good buddies, Vile Smashed, is a big proponent of playtesting, and he says whenever he sees people screaming, oh, this card's going to be broken, it's banned, it's banned, he says... How, how was it in testing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot of people are really bad about evaluating cards in a vacuum. And uh, just responding with how was it in testing is such a quick way to be like, oh, yeah, bud. <laughs> yeah. How many times have you guys played Fairy Mastermind <laughs> slash Ledger Slider slash uh, the new Malcolm slash what else? <laughs> so there, there are cards that I've played and landed and absolutely love. I'm waiting to see where... Um, the, I think I brought it up earlier as well. I'm waiting to see where Trouble in Pairs falls out, but I think it's, I think it's super good. It's, it, more people need to run it. A lot, awesome. of people, a lot of people are thinking like, oh, well, Smothering Tide's a little slow. No, it's not. It's a great card. Trouble in Pairs is better. It's so good. It's incredible. Yeah, it's really, really great. That's him, that's him in there right now is uh, Woodland Deckhouse is the guy who says, how is it in testing? So, <laughs> um, well, thank you for taking a second. I'm glad I was able to catch up with you, and I'll keep chopping it up. I'm, I'm waiting for to get the real hot takes off of everybody tonight. Once everybody's in their yeah. cups, I'm going to be like, who's, who's the worst player? <laughs> no one's ready for my hot takes. No awesome. Ready. Good. Perfect. We'll catch up with you in a bit. All right. Take it easy. Up we go. Yeah. Hot takes off Orion. I can't imagine. Who's that? Oh, knowledge, knowledge. How we doing, buddy? How we doing? We might go outside and talk with some people. There's like a nice outdoors. Everybody's starting to stand up from their round four right now. We're gonna get a follow up from Sam real quick. I know Sam had a snappy round four. I'm chasing you. I'm chasing you. You said you had a. Uh, you said you had a, a snappy round four. Yeah, super, super snappy. It was great. It was great because my round two and my round three both went to overtime, and I was exhausted. And then round four, we lost in like 10 minutes. I was like, fuck yeah, I'm about to eat a sandwich. <laughs> yep. It's, it's, I'm definitely of two minds about the fact that you have to like 
pray for a quick victory in order yeah. to be able to sustain nutrition. Yeah, it is so true. Like the the gummy bears I'm eating and the granola bars I'm eating only carry you so far. They only get you. It's like. Uh, it, it's like when in Resident Evil when you only eat the green herb and you don't mix it with the red herb and the yellow herb. Or you get that yellow herb in there, dude, and you get the triple. Ooh, everyone knows. That, uh, RE4 people at home know. That's the full sandwich, but you've only been on just raw the green herb. Yeah, I've just been on raw green herb. We don't want that. That's not sustainable. <laughs> yeah, you can't no. survive. That's the true survival horror. And, and <laughs> like, I played like shit in my third round, too. And that's when I was peak hungry boy. I was so fucking tired. It's not good. So, what's our what's our standing? Oh, the standing's dookie, but I'm having a really fun time. Okay, what 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 numbers? Oh, I've lost three games and I drew one. Oh, okay. So, oh, one three, I think. That yeah, I think that is how you do it. That's how you say it. Yeah. So, are you are you calling it from here? No, I'm gonna play the fifth round. All right, yeah, there you go. Well, I just ate a sandwich, so now I have renewed vigor. Oh, you're ready. Like, you're ready to clap them up. Well. Let's not get too carried away. But we're, we're, fi we're clapping cheeks? I'm ready to play a game of magic. And we'll see if I clap one cheek, maybe two. We'll see. Sound of one cheek clapping? What is the sound of one cheek clapping? <laughs> it goes a little something like this. <laughs> well, thank you so much for the rundown. I really appreciate it. Uh, we'll keep running around to talking to people. Who do you think I should talk to next? Who do you think I should, besides Smod, obviously? Um, I, I think I need to find somebody to talk to. Hmm, I think you should talk to, I don't know. It would be cool to talk to one of the judges, but they're busy, man. They are busy. They're working hard. They're working. They're working really They're hard. not hardly working. They're working hard. Hey, <laughs> dude, nice. That's pretty good. Oh, nice. <laughs> oh, nice. nice. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Kayla's looking at me like I'm an insane person. That is right. Kayla <laughs> is looking at you like you're an insane person, and I'm not sure that she's wrong. Uh, no. Hi, everyone. My name is Scoots. Um, as Lauren alluded to, we have some hot, hot CEDH action going on here. Uh, notably, the names are not correct. I mean, we're, we we're it's just us right now. Oh, sweet. Nobody sees that. Uh, so we have um, uh, someone is playing Najila. Someone was playing Sisse. So we have Chris, aka Rocket Man, or Very Irate Man, in seat one playing on Tim Nakrom. We have Gus the Gus. He Gus. actually taught me how to say it in Dutch. It's Chris, is how you're supposed to actually pronounce the name. Not a joke. It's Chris. Um, and then he, he made fun of me for not being able to say it right. And then seat three, we have, I don't know this player's name, but I have seen them at tournaments before. They're playing Sisse Weatherlight Captain. And then in seat four, we have uh, 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 Larry playing Larry. Najila. Um, these are all really good opponents. It's actually a really like Wait. high velocity pot. I'm very excited to see how Wait. it. I recognize, is that New England clam chowder? Oh God, oh no. I oh. think it's clam chowder, bro. Let's go. Punchy, I'm just here for Mr. Hot Dog and Nissan Al Gabe combo. That's me. That's Nissan us. Hi, Punchy, Gabe. thank you for being here. Oh my gosh, everybody. I am so excited. This is our uh, this is our last round of Swiss for the day. We are. It is our last our round of last Swiss for the day. Swiss for the day, which means after this, I get to um, put eat. on some shorts and eat. I'm very excited for both of those things. I am going to put on my jorts. It is a thousand degrees in this casting room. I am dying. Lauren has a coat on. Um, it's a denim jacket. Thank it's you. A... I'm sorry. Lauren has a denim jacket on. Do I look handsome? You do. Thank Every you. Day, all the time. I love this jacket. It doesn't I, take a denim jacket. I bought this at someone off their body at FNM. <laughs> I bought other things off of. Never mind. Um, so Najila, uh, out of out of Larry. Yeah, Larry. I, I'm trying to call Larry and not the other thing that I call him. All right. Uh, Chris, uh, the the Rocket Man on TNK. So usually in pods like this, you have a pretty good idea based on seat order who is seeking to gain the most from seat yeah. position. I'm looking at this right now, and I'm like, this is anybody's game. Yeah, I mean, and luckily, though, for everybody else involved, I don't think this is going to go the full 80 minutes. No, I don't think so. I think, I I don't know. I think Kevin with Sisse is, is in the best position here. Um, I think the bottom half of the table. I think... Um, the the grindy Tibnet game plan 
is a slight disadvantage in this sort of pod. I think so too. Yeah. I, I think uh, Gustav placed him to Malcolm and, and the way that Gustav placed him to Malcolm is, is very, um, very creature centric, very grind centric. And you still, I mean, you still play all the Esper bombs, but you're trying to resolve Esper Sentinel, Changeling Outcast, things like that to increase your Malcolm triggers, increase your Timna triggers. Yeah. Um, it's I, I really feel that you're gonna be drawing a lot of cards yeah. later on in the game and there's gonna be very little action. Yeah, I, I, I think I think what we've seen all day, and I, I what I'm gonna say as a rule, what we've seen all day is development of huge amounts of mana in the first in the first like round or two of the table. And then uh after that uh development of advantage engines and we kinda see everything come to a head around the seventy five minute mark. Can I um can I shout someone out in in chat right now? You must. There's Yevhenia Shevchenko, my beautiful girlfriend, in chat right now. If everyone can say hi to her in chat, she is near and dear to my heart. Absolutely lovely woman who puts up with me day in, day out. Very oh. thankful for Yevhenia. If everyone can say hi Jenny or hi Yevhenia in chat, please, please, please do. She is um a wonderful lady. Um, and while we're resolving Mulligan decisions and everyone's saying hi to Yevhenia, I would love to shout out our sponsors, Propaganda MTG. Uh, Propaganda is actually here vending this event right now um, and, and absolutely killing it. And we are sponsored by All Trades Media. Their tokens look wonderful on stream. Bunch of different, uh, bunch of different tokens, really, for any sort of application you need a token for. They are vending at this event as well. People are loving their tokens. I, I like going around to the, event, the, the yeah. event hall, seeing people using them in their games. Absolutely. It's an absolute treat to see. Super, super cool. Um, and uh, thank you for them to sponsoring uh, this stream. Absolutely. If you want some All Trades Media goods, you can go to Etsy, search All Trades Media, and grab the OP3. That's the online print proxy pack. I thought it's organized play. It's um only peanuts power pachyderms. Oh, no. Uriah's asking Yevhenia if she likes the hot dog man. I hate the hot dog man. I hate the hot dog man. But I love Lauren. Yep. Agreed. Anyway, <laughs> Pun City 2 is kind of where the hot dog man died. Pun City 2 is where the hot dog man died. I think I have had that conversation with you. Yeah. Regarding the hot dog man not being who you are. Yeah. Shout out to uh, taking care of oneself. Anyway. Amen, brother. All right. We Still are. Care. Okay, and Larry's immediately going for the uwu. Uwu. That, <laughs> that is on brand. An absolute classic. Um, oh, she said she loves me. Yo, hold on. Hey, Lauren, I think she like likes you. I oh, my, Uriah says he also hates the hot dog man. And someone asked why we why would you hate a hot dog man? At Mikey Hollahan. <laughs> <laughs> I hate the hot dog. I don't know why Mikey hates the hot dog man. But we are resolving mulligans. This we is are. what we call in the business filling dead air. <laughs> Um, and we are some weird Ooh, logo. There's this interesting logo. I think I've seen that before. It's called for this like weird group called the cable and they use, cable. yeah, it's cause they stopped using satellite television. That was deep, but I like it. We got there. It was good. I love getting deep and getting there, um, with references to jokes. So we are still in the filling dead air space as mulligans yeah. are resolved. Gooseman, let's go. Um, yeah, it's pronounced Chus in, in, in Dutch, um, and every time I say that, I feel like my um, throat is cleared, so I'm very thankful for the opportunity to speak in Dutch. You'll love The Cable Guys. Yeah, great movie with Jim Carrey, The Cable Guy. I hear that group watches that movie every night on Discord together. As I understand it, um, it's actually me, myself, and Irene. Oh, I've yeah. not seen that movie. Oh, it's another Jim Carrey movie. He plays a Mountie. I've only seen two Jim Carrey movies. Which ones? Um, <laughs> um, The Cable Guy. Okay. And The Truman Show. Okay. That's you... it. That's the only actually the only two movies I've ever seen. Okay. All right. The only two Jim Carrey movies I've ever seen are uh, two episodes of In Living Color and um, the number 23. Those are the only... I've never seen In Living Color. I've seen Bruno Mars featuring, is it Nicki Minaj? And they did a music video for um, 
um, finesse and the whole music video references in Living Color. Oh, but I haven't seen in Living Color. Who? Okay, if chat knows who was featured in that radio remix of that song, we have Chris starting out Goodbye, with finesse. Trip, trip, trip. With a scalding tarn. Sarah Ascendant, the, look at this boy. I'm assuming a plateau here. Maybe a tundra, get the blue mana. Yeah. Oh, plateau. Let's go. Um, having, you know, invented Blue Farm slash TNK, I'm usually leading with the plateau. because Blue Farm? It's uh, the Timonicron partner pairing. I invented it. Oh, okay. Yeah, my name is Richard Blue Farm. I knew that. We're just... turn, one, turn one Malcolm, turn one Sarah Ascendant. Hoos is starting out Please. with a Malcolm. Absolutely love this early game um, from uh, from our sweet friend Chris here. Hey, stuff. Shout out Kalua Lua in the chat. Laces out Dan. I don't know what that means, but it's happy to see you. Kalua Lua. From Ace Ventura. Pet to the top five tables, I'll draw something. We're not necessarily doing the top table. We are trying to do um, the most interesting pod compositions, the most fun tables. Um, we don't want to show you an all 4TK pod or something like that. Yep. That's correct. T1 Fishy. Pretty good. Also, um, if we end up doing an interview for this round, you know, maybe we want to hear the words New England Clam Chowder a hundred times. <laughs> yeah. I asked I asked uh I asked Turtle Pod why the name Clam yeah. Chowder. Okay. So it's it's a legendary soup and it's uh from Boston. Okay. I can't argue with that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Um, we have a jeweled lotus and a bloodstained mire deploying a Najila. Cracking a fetch. Do we play? Ooh, a Rakavan. Great start. That's you're not feeding the fish very much. Just one card, and you're developing your board state. I like this. Yeah, we take those. We take those. Furlo says I'm your biggest fan, Richard. Thank you, Furlo. I invented it for you. Richard Blue Farm. <laughs> Um, a quad TK pod sounds amazing and awful simultaneously. Uh, I mean, that's the mid-range out we're quickly approaching. We're getting there. I think Chris, if he's wanting to keep up... Oh, we're swinging and passing. Yeah. I, I was going to say, we need to start developing some sort of draw engine. I, if I'm in his seat position, I'm hoping to deploy it. Even, even as percent, I'll start outpacing this Mystic Remora. And, um, you know, Ragavan's card advantage, not card draw. Right. And, and man advantage, I mean... Right. That's card so good. They should like ban it legacy or something. Dang, you're insightful. Thank you. I uh, like. Uh, I think that they should ban um, Ragavan in every format. Legal and modern. I think that they should ban it in CDH. And here's why. I'm tired of people saying monkey. <laughs> well, they're gonna say that for swimming in spirit guide though. That's true. That's fair. Okay. Malcolm is connecting. What are Max and Max on today? Max Pefferman is on Talion. And other Max is on Kinnon. And uh, yeah, Max Wounded Satellite is on Kinnon. And we have an Esper Sentinel. Love seeing wow. that. Big fan. Yeah. That's exactly what I think TK is needing right now. Kevin yeah. paying for his Mystic Remora Makes and sense. having to play the Basaju. Playing the Bosusi. <laughs> Oath of Nyssa. Oaks of Nissa, we're getting legendary permanents in play from Sisse. Okay. Would have loved to watch the pod one, Rog, Say, Ken, Italian, whatever Eric is on. Eric Taylor? Eric Taylor, I, I think the top pod Corbold. dropped. Yeah, he's on Corbold, and he's killing it on Corbold right now. Yeah. I'm going to smother Laura now. Um, I, I'm pretty sure pod one drew, if I had to guess. I, I would guess. I don't... But there's also Zane Nair in that pod, and I don't like Zane Nair. That's a joke. <laughs> I love Zane. <laughs> you don't like him. You love him. Yeah, I don't like him. I love him. Uh, no, nothing, nothing out of no submitted results. Okay, yeah. okay, interesting. Yeah, they're playing it out. The goose is loose. They weren't sure, which is why we chose this pod. Yeah. A lot of people in the hallway are are making their predictions as to how many how many points it's gonna take to be in. Everybody's like, oh, it's uh, seven rounds or whatever. It's. Uh... I think this is not official advice by yeah, any means. No. You generally want to try to shoot for 17. 17. In my experience of yeah, playing. Now, this is not advice. This is me just telling you my experience. Yeah. 17 is typical. Of, like, So you want 302 minimum. Yeah. So 322 should lock you in. 
I think that's correct. Zane isn't cringe, and he he didn't draw. Zane is cringe for not drawing. Intentional draws are for weak-minded individuals. In my opinion, the Jedi are the enemy. In my opinion, I can't read. Uh, okay. Hit a lotus petal off the Ragavan. Ragavan. That's pretty good. Yeah, it's a pretty good hit. We we don't hate that. Make two mana. Uh, yeah, yeah, pretty decent. No land drops though. Esper Centino getting fed. No, we just made the land drop. Noble Hierarch coming down. Okay. Oh, we hit the land. Okay, we're just making more mana. Okay, easy. Never didn't have it. Noble Hierarch, a good card. Discuss. Uh, did we forget to untap the Sarah Ascendants? Yes. Wait. Tainted Pact. Oh, this is at an end step. Oh, okay. Now this makes yeah, more sense. Holding up mana. Is Dockside good right now? One, two, three, uh, four, five, six. It depends on if treasures are cracked. There's just so many. There's like a Lotus Petal and a treasure. It's... So you could make, you can make four to six. Yeah. Okay. That's a pretty good rate. With the oath, it's yeah, between four and six. We're thinking on the necropotence, but we can't actually cast it with our current lands, even if we hit another land drop. Something to consider. Maybe a, a possible dark rit. We might have either dockside or a dark rit in hand. Reverse thorical, come on. No, it's not a reverse thorical. It's never reverse thorical, as much as I want it to be. It would be sick. I agree. I agree. I agree. It lasts uh, at the bonfire. Tad uh, said to me, I got reverse historical in a pod, and then I did it to him in our friendly match that we played. Nice. Yeah, that's great. I got reverse historical last night. Nice. I had a fluster, and I was like, I'm not going to counter it. I'm not doing it. <laughs> I am willing to die with interaction in hand, though. Amen, brother. Please never pronounce necropotence like that again, Jeff. Sorry, how do we pronounce necropotence? Necropotentiae. Necropotentiae. Yeah, I'm a big necropotence enjoyer. Yeah. If I have three black mana, you know I'm going for necropotence. One of the things that I really love doing is putting the emphasis on the wrong syllable. Yeah, it's just really good for Magic the Gathering. Yeah. Dark side in hand. So we're at making four to six. Let's go, baby. Yeah. We missed the Remora trigger as well. Probably not, because Plateau first fetch. Say Necropotence again for the people. Okay. Necropotence. Necropotence. It's actually an Italian word. It means necropotence. Yep. Necropotence. <laughs> I'm drinking San Pellegrino, and I was trying to get it the sound into the mic. <laughs> That's how you say Gus's name. Gus. Uh, uh. How would you pronounce necrimpotence? He's got that Gus Gus 9000. Necroimpotence. Nice. I thought I uh thought I got rid of that. Yuck. <laughs> uh, all right. So we're looking for treasures, which are on the table in front of you. Dockside dollars, baby. With all those dockside dollars. We are not cracking, are we? <clears throat> no. We're making six. Okay. Larry's saying, get bent, nerd. If if you're not winning, I'm going to win. High rolling. I like that. I like it. So we see the Necro, and then, I mean, you're at 46 life. Do you dig deep for the the Born? I mean, you can, with the damage that's on board right now, you can Necro pretty safely yeah, from, you, you can go to like 35. Wow, we had enough for Ranger Captain. Wow. Or we just hit the win. <laughs> Well, there's a lot that has to happen. We have to make a land drop. We have to... I mean, you can just have it in hand, right? Yeah. Crack the range, Captain? Yeah. Or Esper Sentinel passing with two treasure up. I don't think you hit Ragavan right now. Yeah. Esper Sentinel also quite good, as it turns out. <sighs> oh. Oh, Ragavan. Apparently we are hitting Ragavan. I... Sit corrected. I was going to say stand corrected, but we're sitting. I thought it would have been Esper Sentinel as well, but maybe we're trying to born into Oracle Consult, so we don't want to. Oh, blasted. true, true, true. Cracking, Cracking the Ranger, Ranger Captain. Yeah. I like that. 
This table might this might game game might be over. Yeah, I mean at the top of the broadcast, I think we said this one probably won't go eighty minutes. Snap, Snap on, on dock side. Wow. Okay. That's hot. I'm wondering if Larry's gonna crack treasure now. You can safely now necro, right? I mean you're gonna turn yeah. that into four, you're gonna have five treasure, assuming Larry cracks. Larry might not crack though. He might go, you guys can deal with it. The game's yeah. over anyway. Yeah. Uh, the uh, one thing that Larry does have, if there's like a breach line that's attempted with the mana that he has, he can Adawara. Adawara, yeah. Okay, we have six. And we have a Necropotence. Necro! I mean, you're almost in a Final Fortune turn at this point. You've yeah. created your own Final Fortune. Do you just... Do you just go for broke? You are you're it's 44. You're under a ranger captain. I think I think you go to 41. Five life in case you have to crack a vamp suitor, right? Yeah, 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 that's fair. And just to stay alive? Yeah, I think we're Wow. Okay, so okay. we're choosing 39. So he's going 39. to put 39 cards in hand. Um wow. So when they talk about good turn twos, I think this might be up there. Uh I think this is is this three? Oh. When they talk about good turn, good turn three, three they, they mean it. Wow. This is a good turn three. Um, I hope everyone has your apron on, or their aprons on, because Chris is cooking right now. Chris is cooking. Let him cook. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know what else to say other than I think he's going for the win. I think he's going to try and win now. Yeah. Can you imagine? Just... All right, I'm, he's bleeding his hand a little bit. Let's see the born. Uh, I'm so scared for him. Because it's either, I don't think he got it. Did he get Final Fortune at least? That's, yeah, I think he did. It's tough not being under the protection of the Ranger Captain. Yeah. Um, He's playing. Oh, there's the Born. born. Okay, yep. Yeah. He has the Born. His opponent. Okay. He's under the effect of a Born and a Ranger Captain. This, this game's over. Does the Ranger Captain effect wear off when he moves to his end set? Uh no, it's an end end of turn, end of oh, turn effects. Oh, I think are clean up. Turn? Okay, cool. Um, wow. Yeah, I mean, they're ascendant. The... Necropotence, good combo. What's necropotence? Necropotence. Um. Okay, we have the LED. There has born ultimatum. We have to have a way to. We. <laughs> We have to have a way that we can crack Jesus this. Christ. Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Jason born upon a win. <laughs> um, actually, it's from Lord of the Rings, guys. <laughs> nice. You got me real good. I did. I got smoked. Okay. Okay. There's. A, I see a dark written hand. This game's over. We just have to see him assemble the win. Yeah. <laughs> Is that... This table's cooks. Underworld bridge? Question mark? Here's the issue, though. You can't Next crack the LED. Yeah, yeah. Phantasmal image oh. side. Okay, we make mana. Larry's probably like, yeah, nothing matters. I don't care. Well, you can crack the LED because they're individual triggers. Oh, you can respond. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're so right. In a vacuum, it doesn't work. Right. If you're not paying attention. But you can time it so it does work. Yeah. You were very... Yeah, you're correct. Thank you. I'm not moving players in the process of moving players. Yeah, yeah, you can't... You can't have ask players to pick up their board states in the middle and just for a feature match. Wait, yeah, no, it's, not, not it's the unfortunate reality of a game ending early is less content, but um, for the benefit of our players, you, you just can't do that. Yeah. Um, I think La oh, Larry's saying four. He's not cracking. Larry not cracking. Wow. Larry no cracks. Yeah, Larry. Larry does not crack. He has not moved unfazed by what's currently going on we have a chain of vapor targeting dockside extortionists and everyone's rolling their eyes going i'm making mana are they conceding oh no i think chris is explaining i've won this game <laughs> Deck your land bounce your mobile recast that too yeah yep for it's free to do it's that free, yeah and then do you i mean you sack yeah yeah and you, oh you can't sack your from inch no. you could sack your necro. oh Oh yeah, you could. You could get rid of the necro, and then things maybe get a little easier. Um, you could bounce your necro rather. Less content, sick win. Yeah, huge. I mean, unless 
unless um Chris does something to absolutely goof this. Yeah. Um he's won this game. Yeah. I I don't know what piece of interaction with a cracked ranger cap. Oh, he's going for style points now. <laughs> So players can't even cast creature spells now. Thank you. Nice. We cabal have a cabal right. ritual. Um, a cable ritual. We're making five black. Uh, if you have a bunch of those rituals in a vehicle, it'd be a cable car. That's true. Yep. I, If I'm Larry or Gus, I don't know why I'm getting drawn. I, I, it, it, if I'm sitting there... It's not worth my mental. It's round five. I've lost this game. Yeah. I want to just go eat. I don't know why we're. I don't. Maybe they are having fun with it. I don't know the table yeah, I don't talk. Know. Could be it. Maybe it's because they're on the stream. Maybe it's because they're on their stream. Yeah. Um. And if that's the case, I super appreciate it. Okay, we have an underworld breach. Breach. But I, if I'm sitting there playing, it's not worth the mental. Yeah. It looks like we have a, a bounce spell for our necro anyway. Oh, Oracle. And do we have uh, Tainted Pact in the yard? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. they're cooked. Tainted Pact. They've got nothing. No draw effects or anything. They're cooked. Yep. Odawar doesn't do it. Nope. Way to zip it up, Chris. Great All right. Job. I'm going to go grab Chris so we can interview him. Yeah. We have a lot of time to do that. Yep. We get to interview a winner. Very exciting. Wait it, wait it, zip it up. Oh, we're getting a little sweat on the, on the hand. Sweaty hands. Who's Breeze Man? What? Breeze Man. Why is his name green? Why is his name green? Who knows? I don't know this man. Who knows? But that is a sick way to wrap it up. All right. I will go to live two rounds. The boy. Is it going to be you doing the interview or? Sure. Or the Lauren? Who has more energy right now? Probably. Uh... I'm not kicking you out. Just like, do you want to do it? Probably Lauren. He's very excited. He is very excited. Lauren is very excited to do this uh, interview. I think, I think, you know what? Lauren, great interviewer. Lauren, great Honestly, caster. Putting the best man on the job. He loves men. Okay. <laughs> All right. I, I didn't say that. No, you, you did. Chris is on his way and he wants you to interview him. He wants me to do it? I hand it off to him because you know he is. I want to talk to this guy. Okay. It was kind of cute. Aww. You want to sit here for a sec until yeah. he comes? Yeah. Because you're still on stream. Yeah, so they were telling us. I don't know if you want to switch to our camera. I'll switch to you guys. So just talked to Chris. Chris is on his way after going through the kitchen cooking his opponents right now. Um, They played it out for stream. They were all, I got there, they're all laughing. They're like, we, we know we lost that game. And they're like, we yeah. just played it out because you guys were watching. Nice. So Chris got his moment. Chris did specifically request for Scott to interview him, not me. Uh, it was actually really cute. He, I think he was really excited to show you that he won. <laughs> but My it, son bringing a win home. <laughs> a VIM, very irate man. You know, same, uh, same vein as LSV. It's true. It's true. It's true. Uh, Chris was also off of playing CDH for a while. Yeah. Um, and this is his first tournament. He played a local like a week or and a half ago, maybe a week ago. Yeah. Um, and then this is his first major tournament in about a year. And he, I think with this, locked top 16. I think taking the break really got his he, mentals back. He is 16 points after this. Okay. Come in. Which yeah. is not a lock. Yeah. Interview. Yeah. He's our interview. Yes. Yeah, Alex, right there. Right here, man. All right, man. Who wants to talk now? Okay. All right, we got Chris. We got Chris here, ready to get interviewed. Thank you, Baldy. You can look at the camera. I look know you haven't camera. been here right. before, brother, but hey, you're here. Hey, 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 All right. Yeah, he hello, everybody. This is my son, Chris. A little bit, yeah, 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 you gotta, you gotta talk right into that thing. This is my son, Chris. Everybody, I'm so proud of you, bud. Great job. Um, 
Sarah Ascendant, huh? So, a lot of people don't love it. I mean... I get it, it's Cope. Big Necro, though. One mana, 6-6, six, six, Flying Lifelink. Yeah. Maybe yeah. it gets cut after this weekend, I don't know. No, but it's a big Necro, I got man. I got one for $15, and I was like, this is a really good deal. Like, okay. I might as well play it. Might as well play the Sarah For, for some real analysis, I think in the slower stacks matchups, I found myself getting beat over the head consistently. Yeah. And I find a turn one Sarah Ascendant of Alex. Remedies that very well. Yeah. So I figured, why not? Yeah. I In a pod like that, it's definitely a little bit more cope. I sure. will not lie. So I did not keep Sarah Ascendant. I did not keep that hand because of the strength of Sarah Ascendant. My keep was two lands. Yeah. Sarah's Ascendant, Dockside, Snap, Mystical Tutor, and Born Upon the Wind. Okay. Or Chain Impact, right? No, Born Up. I didn't. Chain Impact, I drew. Okay. So my thought process was, I'm going to play turn one, Sarah. Oh, you had the born in hand. So yeah, when I you born slammed that Necropotence, it was a done deal. Guaranteed. Yeah. Okay. So I turn one, Sarah, as you know, yeah. you saw on the stream. Yeah. Turn two, my my thought process was, if this is a fat Dockside, I can do some Dockside bullshit yeah. here. Um, It wasn't. So played it a little bit slow, didn't do anything turn two, just yeah. swung. I know. It looks bad, but I think it did a really good job of making me look unassuming. There's yeah. a player with a Mystic Remora out. And, like, I don't really buy into the whole belief of, like, don't feed the fish. But to me, like, if I'm making a play that doesn't really put me that far ahead at all, I'm not going to feed into a Mystic or more. Yeah. I'm just going to play it safe. Sure. And I drew Tainted Pact. It's, it was either my first or my second draw. I don't remember. But going back into my turn, I was, like, I was thinking about, like, Mystical Tooting for Adnaws. If yeah. the Dockside count was there and I was going to have, like, a turn three Adnaws. Or I could sandbag the shit out of it with, like, yeah. a dockside like born snap do some stupid ass loop like that like, yeah there's weird lines that i could have done but after i saw tainted packs i was just like let's activate tainted pack like you see what see what's maybe i'll get some mana advantage yeah. maybe i'll get something else like i don't know let's see what happens yeah and then i see necro and i look at my life total and i see born in my hand i yeah. see 46 of 40 and i was like i can live the pay 40 necro meme yeah shout out to a necro guy for well starting done. the, the well pay done. 40 necro meme so what i did I uh, swung with Sarah, played Necro, we played Dockside, played um, Ranger Captain. Ranger Captain. You know, just playing it safe. Let's yeah. play it simple. And from there, pay 40 to Necro. You, uh, you styled on him with the silence as well as the... So, a while ago, like, at Punt City 1, in my top 16 game, I uh, almost punted a sure win line away because I, like, didn't play around... Um, Moonsnare Moon prototype. Moon snare pro kidding. Okay. Rocks former rock size staple. Moonsnare yeah. prototype. But I ended up just like being like, I'm a player on everything. Yeah. Like, what's the worst that can happen? Um, and it was pretty free equity to me. Yeah. So that's why I did all that stupid convoluted shit. It no, stupid, I mean you gotta but... you you make your mana, you can at least defend yourself and you don't I mean, you don't know the deck list of your opponents, but Kevin could have well been on endurance. So. He told me he was on endurance after okay. the game. All right. Um, I think I can still, like, win even if he has endurance because I had a trillion cards and yeah. born, but I could just tutor an FF and run it again. But the thing that makes it awkward for him too is if you crack your LED, it's a bunch of individual triggers. Yeah. So he's got to decide when to endurance, and maybe it's even beneficial for you. Yeah, but um, it's a really fun game. It's been. It looked like you had fun. You know, a Gustav and Larry, two friends of mine, yeah. good guys. Good um, dudes. Finally got to... I met Gustav a year and a half ago when he came over from Europe. I got to see him again. Okay, Always cool. a pleasure. Yeah. But I had a lot of fun, man. CDH is, like, really weird format because um, I, earlier, like, I've been telling all my friends, like, I put a win attempt on the stack in every single game. Yeah. It, three of them now it resolved, and the other two, it created an ethical dilemma. <laughs> <laughs> the one game I had with Norman... It, it, the whole result ended in when like, like an ID yeah. proposal. Okay. And then the other one, I got a bunch of interaction burned on me yeah. by players who like were right ahead of me in turn order, and it became really tricky because yeah. it was like a prisoner's dilemma situation. Sure. And I always find those really uh, difficult to navigate, but I, I, I've taken advice of uh, my buddy Zane, just win. Yeah, just win. Like, to the crom, a lot of people like to play like slow and mid-range. Um, I definitely like doing that strategy some of the time, but I think one of the biggest proponents for the deck is the fact that it can look like it's doing nothing and explode out of nowhere. Like, having red as a color yeah. and black as well, they're both extremely explosive colors. 
Dockside enables a lot of things. It, it does. Dockside makes a lot of two land hands seem a lot better. So, like, in general, uh, I think Timurkrom is one of the strongest decks in the format. I think CDH is weird. I don't think there's going to ever be a definitive best deck. I don't think there'll ever be a definitive best strategy because different strategies work for different pods and different yeah. players. Certainly the argument is made that we could call maybe Kinnon the best deck or Blue Farm the best deck right now, but... What's blue form? That's right. Hey, hey, there hey, we hey, go. Hey. That's TNK. the correct answer. That's the well, answer. honestly, yeah, there's a lot of arguments for Kinnon and Timnacron. Both decks have put up results. Kinnon yeah. really had a resurgence. I remember I thought Kinnon was fake, and then uh, Matt Sperling kicked my ass on it one game, <laughs> and I was like, oh, this deck is real. Yeah. And I, I was the coper there. Arrange an accident. And, and now we're calling for arranging accidents on Kinnon. I felt that Kinnon was getting misevaluated. Yeah. I think we've reached a level where it's properly evaluated, where yeah. it's like P Blast, like says when it destroy target Kinnon or counter target Kinnon. I people like to save it for Rhystic study, but like yeah. why save it for the Rhystic study? We can like hit the Kinnon. And what I've noticed is the more the Kinnon player reacts to the Pyroblast play, the more uh, stronger the play was, the better the play was. I had this conversation a few times lately regarding initially Winota and now Kinnon, where people are like, oh, Winota was over threat evaluated, which is why its win percentage has sunk to like 3%. Its conversion rate or whatever is down to 3%. Um, people are like, oh, just you, it's over evaluated. Too much interaction was used on it. And it, it, if you're putting Winota in the dirt, then in fact the correct amount of interaction was used on it. And I think the same thing for Kinnon. The deck's going to continue to push and push and push until people start putting it in the dirt. And then it's going to change. Yeah. I mean, people, you know, they, Kinnon players, do, they get annoyed by it. You know, there's a rog in a pod is commonly a phrase used when there's a, a Kinnon spell interacted with. Yeah, sure. Like the, if a force of negation were to hit a uh, Simic Signet, Signet. Something yeah. like that. Like a play like that. They they don't want that to happen. But the fact of the matter is, is the deck functions really well in mana. I think comparing Kinnon to Winota is good, but I think Kinnon is a lot more real than Winota. Yeah. Because if you kill Winota twice, that deck's in the dirt. Yeah, and you're in better you're in better colors too, I think, for winning the game Agree. in, in Simic. Agree. You don't but, have to sit there and say pass on board yeah, all game. That's true. Well, you, you did really good. Congrats. Thanks, man. Way to take it down. You're 3-1-1. Three, 3-1-1, one, one. Three, one, one, yeah. Three, one, so one, I'm going to propose some points. cringe IDs tomorrow. Yeah, well, listen, IDs are, listen, I, IDs are, you know, they're for weak-minded individuals, but I hope you get there. I don't want to get clown emoji. I know, I understand. I want to get the top 16. I understand. All right, everybody, uh, clap. Clap for Chris. <laughs> Great job, Chris. And uh, I I guess since I'm the one here, um, I'll say great job today, everybody. Alex, couldn't do it without you. Lauren, couldn't do it without you. Drake, if you're out there, we love you. Uh, you couldn't, do it. couldn't do it without you. Um, this is uh, this is this is the the end of day one of Punt City. I think Alan is live or on Mental Misplays Twitch. If you're going to go check him out, he's doing some gorilla footage. And, uh, yeah. Uh, I'm going to go play cube. I'm going to go sleep for an hour, I think. Have a great